Okay, then by starting with Christopher Stockman. Oh. <laughs> is, is celebration really the word we want to use for 2023? <laughs> yes. Existence yes. is... Endurance is what we did. I had a great time. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, that's become the, the topic of the town now, as to whether or not people are doomsaying too much, and that film is just fine, actually. I, uh, I, when? there was a, a subreddit. Oh, never been better. Thread <laughs> that was shared that had a tweet of mine saying, now share. There, there was a, there was, I, I think, um, there was a stream with me and Drinker and, and several others on Open Bar, and there was a, a tweet me. saying that that was, um, you know, it's like, oh, they're saying, like, movies are bad, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, um... I mean, yeah. It's been reported as, like, the worst year ever for Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know that what we're saying could be considered controversial anymore. It's pretty just normalized and accepted now. And then, um, uh, Lofty said, uh, uh, listed, I think, ten films. They were like, well, these were good. And then I was like, okay, now do the bad ones. <laughs> Yeah, Actually, it's like, I had give you a hundred ones that were terrible. Yesterday, we need to stop point. counting the ratio. <laughs> They say if you go back and you only pick the good indie films, then film looks much better. But if you go back and you pick the bad indie films alongside the good indie films, then the balance probably emerges at about the same as it is. Yeah. And we could happily talk about obscure indie films that have been seen by literally dozens of people, but, uh, you know. Whoa, now dozens. Whoa, no, dozens. dozens. Come on. Is it really a reflection of film culture and where we're at? I don't think so. I mean, well, no. I thought everybody didn't like every Disney film. Well, except, if you ask like, YMS. Mm -hmm. See? Oh well, yeah, that's clearly a... we need we need to improve our media diets, gentlemen. I was actually going to bring that up, Rags, because uh, remember he he was very resistant to the idea that um, it is any All worse now ideas. than it was, and so I said, you know, and and I believe this is the one of the easiest ways to see it. It's like so, Star Wars is doing pretty bad. Wasn't you know twenty years ago? It's like Star Trek's doing pretty bad. To be fair, I don't know how good Star Trek was doing twenty years ago, but I know it was better than now. Then there's Indiana Jones was doing better Ooh. than it was now. And it was, uh, what else? It's like, basically, spin the roulette wheel. Jurassic fucking, well, Jurassic as a franchise, I guess you'd call it. Jurassic, uh, yeah, dinosaur. Jurassic. Marvel. Genre. Oh, wow. Marvel oh, boy, is one of the best wow. examples ever. Because Rewind 20 does, years uh, and it doesn't even we, exist. We, we've done this before, <laughs> where it's like, pick any year in the 90s. Uh, or protect, perhaps even the 2000s, and well, you will have we an won't absolute... have to because Chris Stuck, Christopher Stuckman is going to uh, tell us about that yeah. list, so we won't even have to. Me trying but to delay us. From... Though, you you would have some absolute bangers of movies that have really like made an impression and stood the test of time, and I think you would struggle in the 2020s to do the same thing. Is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, Chris Stuckman can help us, but yeah. I was going to say it's just not <laughs> controversial to us, you know, like saying that. Well, it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should just... be obvious to him. He does this for a living. I don't it's know. It's kind man. of like saying it's, it shouldn't be controversial that the sun is going to rise in the east tomorrow and set in the like, west. Like whoa, whoa, whoa! Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Hang on. <Whoa. laughs> um, Some things are just self-evident. No, we're fine. It's all good. Molly, Ooh. you went on open bar to defend the Last of Us show. Drinker, did you go spine spaghetti? Did someone bring up Last of Us and you didn't defend it? Oh, that's that really no. cool show. Uh, yeah, that's a good show. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I said about it at the point. At that point, I think it was more a case of um, overall. My impression of it was good. It was a good show, and I think it's a good example of a solid video game to TV adaptation. Uh, and then we got into the weeds of just picking apart a few of the issues that we had with it. They were Perhaps issues. Like the, the casting of uh, whatever the hell her weird name is, um, as Ellie, for example. Like, eh, I don't think that was the best actress they could have picked. Stuff like I, that. I will say, as much as I agree that we probably should have gotten someone else. Perhaps even for both roles, I still think both of them uh, put in a good performance. I think, yeah, I think uh, Pedro's was an excellent performance. Ellie warmed up on me, the actress. It took a while was, for um, her to sort of settle yeah, I, in. But... Yeah, I think uh, Pedro was fine, I think, with the material that he was given. I think I can definitely tell the differences between his portrayal, or should I say, the, um, the Joel that we get in the TV show versus the Joel that we got in the game. And again, I think it's quite an interesting way... It, to, it's an interesting thing to do to compare the two. Because I can clearly tell they are the same character, just different versions of that yeah. same character. Yeah, yeah it's very also, easy for my yeah. mind to link the two together. Like it's yeah. a it's a it's a remix rather than a fucking assassination, which is what we usually get. Which is why yeah, yeah. I feel like it does deserve to be highlighted in a positive way, considering all of the horrible shit. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, why would I delay? We're gonna check out the best movies of 2023. How suitable for our year look back stream, I guess. Is everyone ready? Hit us with it. Hit us with it, Chris. Hit us with your personality. Whoa. I mean, I can't, me, Daddy. Stop you. <laughs>
You could have oh, tried. I'm getting stuck with knives right now. Him. Holy god. I'm just checking. Wait, is everyone here? I don't like this I, um, intro. I gotta tell you, I like the old one better. <laughs> we had that yeah, conversation this one before. Is <laughs> we have. And you know, well, of course, course we have the same. That, we're we're, 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 we're well-written characters, Ringy. I miss it so much. It's a great guitar riff, you know? They're like, oh, man, that just feels <laughs> I don't know, joy. but... Does it really work without the punch to the screen and then get stuck monized? I feel like that's really uh, what what oh, yeah, brings it up. Oh yeah, that's what it needs to be. It needs to be him popping out and then punching through the camera, glass shattering everywhere. <laughs> the There's one thing I did wonder actually. Maybe you guys can help me. How does one become stuck monized? Oh, um, what, do you, what does it? Oh, that's what does a, it entail? A drinker. Oh, oh, if the way back. was made clear, it would not be the way. It's like a I spirit see. quest. You know, you got to go on a pilgrimage through oh. the mountains. You gotta speak to the local shaman up on the hill and uh, <laughs> look, go on the whole journey. And then when you come back, it'll be so obvious that you're stuck in eyes that it will just radiate from you like uh, you're glowing. Mm, it's it's more a state of being rather than yeah, that's like right. A it's a state of mind. Process. Forty nights of fast. It's not a destination. It's a journey. Ah, uh, okay. I want to read this book, but we can't until... <laughs> Is he wrote okay. a book? Chris Stuckman yeah. can read I... it. Where were you ten minutes ago, Yeah, Rags. rags. <laughs> I was sorry, I was too, I was... Not listening? Yeah, I can tell. Ooh. Ooh. Stuckmanized. Is that the thing that happens in Quake? I think, I think... You're <laughs> on the conveyor belt? Is, it, getting stuck is it like the Neuralizer, it seems... where it makes you forget the video you saw, or is that just something that happens Ooh, when you yeah, watch the videos like anyway? I, I don't know, man. Yeah. It seems like almost like the sort of thing you would see on Pornhub, like, you know, hot, <laughs> hot girl Stuckman? gets stuckmanized You get stuckmanized. She gets right. stuck by a man, that's true. Well, guys, we have lack the impact edit. at the end, doesn't it? I'm yeah, just yeah. here to make films. All right, good luck. Hmm. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you work on the videos first, and then the we can. We can I mean, sure you're, you're literally here in this video to talk about films. Yeah. Make them. I'm just here to also talk about films. I'm I don't sure know. The first this is like uh, it's like someone who goes golfing with uh, I'm just here to play baseball t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> does, does he make films? I thought he just did YouTube Yes, videos. he's made short films, and he's currently, American. I believe, completing production upon his first feature film, uh, Shelby Oaks. Wow. I can't wait. We'll be very excited to check it out. Are yeah, we? That's cool, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. That's what we've been paid to say. I've, I've been paid? <laughs> that never happened before. <laughs> Shut up, don't Just tell to anybody. Refresh my memory. At no point in this video is he ever allowed to say anything negative about yes. anything he's covering, course. right? Well, oh, okay. so yeah, this yeah. is the best of, and I believe one of the top comments on this video is, I like when he made the worst of. And uh, <laughs> I think the top comment response is, he's, he's not going to shit on creators yeah. anymore. Isn't it really interesting how when he got into making no, his own No, nothing films, about him is interesting. <laughs> well, not about him necessarily, but his outlook on this. Like, once he got into making his yes. own movies, suddenly became oh, yeah. super yeah, positive the only thing, about everything. Yeah, yeah right. the only thing interesting about Chris Duckman is purely meta. <laughs> it's very much Well, that. It's, it's mysterious almost, right? It's like, yeah. you know, we shouldn't be shitting on creators. Now, I'm becoming a filmmaker, and I would like... <laughs> The YouTube people to <laughs> be chill about it, okay? When I think that you should embrace the reverse, you should be like, I'm becoming a filmmaker, you guys better not go easy on me just because I'm making the film, right? And, yeah. You know, go the opposite yeah, direction yeah. of, like, a lot of, um, honestly, like, AVGN, RLM, where they end up making something that even they are ashamed of. It's like, try and make something you're proud of and then accept the criticism of it. Which, to be fair, I don't want to imply that uh, Red Letter Media or AVGN haven't accepted um, criticism. I think it's Space um, Cop is great. If you've seen Space Cop, it's one of the best crappy movies I've seen in a long time. I th I I, I, I mean, wanted they, to love it. I wanted to love it. I think oh, it's there's, there's 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 <laughs> gags in it that probably <laughs> seemed better like on the script than in reality. Yeah. You know, one of the gags I won't forget was when Chris Evans is Space Cop. No, not Chris Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they had that kind of money. <laughs> Which Chris Evans, <laughs> Which Evans is space comp. But the post MCU world for him is. <laughs> Um, when he's he's activated his like screen visor high tech helmet, but then loads of porn ads come up on it, and he can't see. I thought <laughs> I thought that was funny. They're predicting the future. Mm -hmm. have yet another year talking about film on this platform. This is crazy. I've been doing this for this like. This is 14... crazy. Isn't it remarkable oh, how I'm he manages so to not raise or lower the voice? <laughs> He also, doesn't even like, speak a little bit different all the time. He just does me, all the call same. Un, call me unconventional as well, but when you've been doing literally the same thing for <laughs> 10 years, it ceases to be crazy and just becomes reality. 
Isn't it crazy that I work today? How crazy! This is incredible. Yeah. I can't believe another year. <laughs> can't believe it. You just want to be is like, more, you want to like, is click more, your finger in front of you, like Chris, Chris, wake up, Chris, Chris. <laughs> the camera's You're rolling. Like, oh, so good to be here. I'm so crazy. Is, is it possibly his attitude is more like, I can't believe I'm not a successful Hollywood director yet. It's crazy that I'm still having to make fucking YouTube videos. <laughs> what was um? Freem, was it that we felt like he was a wannabe? We said like it wasn't quite a wannabe Spielberg. It's almost a wannabe J.J. Abrams. Like it's um, almost worse. If you're gonna be a second-rate version of someone else, it's, don't pick um, him. What's I? I don't know if interesting is the right word. An observation is that it feels to me like Chris Stuckman is obsessed with the idea of being seen as like a filmmaker more so than he's interested in the actual making of films. Um, it's kind of strange. I don't know, man. Like, when you watch his reviews, about 50% of them are just production information about who's directing <laughs> this is who it, directed who, it. Who did the cinematography, sure, it, it, who the, did the, the sound editing. Where's the insight, other than just, the like, listing, is you know, people who are involved, like, but not really... Oh, we'll get to insight. Like how they do things. Read his book. <laughs> Plenty of it. insight in the book, okay? okay. And the video, I'm sure. Yeah, he I'm, I'm ready to be surprised. I ready to be believe. stuckmanized. Yeah, I am. Um, or something, Timmy I don't Harder. even know what's going on in his... <laughs> 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 he really, he really captures well, the, the essence I, uh, of whoa, dude. Yeah, I am, I am utterly convinced by this perplexion. I gotta say, so this much is... has happened. <laughs> this this is the sort go. of thing you would say if your channel had just blown up. Yeah, and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe suddenly I've got like a hundred thousand subscribers. Like, well, this at this time point, last month I had nothing. This filmmaker needs a filmmaker, maybe a director, to be like, hey, bud, uh, your motivation right now is that you're elated and ecstatic that you've reached this level. You need to convince the audience that that's how you feel instead of saying it because you feel like you probably should. And uh, I don't think he captures that motivation. You know, I don't. I'm not feeling it as a as a filmmaker myself of YouTube accounts few years and it's time once again to talk about the best films of the year and as usual i want to start with some honorable mentions you guys know these are my picks these are films that meant something to me these are Sweet. films that impacted me in a specific way but they don't that... count but they're not good yeah, enough they're... to be you know? just, um... honorable yeah honorable <laughs> mention implies that they didn't make like the lit the grade for the list but there's something about them that but I really like, wanted it's still to... worthy of mention. Yeah, and I really you know? wanted to limit myself to 12 because numbers. Because. <laughs> You're like, Chris, why don't oh, you just yeah, do 14? Exactly. He's like, hmm, um, I don't know, man. Seems a little much. <laughs> uh, that seems that sounds a little exciting. It kind of ruins it, doesn't it? Don't want to go too uh, crazy on those numbers. You meant to do 10. That's what you meant to do, is 10. Well, if you're gonna breach the ten, you may as well just keep all the ones you love the most, you know? Well, there was a nostalgia critic thing, right? Elf. Uh, Top 11. Elf 11. <laughs> yeah. The right time, or they were just really phenomenal movies. And those honorable mentions are The Boy and the Heron. Are you gonna Maestro. talk about it? No. No, <laughs> no. 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 This, is, this is a list. No, no he it's said li literally this would just be a list. mentioning them. So, <laughs> I, I, honorable mentions. Yeah, he literally honorable <laughs> mentions. Yes. They get mentioned. It's just mentioned. Just uh, reading the titles. Right, right, right so, what's, what's funny about that, I guess, is like in a normal top 10 list, it'd be like the honorable mention, they name them, and then they're just like a film that was blah, blah, maybe like a lie. But his version, it makes sense it would just be reading out the title. <laughs> the exit. Yeah. The Maybe he'll say they're all great at the end. Mm. Eyes, Bottoms, Still, a Michael J. Fox movie. Are You There, oh, okay. God? It's Me, Margaret. When Evil a Margaret Lurks. movie. Bo oh. is Afraid. Oh, wow. This is a lot of mentions. Cease. Man, why not just make a top hey, 20 list? Why not just talk yeah. about it? This is your end yeah. of the year video. You it's only have to make like... these once a year, and it's 14 yeah, because, minutes long. Because... Here's the thing, like, just saying, like, oh, yeah, these are my honorable mentions, I like them, and then here's the list? That doesn't <laughs> help anybody. Just have them like, be part guess, of the list, you fool. It, well, can, it's just, can you just tell me which genre people. it has? Like, is it like a... <laughs> Well, yeah, oh, now oh come on, movie. he doesn't know that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought he was The Boy them. and the Heron is in the bird genre. Ah. <laughs> also, I'm, I'm, as we stream, I am actively balancing everyone's audios, so chat, keep complaining, and I mean that genuinely, so I can tell if we're, we're there or not. Yes, do not quit. We will. Okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, Loved all of those sure. movies, enjoyed all of them in their own way. They're all very <laughs> Enjoyed them all in their own way. God, it's so <laughs> fucking useless. Holy really, shit. Chris, if they were special, then you would have made them part of the way. list. 
special. Well, they, yeah, they're, they're a separate is, list. If anything, this I mean, is the better list because it's before the other list. Cool, and also look at the time. It's only 14 minute long video, which means, oh, each of these films are going to get about a minute. Damn, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, Not no, it's going to be less yeah. than that. Which is, by the way, get, someone might be like, to get to the main list. <laughs> it's like that's on scripted as well. It's like he couldn't, you know, lay out. I assume this is a script. I assume he's not, he's got more than just well, a list in front of him. I, I got to imagine, surely he has a problem of, it, it, like, if he, if he has limits that he poses on himself in terms of time, he goes over that when he writes his scripts and then has to cut it down, right? I, I can't so. imagine uh, making a script for a 14 minute video that's mostly just descriptive and then saying, nah, this is too long. Gary. I gotta cut this down. Oh. Gotta trim the fat. Woo. Speaking of trimming the fat, hey. Actually, <laughs> that was <laughs> Gary's like, is that offensive? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I, I, I don't actually know. Figure it out. I know. <laughs> I'll take it as offensive. Good and to it's see okay. you. Uh, we're, doing, we're doing watch together shenanigans if you want to jump into the link. And join us. We're checking out Chris Stuckman's top films of 2023. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, Gary, but Sisu did not make it into the top 12. What? Uh, he, he gave it an honorable mention, <laughs> literally mentioning its name. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this was a film which I watched. It was a I film. <laughs> I this enjoyed it film. in a of images displayed in sequence at high yes. speed. I think in his defense, he did say that it was elation. a film that meant something to him. It's just oh, that we'll you. never find out we'll never what precisely what it was. We don't know what it meant. <laughs> Maybe he got diarrhea after one of them. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that could mean. Yeah. That has meaning. Honest, nauseous. Honestly, I'm surprised we got that much out of him on anything. So, uh, does he mention more on other films other than he saw them? Oh, well, Maybe I, I think we're, we're all actually. Uh, yeah, we're all very strap excited. Strap yourself in, boy, because you're about to get stalkinized. <laughs> I'm <go>. ready. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't quite make the list, which we're going to get into in just a second. Ooh. But first, I want to give a big they thank you to the sponsor for this video. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. After oh, makes it meeting your like, oh. <laughs> it looks like gross. Oh. What the fuck? What the, what the hell? No, no, no. They what? always look gross when they're cold, and then they Not, look no, but gross wait, when that's... you're done with them. But... <laughs> that looks that like it's been heat taken. Yeah. Like... This is hey. like a disposal system, so if you've thrown up, like, they'll come along, put it in one of these shrimp, <laughs> shrimp, shrimp bags, If you want to eat, like, Oliver Twist, go to... And it looks like they took out an organ on the other side, uh, from a dead body, do that probably. Uh, God, hey, Gord! Like, no it almost looks like a face pressed up against the... <laughs> oh, yeah, this, yeah, man. yeah, this is Edward Munch's lunch, is what this is. Well, and, and the size, like portions change size based on... So, like, if you poop more or if you vomit more, they'll give you bigger passes, you know, based <laughs> hey, on your... Hey, uh, Stuckman has nice nails, though. That I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that means that this is the fact of people that did this, right? Provided the footage. Like, why would you make yeah, it look God. nicer? You know how, like, in McDonald's ads, they'll do the, the... I don't know if you've seen the behind the scenes, oh, but the way they do that shit is amazing. They have, like, all these kinds of machines lie. and... What absolutely a lie. a lie. And then they make it look really good. Then, you like, you buy it. It's, like, a crushed up into the corner burger that's... <laughs> you poke it, it deflates. <laughs> well, it could also be his wife, right? I guess. Oh, it could be his wife. Yeah. In the packaging? <laughs> in the packaging? <laughs> what, what's his name? Yeah. It's spoiling green is people. <laughs> Fact Goals is easier people. than ever by Factor. delivering. Oh, it's just oh, no. when they no, stored no, upside no, down. No, Don't no. show the part where it's nasty and frozen. Show the yeah. part where it's finished and you've dressed we'll get it up. There. And you know, I, I, I guess this is honest. <laughs> This is what I you guess. Okay, yeah, 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 I don't blame it. I'll be, uh, they never look good beforehand. Meals it right to color. your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your integrity. 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 What? So, so like, uh, like what? All the peas are still in the what? No, all those. Integrity. Well, all those I, there's one thing I can't stand. stand it's duplicitous. The chicken wasn't a liar. Is that yeah. what you mean? <laughs> This was made for <laughs> upstanding Dude, citizens. Have you ever tasted a lying chicken? It's like stringy oh, and gross. No Ooh. dishonest ingredients in this food. <laughs> some made with 100% grade A integrity. <laughs> Best all day long. This bustling holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals to Hell fuel yeah. you. But this on came out after the holidays. Day. Factor, America's number one. Mango, mango yeah, that looks smoothie. noble. Mango that smoothie. Looks like, that, looks, okay. that looks like eggnog, just to be clear. That does not look like a mango smoothie. Drink. It could still be <laughs> poop, poop juice, like... you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Ready to eat meal delivery service can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, God, and dinner. So boring. <laughs> that looks like that <laughs> that's feel like Chris Stuckman drink. You want to have this the, should the, be Chris Stuckman beverage. You're like Billy Mays here. And welcome <laughs> to the, the smoothie. You don't want to have like hello. 
Today we're looking at factor food. I am reliably <laughs> really informed that humans require food in order to stay alive. This is food, he, and it can get Billy delivered Mace to here. you. It's here is some mango jizz in a cup. It's it. really it good. It's part of the ad, you know. It's part of the Eating ad. Just like creatures of the of planet the Earth. Food. Billy Mays here, sourced from plants. <laughs> Are they going to show Chris Stuckman eating the food? Because that would show the entertainment. Is he going to do so. the crusty <laughs> thing and say, like, I don't mind the taste. I don't mind the taste. <laughs> right. What it, needs to be, it, needs to be the, uh, it needs to be the guy from Shelbyville who, like, he drinks that mango one and then his face, like, contorts and shrinks. <laughs> caves in the mouth. <laughs> He's drinking turnip juice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the turnip juice. Dietitian approved, ready to eat. This looks like something you squeeze out of something door. else. You'll save time and <laughs> I always stay wonder on. what dietitian approved. Well, the nails. Oh, yes. oh, oh yes. Yeah, like That's if you food. put them, um, like if you went outside to the to the, the garbage can or the bin, as some of you call it, and you just like stuck a faucet to the bottom of it and turned it. That's oh, what would come out. No. Oh, you just geez. drink it right up. Hey, yeah, there's it's really good for your immune system. There's a Ow. scar on her knuckle where she hit her husband. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I feel like her hands are more interesting than your average Chris Duckman review. Yeah. Right. I think there's more conversation to be had. Style while tackling is, it all is that a box cutter? Yeah. Why not fuck? just fucking open it? The you just normal peel it. Thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> those, those peelers are a lie, by the way. They never come off. But you just never try once. Problems. Give it a like... shot, drink it, dab it. <laughs> the standard <laughs> procedure is you try once, it doesn't work, get angry, and then you get the box cutter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if the peeler works, you just get a third degree burn afterwards anyway. Exactly. So. It's part <laughs> okay. of the process. Your Part holiday of the process. to do's. So you can cross meal prepping off your list this holiday season. There you go. That looks like food. You couldn't very, just peel it. Wait, you couldn't just peel it off the top? You needed a box cut? Again, where were you wow. two minutes Rex, ago? Sorry. Wake up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was I was well, I was literally watching the video what? and I was looking at the great beans. I was looking at the great beans. No, we were talking about it for about a minute there. <laughs> That's so fine. It's alright. No, 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 it's lies, fine. No, 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 it's fine. Lies. Isn't it like two isn't it like the middle of the day where you are? You don't know. <laughs> Waking up, just waking up for this. I'm already a can in, and I'm still. Take your energy drink, Rags. We need you up and ready to go. <laughs> Zip yeah, zap zoom. Yeah. Doggo food, whatever. What's your Factor. favorite doggo food? Is it this? Um, is, is it this? this? <laughs> ooh, I don't know. I like all kinds of food. I suppose. I, I suppose. Um, ooh, gosh, I don't know. I have very broad tastes. I don't know if I can narrow it down. Let's go with. Uh, Today we'll say that I really I'm I'm in the mood for sushi right now. Ooh, that's what I really God. that's what I really yeah. like. Well, that's what I'm in the mood for. Today's sponsor just... is sushi delivered straight to you in the package, and it's really After being good. shaken and by the postman know. and thrown through your door window <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to ask about because someone just mentioned, uh, isn't he a filmmaker? Wouldn't you expect the ad to be like kind of awesome looking and uh, and dynamic? Well, that would you know? be, yeah. No, no, that's exactly that would what I would be thinking. if he was passionate about making film. You would see that shine through in his, well, I guess his everything that had to do with. You know, like videos. And well, stuff. I, I think uh, I think the more relevant part would be that the passion probably doesn't exist that much for his uh, YouTube videos. <laughs> oh, um, if it ever no. did, it certainly doesn't anymore. You're just saying that oh. because of his monotonous voice that he's used for over a decade. You're just saying that because of his honorable mentions. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just saying that because he's basically admitted as much, right? That like he views this as lesser than like making movies. He, I think so. Yes, uh, this is a stepping yeah. stone. This whole thing, this whole experience of mm. YouTube. Mm. Gotta, well, I, gotta I ask assume whoever he's handing the camera to is not a director, like a friend of his. Well, no, like, he's the one that's filming out. right now. Yeah, it's it's oh, is he? Okay. Wait, is he actually filming this? So, well, I thought yeah, he had the nails. Chris so, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Uh, when Metal suggested, I was like, "Wait, that makes most real sense." Because I don't think the people who make this food would have allowed this to be the ad footage. I don't think so. I want I'm, I'm no. opening it with a box cutter because that's really this, weird. <laughs> free all of it. Like <laughs> the way it looked in the beginning. I'm surprised. Like, I ran an ad for a company, and the entire promo material they sent me was just random people like flipping open a thing <laughs> in front of various different <laughs> settings. It was like three second videos. It was awful, and so I had to be creative. You have to Look, film it the yourself. people who make this, they're they're, yeah, they're chefs that make ethical food with integrity. They're not filmmakers like Christopher Stuckman. Burgundy. You can't expect them Burgundy. to, you know, have incredible filmmaking qualities. You know, skip the meal planning, grocery shopping, chopping, prepping. Yeah, let it flop out. Yeah. I wish <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, so you nuts. need the squelching sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want it. 
frozen meals delivered to your door. Factor has made meal prepping a lot easier this year for my family. Time is of the essence. We're always very- You also want to zap him with a little taser while he's talking family. just to make him go- <laughs> <laughs> Time's of the essence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't strike me either as a guy who's like super busy and like high energy and like, oh, I've got so much to do. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah, Maybe he doesn't made strike me, but his wife strikes him. He's made the equivalent of Lord of the Rings in the past few years, and so that's why he's so low energy, because he's packed it all into these wonderful movies that are going to come out. Mm. So yeah, there you go. Your faces are red now. I really want the wizard to tell me if he's eaten it. Um, <laughs> as soon as the ad's finished, the recording, they just fucking toss it into the bin. The camera just pans, <laughs> o the camera just pans <laughs> over a little bit more, and just like a box of Domino's pizza. Like, oh, no, uh, oh, no. <laughs> This is to show that it's uh, it is better than Domino's. They eat the Domino's. <laughs> oh, horrible. I'd eat more of it. <laughs> Very busy. There's always something to do, and it's been great to have fat. This is this part year. of the, really... the whole, like, the anecdote portion of the ad. You need to pitch it with an anecdote about yourself and why you, know, you need I to eat I'm not shilling like for food. it because they paid me. I'm shilling for it because I use it and I need it. That's, that's, yeah, that's what the truth that's is. That's right. I'll die if I don't eat. That's true. Damn. You can't prove that. Assuming he's not a cyborg. Well, no, if he was a cyborg, he'd look better than that. I mean, well, if he was a cyborg, you'd have more of a lively speech pattern, I think. Yeah, the cyborg would try harder, I think. They would know to fake. <laughs> it would mean. I, I think yeah. as well, if he was a cyborg, he wouldn't have aged. And I'm just comparing the face before me with the face on his thumbnail. Or, sorry, on his, uh, his icon. And it looks uh, he's gay. tiny. He's, he's, he's looks a bit different. A bit. <laughs> it looks changed a bit. Da, 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 da. He's help eliminate in. a lot of guesswork when it comes to meals. So head right. to factor75.com. I mean, what's the guesswork, really? Are really? you guessing about what you're eating? That looks like shit. Is, it, is he talking about the like grocery calorie store? Or... That looks like movie uh, box, But it's on the back of chicken. all the labels. <laughs> Whenever you go to the yeah, store and buy your food. It'll be the same amount of calorie counting, because they're going to provide you the calorie count in both It'll places. say, well, well, yeah, because the, the box in the freezer that they deliver straight to your door, codenamed Stuckman50, is going to be the exact same thing as the packaging at the grocery store that tells you all the nutritional information. Unless he's talking about like the the complications of cooking it, but I mean it's pretty straightforward. You put it on a like you put it in the oven or you put it in the saucepan for like whatever amount of time you're supposed to, and then you just put it on a plate. Yeah, cooking isn't actually very complicated at all. It's, it's complicated. Lies. Not much to it, yeah. I do it all the time. And, lies. And still. And still, we just cut a better ad than he did for this product. So you're welcome. Hell yeah, you guys can tear that up. Ad we, on your main website. Royal we. Is that a, That's right. Is that a chicken? Because that is very unappetizing. That is not an appetizing chicken. That's, yeah, I, I'm with Fringy on this one. That's it, not think a of it as like a yeah. golem chicken. Like it's, you that's know, a, functional. That's a mountain. That's a mountain dew marinated I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it does its job. I just don't know about the way when it I looks. Golem, I don't think functional anymore. Golem doesn't cook. Gollum, that's the kind of chicken that Gollum would eat. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and use code STUCKMAN50 to get 50% off yeah. your uh, first box. <laughs> oh, wow, that looks really... Oh, yeah. You know what? This I'll just go to the grocery dude. store and do it myself, Chris. I just lost my appetite. I think so. I appreciate that. <laughs> I've gained <laughs> my appetite. <laughs> <laughs> That's factor75.com and the code is Stuckman50. That link is in the description. What does the 75 the stand for? Get Stuckmanized, what the hell? Yeah. What the, yeah. Wait, what does the 75 stand for? Times. I guess, I guess they weren't the first to get Factor for like a, uh, 75. for a, you know, they like were, a web. Uh, uh, they, <laughs> they were founded in here. 1875. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Well, here, let me, let me go to factor75.com. And we'll see why it's called Factor 75. You, you go on like that little hunt, fun. we will continue. So All right. For 50% off your first Factor box, thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring this video. Thank when you. it comes to film in 2023, a there lot of big mainstream <laughs> movies didn't quite deliver in the ways that I hoped they would. Whoa, being what critical, I see. Okay, <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Easy there, you Welcome to the alt-right. Pretty toxic. I don't I feel, know. I feel like a hundred filmmakers just went, oh, ow, gee, ow, oh. my feelings. Damn. Okay. I worked so hard on this. My God. <laughs> and that led to some disappointment. It led to a feeling of detachment from film this year. But what... how, how are you doing? You said you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> how is this allowed? Yeah, how is this allowed? Is it because he's not swearing? But Chris, like, that please. means that this isn't negative? You sh you're shitting on creators right now, Chris. I don't like that. That's... What's wrong? Damn it. I they really say that hard. Too. All right, I can't find out why I they're called Factor 75. Yeah. I'm looking around for the About Us page at the bottom of the, you know, on the website, and I'm looking for, like, oh, we're Factor 75, because we think that 75... Check the wiki page. Maybe that has it. 
Ooh, maybe you're right. Yeah. If they have one. I assume they have. To a feeling of detachment from film this year. But when I really yeah, sat goes down to with all of the movies <laughs> I saw in 2023, I realized there were a lot of gems. And yeah, that doesn't change the original mm-hmm. statement you made, but yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Because of that, but, I've decided uh, to make this a top 15 list. Because- why oh, did you make it? Oh, what? What? That means each of them oh, are getting boy. less than a minute for sure yeah. now. 15 yeah. But we're almost yeah, three minutes in and he hasn't actually listed anything yet. So. No, yeah, it's been a okay. fucking ad. So it's an average of, what, 40 <laughs> seconds per movie? Is that more much? Than his, it's more than his well, usual reviews. The outro as well. How long is oh, the outro? The outro? <laughs> he's, got, he's got to stuckmanize us? Damn. Yeah. The fucking ad is going to get more screen time than any of the movies. Guys, yes. he's just here to make films, okay? <laughs> film. I'm still waiting for him to make film. Making but, film uh, and films. slather him some golem chicken. I thought it was 12. That's I don't right. know why I thought it was 12. Well, maybe it was originally 12, but then he loved so many, he put 15. And oh, then he I left, don't follow him, so I, I could He left a bunch that. of the ones that he thought were good, but not good enough in the honorable mentions. Uh, the I pit. I can't wait to do this. I've got his ever- is, is top list now. Let's do it. Well, you've Let's only got 20 minutes before you'll have to go, right? Oh you have God. to leave get us. through it. <laughs> Every time really stop I whittled it down to ten, there were like five other movies that oh, I please whoa. waste more time. We're what? not on the list. So what you're saying is ten <laughs> add five. So you couldn't fit in <laughs> forty <laughs> seconds each for your honorable mentions anymore? Nope. Was nope, that too nope. much hassle? Imagine making a video that was longer than fifteen minutes. That would oh, be nuts. Cringe. And uh, I find it interesting too that he's describing this like it was a crazy adventure. Like I, <laughs> I was coming up with my top ten, and lo and behold, I had fifteen entries. What? What? Wow. <laughs> I've seen two of them, and they not don't belong in there. Now oh. I know <laughs> truly what it is like to be human. Well, and I'm gonna have the be video. Wham! He hits you by the talking pitch. about my really intensive process really slowly, and then I just give each one a half a sentence. That's good. Can oh, we put shit. this on did, double speed? Did Tom Wilkinson die? Yes, he did. Yeah. Oh, that's... Mm-hmm. R.I.P. That's sad. I love him and everything he's in. Yeah, the like, uh, Batman Begins, of course. And uh, he's fucking awesome in Patriot, even though that movie's pretty controversial, but I like guess uh, I like his performance. And, yeah, Is it? Oh, that's... Uh, yeah, he's good. Unfortunately. Yeah, Rock and Roller, I recommend that, too. He's awesome in that. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So here we go. Here we go. Number 15. Number 15. Here we go. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Fucking hell. <laughs> play it, in. Play it, Johnny. <laughs> well, uh, so this will be fun. Who's seen Suzume? I have. Suzume. Nobody's seen it. <laughs> oh, well. Chris, tell us about it. Yeah, no, I, I... Wait, Maybe was he'll it? convince I've me. Seen I've, oh. I've seen Suzume. What was it like, Chris? Suzume. Was it good? It's okay. It's It didn't make any of my lists. I don't know. Not even in top could. 15. No. First oh. up is another dude. Those fucking intro tiles animated. are like seven seconds. So how wham. many? How many minutes are we? At? We're three minutes and fourteen minutes into a fourteen-minute video, and he's just starting his list. Mm-hmm. We're it's getting about to the first to of fifteen. Yeah. That's right. It's star-crossed romance from Makoto. Oh. Tell me what star-crossed oh, means, Chris. Oh, okay. oh. Shinkai. Filled with dazzling sequences and state-of-the-art animation, Suzume evoked oh, emotions. Oh, so it looks worse than the old ones. Okay. Oh my god, it's like Especially an AI with... of Chris Stockman reading. It made him feel. <laughs> he made, it made him feel emotions. Oh, what, what kind of emotions? Maybe we'll get that. Hang Human on. ones. You want to go to Human, Human emotions. <laughs> Human. <laughs> what emotions? Human. Human. So state-of-the-art the animation the just means a mixture of like CGI. Well, that's graphics. the thing, isn't it? It's like, yeah, that right. state of the art is just replacing really good. Uh, it sounds better than that. In me. Yeah. Especially when you consider that the primary relationship mm-hmm. involves a chair. What? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? I got to see that. Whoa, whoa, uh, stop everything. I have to see that movie. He talked me into it. <laughs> Damn, that was convincing. This is, this is, the problem is, right? <laughs> the problem is the people that watch him for whatever reason. Like, he's got no incentive to put any effort into his videos because people just funny. keep watching them. This was fucking worthless. <laughs> I hear somebody read a fucking list. We're supposed like, to do this. Them, I mean, no sorry, but it's, it's not the condensed summary, but that review was, this is a film by so-and-so that involves a chair. <laughs> Oh, wait, oh, that was <laughs> <laughs> like, if he was, was just my favorite creator, army. and I would see this, like, okay, now what? Should <laughs> I watch it? Yeah, this point, I guess you have to go on faith. You're like, I guess I'll just check it out. Yeah, okay. 
All right, I assume nobody here thinks this should be on anyone's top list, but I that's okay. I haven't seen it. I am genuinely not surprised that this is on Chris Stockman's I'll be honest, I'm not surprised either. I'm surprised it's not higher. <laughs> surprised it's number one. But, you know, <laughs> it's, well. a nice, it's a nice, safe, corporate-approved opinion to have mm. there, Chris. Come on, let's get a 10-second summary of Barbie. Here we go. I, I can't believe these tiles. These fucking oh, long-ass yeah. tiles. Why are we doing this? Yeah. You could have doubled the review <laughs> size. <laughs> Arby's a movie about a doll who comes to life and goes into the real world. No, that's Number 13. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> calm down. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't usually go that, that deep life, dive. Okay. And it's now a part of the real world. <laughs> this is the video version of padding an essay to make a word count. Yes. You're told <laughs> exactly. class, like, you, you got to write a thousand words. This is all he's doing. It's just padding. I get yeah. accused of that all the time. <laughs> Chris Tuckerman never font size used to 72. college rule on his essays. That's for sure. Highest grossing movie sure? of the year was technically based. Hold up. I just realized it's 2024 almost now. I need to explain the reference. All right. So notebook happening? paper typically comes in two sizes, which is wide ruled and college ruled. All right. <laughs> college ruled. The line. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Yeah. More lines on the page with college ruled. So that means if you have to write a bunch of stuff for pages, you want to use wide ruled because there are less lines. Back in the olden days when we used to have to, uh, <laughs> Gary will. We'll, yeah. we'll understand the reference Thanks. of paper. Oh, well, go we used to, have to write things on paper at school. I remember. We did. I remember. Some of us That's still use it. An old timey reference to paper. Oh. Now tell us about the onion you tied to your belt. Greta Gerwig's charming <laughs> film did everything it possibly could to differentiate charming. itself from the doll's origins to create something genuinely original. I've been saying this yeah. since. <laughs> everything um, it possibly could. <laughs> They couldn't um, have possibly done anything different to differentiate it. To differentiate it from the brand of Bobby, that's not I, an observation. I thought, I, which is I not at all true. I was going to say, I'm not even sure I, I thought the whole, 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 whole pull of the couch. aesthetic of this movie was that it was heavily based yeah. on... Yeah, if you're going to have a Bobby film, Barbie. this is kind of what you come close to envisioning. In fact, this is part of the reason why I was like, oh, look at that. They did that. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. See how far they take it. And I was like, oh. Wait, yeah. maybe he's gonna maybe he's gonna shed more light on this. Maybe. Can, well, we're halfway can you through do the a review. Genuinely now, right? original movie <laughs> yeah, on a pre-existing property. I think we're three quarters of the way through the review. Actually, <laughs> fuck me, it's almost over. Running out of time. July. Let Ryan Gosling perform at the Oscars. Hell, give him one what? while you're at it. Oh, ah, oh God. God. <laughs> all right. Well, that was that. <laughs> they couldn't have done yeah. anything better. Give Gra like, Ryan Gosling that, an Oscar. Was that give him an seconds? Oscar. No, it couldn't have been that much. At the Oscars. That's I feel like the intro thing was so like excited. half the length of that. I actually think he's timed it so that he can use just one continuous piece of trailer footage and not get a copyright claim. It's yeah, that yeah. short. Oh my god. I am overwhelmed with joy. I, he did this on purpose. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> so who here has seen Dream Scenario? I, I've I, have it I, I haven't seen it's it yet. Good. I want to see it's very it. Very good. I want to see it's, it. It's very the trailer good. looked interesting. Isn't it everyone's having a dream when Nicolas Cage is in it, basically? Nicolas Cage infects everyone's dreams around the world without explanation, and it's uh, very fun. Well, that's not it's a movie. That's Nick just reality, though. <laughs> that's true, but it's it's the best Nick Cage movie this year because he releases like fifteen of them. Well, movies. second best. They should do top fifteen Nick Cage movies. That would be more exciting. Yes. Yeah, I think it's like seven I minutes out of that. You should have been in Bobby. Let's this dumb T-shirt. Either if either if his mom bought him the T-shirt, I forgive him for wearing it. If he bought that T-shirt for himself, he's an asshole. So. <laughs> Wait, Nicholas Cage or Chris yep. Tuck? Oh, I'm talking about Chris Tuck. He's an asshole. Nicholas Cage has had an eclectic career that can't be characterized. By an no way, Chris. You can't really? spend a third of the review saying that Thanks. Nicholas Cage has had a career. Come on, come on, come on. We gotta go. <laughs> We know that because when you say Nicolas Cage, we know <laughs> Everyone who you're knows referring who to. Nicolas Cage is. And Dream Scenario will go down as one of his best roles. We live okay. in an age where everyone has something to say about so-called cancel you. culture. But I've never <laughs> seen it. What? This is an AI-generated script. <laughs> so succinctly and hilariously. That's it. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> nothing well, about the performances, nothing about the characters. Like, you know, this is good. Do. Next. I am I've been sold. doing it all wrong. Sold. It's almost a meme. Like, this is what you do to make fun of him, but you wouldn't change anything. 
I don't like what I'm seeing on the screen right now, Mew Play. <laughs> sorry, sorry, well, this, this could be the controversial one. If Stuckman four. likes it, then it's good. I have a feeling seeing. we might be split directly like half and half for people who dislike this movie, people who like it. So it's all good, all right? I well, like it. Nothing is good it right now. Sucks. <laughs> I mean, I thought it sucked too. John Wick 1. I don't care what forever. you think. I, wait, I liked it because I thought it was good. There, I've just done <laughs> oh, the Star Wars review. Calm down there. It features Keanu Reeves. Oh my goodness. That is my review. He didn't even say it's good. He just—it's just implied because it's on the list. Yeah. What, what do we yeah. think he's going to say in two sentences? He's going to say the act. He's got to mention Keanu the action. Reeves is an actor Keanu Reeves, who starred in the and Matrix. And Keanu Reeves, yeah. Uh, and uh, there was choreographed and he, he, action. Find a way to, oh, he didn't mention the director of the last film actually. So maybe Damn. you want to mention the director for John Wick. Well, he, he forgot. Free, he couldn't. There was like a seven seconds take up by the title screen. You know, mm. you got to. Which uh, I got to well, say, we still like, got another I don't know second what it here is, to go. There, there was like some weird dissonance between like this stock hype music and just like a still image that he pulled from google just like sitting stationary <laughs> on the screen there's like hype. a weird clash there yeah, yeah he like he's like very, get he fucking does a very hype bros like, zoom out you know so you get uh, real does movement, it a slight man. zoom out because i could barely tell i, I was think... looking at the last one i was i was like is this zooming a little bit just to get a little bit of movement in there i think the barbie one moved slightly let's <laughs> see how big the the muzzle like the the, fl the flash what's that the muzzle flash yeah there muzzle on the flash. gun let's see Let's see how big Which that is odd gets. that he has a suppressor and it's still showing muzzle flash, but that's right. Uh, well, hey, look, all right, Rags, it's cinematic. <laughs> Rags, John okay. Wick has always been hyper accurate for weapons. And it's also and really the weird that the slide isn't uh, being pushed back by the bullet being fired. <laughs> <and he's laughs> <not casing laughs> the but you it's know what? That's cinematic. fine. It's only a movie about guns, so whatever. Gun Fu. Gun Kata. I think you'll have you find. And bulletproof suit. But yeah, so the bet is oh, he's yeah. going to mention John Wick in the action. I don't Nobody think he's going to mention Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. That's what I meant plays, by the actor. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not very good with everything. <laughs> so is there anyone else, I guess? Uh, oh, he might mention uh, Blind Dude, Donnie Yen, right? Yeah. Well, yeah maybe. That's, that's Donnie Yen might be lucky enough to get a mention. <laughs> Daniel and Donnie are actors in this movie. Oh, it's so okay. There was a still going. going. It's okay. still going. Okay. Okay. We're almost there, folks. Get <laughs> ready. Right. The dissonance is dissipating. <laughs> <laughs> Keanu oh, Reeves oh, made first the words. closed yeah, out his tenure right, right. as the God Mode hitman, responsible for some of the well, gnarliest not really. kills He's just really ever lucky put that no one ever hits him. A masterwork yeah. of blood and Ugh. bullets, John Wick 4 somehow bested Sucks. each film that came before. Don't you I fucking take that. that back. Back. Take it that back. Money? Okay. Maybe he means it made more money. Maybe, maybe. Maybe he means more. No, I think he means it's better than all of them. No. no. Oh. I think that's what he means. First. John Wick won supremacy. Yeah. Top down mm -hmm. sequence, as well as a treacherous trek up a staircase. Oh, fuck. No, oh, don't mention the staircase. That's the fucking staircase. clown kind of scene funny. of the clown movie. <laughs> the clown case. <laughs> Like, I know that he's barely said anything, but he's already said more about this than all the other films. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. It, it still has only been uh, Keanu Reeves or action. There's nothing else. Yeah. He's say yours well, he's had big details, big though, about specific scenes. scenes, scenes. That's, that's so actually well, a fair point. an intense breakdown right Not now. only that, right. he got scenes. the visuals from the trailer to match what he said. Well, he mm. didn't really with the top down bit, but you know, okay. Well, that's a lot nobody, of work to ask now, come on. Yeah, it's have to search for that specifically. It's maybe because he actually watched this movie. I'm not sure he watched oh everything on this list. He was awake for this one. Okay. <laughs> Someone in chat just said John Wick dates the there chair. There were too many gunshots <laughs> for him to fall asleep. Yeah, Chris, has this one got a chair in it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Down it's it. a chair. He remembered as all timers for the genre. Uh, he didn't, he didn't oh, mention wow, Donnie wow. Yen. I feel bad. Really? Yeah. And he didn't mention the director. But it's an What's all going on, Chris? Yeah, no director. This was one of the movies of all time. Also, yeah, this, so this one, funny. <laughs> this is pretty funny. So what's, <laughs> what's very funny is Dead Reckoning is like in my, probably would be in my worst set of the yeah. films of the year, but probably still sits at like number 20 of worst, but I, I really didn't like this. As a huge fan mm -hmm. of Fallout, okay? It was biggest it's crazy how much worse, that, how like Fallout <laughs> is so much better. It's so much well, better. Well, Dead Reckoning was, when we came out of watching it, we were like, mm. and then when we finished our seven hour look through, we were like, good God, <laughs> it's like yeah. this so much. Yeah, it just became worse oh, and but, worse. But he knows, he, Christopher McQuarrie, he will mention that. Yes, he'll uh, mention He'll that. talk about Tom Cruise yeah. doing stunts. The motorcycle um, stunt, yeah. He'll say like that the that it was like cinematic and epic. That, that would be like, if I had to guess, so it will be three this things movie say. was directed by Breath Christopher taking stunts. McQuarrie. Oh, wow, Christopher, that's my name. That's very Starring interesting. Mm, Tom yeah. Cruise, probably the biggest movie star in Hollywood, and he did a mm, motorcycle stunt. Yeah. Not if you sort them by height, though. 
It'll be uh, it'll be funny if he mm -hmm. says like it's you know still rock solid and beloved or something when it's like it had a really poor performance in the box office compared to what they wanted. I wonder if he'll incorporate oh, yeah. that or not. Well, Dead. it's the point that they've changed like the that. name of the second one, right? They're not going to call it Dead Reckoning Part Two, the final chapter. <laughs> oh right, that's so Dead awkward. Reckoning Part Two, I mean, the final chapter. To, surely, Dead, you, you can't Dead have reckoning. Part One in your cycle and, then, and the no, no Part Two. I know, I know. <laughs> but, but it's like a marketing thing. If the first yeah. one didn't do so well, then Part Two is probably going to struggle, isn't it? They just try to Die scrub out the or... Part One from all past like, streaming and everything. They're trying to like. You don't need to watch the last one. You don't need to watch it. You'll be fine. Mm. But how can they remove it? It's in the film. Like, part one, the text, in the title screen. Yeah. It's like the inverse issue of, like, George, did you mean to make, did you mean to make this Star Wars movie <laughs> episode four? Did you, is that a typo there? They're like, no, no, no. Well, I can do three more. One years later. Uh, I'm gonna have to drop out, sadly, before the delights of no. this one. I'll never get to know Chris Tucker's opinion on it. I'm so sorry. I hope you'll live. I We'll love you. I honestly you wish time. you, I wish you guys the best of luck getting through the rest of this video because I suspect you might need it. Um, good luck with your sanity. I think we can pull it off. Yeah. I'll yeah. Catch Enjoy uh, your. Tell us. Uh, tell us how your Factor seventy five meal was <laughs> next time. Yeah, oh, I'll, have, uh, I'll have undercooked chicken with some slop on top, please. <laughs> slop is the best part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well. Anyway. Good luck to you guys yeah, and have a I, fantastic new year. Bye. <laughs> Tom Cruise continues to push it go. to the limit with his yes. signature franchise. Yes. And while this got to mention oh, Christopher it McQuarrie, is, come on. Century was not the yeah. near perfection of Fallout. This series is just so phenomenal that even a relatively good entry can still be ranked alongside the best action films ever made. Um, the entirety of relatively the good. So was there is an acknowledgement good? there that it's not it's not quite it's up not to snuff. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. But that's the way he frames it now, because it can't be critical. Finale is classic, white-knuckled, grip-your-armrest Bare tension. knuckle? White-knuckle! Everybody fucking says that. Yeah, that's <laughs> why you like gripping so really? hard. I've never said that. Yeah, like, uh, why's it gotta be white-knuckle? Why's it gotta be white-knuckle? What the hell, dude? Kind yeah. of movie people think of when they say they don't make them like they used to. As it turns Good? out... Sometimes they still do. Oh wow, he didn't mention Christopher McQuarrie. No <laughs> director. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was mainly time. just action, okay, and I assume so that's that, what he's talking about when he says all that. That, that. That's three movies. Maybe the trend is not naming the director. I think is it only it's only whenever he has just two things to say. Oh no, one thing to say. Oh, uh, what? That like it's a sign of immense desperation when he names the director. But yeah, like when when he's like, all I have to say is really it's good. Nothing to say. Wait a minute, who directed it? Oh, there we go. I'll oh. say that. Ah, that's well, you, interesting. You got to name the DP. That's how you really convey that you're in the film. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right, right. right. Have you guys heard of cinematographers? I have. I'm a film <laughs> Wait, guy. DP I'm is a director filmmaker. of photography. Right, for photography. That's right. Yeah. So, the so shouldn't it be DF for photography? Well, no, because <laughs> you would that's think not how... it's something to think about. It's something to think about. I'll just leave that there. Let everyone think about it. Yeah, I think so. Something Springy, to those think Americans about. Springy, that's they sure. spell everything fucked up. So mm. we're just gonna mm. deal with it. Also, mm. Zone of Interest. Uh, Chris, have you seen this one? Yes, I have. What do you think? It's, uh, I mean, it's dark. It's mm. really dark. Mm. So, well, Chris will say about, that. It's then, about, right? uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's basically about a uh, German commandant who lives with his family outside of Auschwitz. Ah. Well, and, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, so it's uh, that's like fucked up premise for a comedy, but all right. <laughs> it, it feels it feels more like an experimental film because you just see this family doing mundane, boring things, almost documentary like, and then the sound in the background is all of the sound of people being murdered inside Auschwitz. But the family is so you know immune to it; they just don't hear it. Oh, so, I don't know. I don't know how Chris the name this novel, is isn't it? it? Which is itself kind of experimental because you've got three narrators, multiple time skips. Um, and it's Martin Amos who writes like voice novels anyway, so like it's a tricky one to adapt, I'd guess. But but since the in, in the start of this review though, I think I'll just say that the book was good and it made me feel stuff. Yeah, it's well it's it's notable for its uh, sound design, the film. I, I don't know I'm surprised Chris Stuckman is even mentioning this film. It seems beyond his uh capacity to understand. <laughs> well considering Zone of Interest is the um that that what would Chris Stuckman he'd be the zone of Boredom, yeah. the zone oh of. My God, 
Oh, disinterest. Nice. Uh, yeah, wow. say, anyway. <laughs> the zone of disinterest would probably be the uh, the one to go for. But I was just yeah. going to say that uh, knowing that he within his scope of assessment, you get maybe a mention of something that happens, maybe a mention of something that is in there, like a character who directed it and who is acting in it. Which of those four will be mentioned here? Probably. Hmm. It is. Uh, is is it? What, what what kind of feel? Like, he's, there's no action in it, so he's probably just going to mention it's uh, harrowing, maybe, or has a lot to say. He'll yes. say it has a lot to say. Yeah, what's the keyword? <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, "What does it have to say, Chris?" He's like, "A lot." <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So sick of it already. Oh, the white laser. bar at the bottom. It's the um, it's the nostalgia critic thing we had on yeah. that Halloween when he <laughs> took ten years for the each fucking title screen. It turns to directing ten years. All right, director mention. After Under the Skin to deliver Ooh. a searing and ultimately terrifying portrait of complicity. His voyeuristic camera captures a family that lives directly outside the walls of a concentration camp <laughs> and watches from afar, never in close up as they go about their lives, hearing the horrific sounds of death just mere feet away. It's the best sound design of the year, in a film Dang. filled with shocking moments that will churn your stomach. Well, you said that's some kind of sound design. That was the most that he had to say on any hmm. film so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's most approaching, of it... like, bot he's approaching bare minimum. I mean, I mean yeah, like, it's still... <laughs> because, uh... it's still... Not much at all. I almost uh, said, what he said to the other ones. Like, what about the sound? And I was like, no, no, no. Come on. He mentioned the sound <laughs> design. That's enough. <laughs> so, I should start saying Chris Gore instead. Uh, the Artifice Girl. Have you seen this? I actually have not seen that. But <laughs> also, right. I object to just using the name Chris. It's giving Chris's a bad name. Chris is <laughs> oh, a bad name. <laughs> yeah. Can you just say Stuckman? I can. I, get, I, I will try. I think you're, how, how many of your artificial movie? girl movies have we had this year? I don't know. Seems name like them. a lot. How many have we had? Four uh, things? I don't, I don't know. Creator? Was Mathrigan out this year or was that last year? Mathrigan. Uh, Mathrigan? <laughs> yeah. The year of artificial girls. Sounds like Hollywood just Mithrigan, wants to make is that the prequel girls. to Expend for Bulls? <laughs> yes. oh, no. That's on no one's list. I'm, I'm, I was about to say, I'm starting to wonder if we were the only people on planet Earth that saw Expendable Balls. Well, we talked about it, <laughs> kind of. Expendable Balls was magical. Yeah, everyone so should watch our review of Expendable Balls when we don't talk about the movie basically yeah. at all. We talked about Mortal Kombat <laughs> and other things. Zelda or something. <laughs> I tried to bring it back, but it was but like. But why, nah. yeah, why would you? I've been stopped. You made the right choice. <laughs> Newcomer Franklin Rich New what? made the director. director. Oh, you know, it's getting, it is weird if he doesn't mention the director. It's like, why didn't you? Yeah, because yeah, now, now it's something? come back around to the trend being naming the directors. Indie movie. One that, like Clerks, El Mariachi, Primer, and even the Blair Witch Project, should inspire countless filmmakers to realize that it can, in fact, be done. His low-budget film is one of the best scripts of the year. And although I find this why? word extremely it's overused... number nine? Why do you need a why? He's done the what? Oh, uh, yes, that's right. It is the best. One of the best scripts of the year. And it'll inspire me. You many. don't need to know why. I think yeah, he said right. the filmmaker was a friend of his. Oh. I think, I think he said that in the past. <clears throat> okay. Oh, well, moving on then. Who was that, Lance Henriksen? <laughs> it is also timely. Oh, all right, there you go. Oh, it's, 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 <laughs> cool. it's timely. I was half I'm expecting nice him to say some more, but uh, yeah, okay. It's not what it, it is. It will inspire countless filmmakers that it can, in fact, be done. What the fuck is it? What can be done from this film? <laughs> being. Countless. It is being. It is making a good low budget movie, maybe. I don't know. Whoa, that's very generous of you, but yes, probably. Hey, I'm just guessing here, right? <laughs> Uh, well, I he's mean, definitely mentioning Martin's Well, yeah, how could, how could this not get on the and list? Say that this is like one of Leonardo DiCaprio's best performances or something like that as well. And the, it, go, it shows us that cinema isn't dead and the oh, and blah, blah, blah. Will he mention Robert De Niro? Maybe. maybe alongside maybe. Di DiCaprio, maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Scorsese has done it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, honestly, yeah, though, I think we've covered everything he's going to say, but let's find out. I think it is sound 
Leonardo DiCaprio nice. and Robert De Niro Ding. reteam with oh, Martin yes. Scorsese to tell the often overlooked story of the Osage Nation and the murders yeah. that took place in the 1920s. If it was an anime, it'd be Osage. Despite being surrounded by legends, gives an Oscar worthy performance. Yes. And Scorsese once too. again One directs like he's in his 20s. He said, oh, he what does that even mean? He does it again. He didn't mention anything in broad meta even. We had to go. We just had to go. Oh, we had no time. Uh, uh, amazing animation and art. Um, uh, Miles Morales' what story is, is incredible. Like, it's an amazing Spider-Man arc. Uh, what else yeah. would you say? Yeah. special effects, uh, cutting um, edge technology. Is going to mention that it's Phil Lord? Oh, wait, they didn't direct it. Who, it was, they were producers. Um, no, yeah. I, do you think I, he'll I, go I as far as to say it shows that animation can make it in the boat? Or do you think that's too oh, much yeah, right now? Well, yeah, that one's complicated because on the one mm. hand, that could be something that he could say that would be silly. Yeah. Um, like just telling of, of like where he's at when it comes to animation. It's like, oh wow, it took you this long. <laughs> but uh... what's funny is I thought Kills the Flower Moon was going to get more time, but now I'm like, yeah, because we're you know we're we're coming oh, we're down, you know? Through, you know, we're yeah. running out of time. But but I guess it means that it is gonna in a get way. More lopsided, right? I was going to say in a way we're getting more, more time, time because he's yeah. he's going through them so fast. He's racing through them so fast that now we're halfway. So th I think it was about three minutes that he started actually listing it was like three minutes and 15 seconds so that means in three minutes he's covered uh he's covered seven films right yeah that's minutes, you're right films. yeah so yeah the the rest of the films are getting more time now okay interesting oh, well, unless the outro is really, <laughs> really long <laughs> yeah no, the really really out long. don't forget out. factor 75 <laughs> it's gotten the most info of anything else and he got paid for it so hmm the best superhero movie of the year oh. by far i mean what is the competition this yeah, year the competition is not great uh, <laughs> the guardians, marvels quantum mania guardians, guardians of the galaxy 3 mm. uh -huh. um, i mean it's like I, all the dc movies, movies. <laughs> i guess it is i'm i'm trying to think like is what would have be in a chat help me out the flash no come on <laughs> fuck no oh it goes without saying but um, i mean uh, apart from that um aquaman 2 no <laughs> Black Adam wasn't this year. No, it's all a blur. Year. I don't blame y'all. It's it was that's all a blur. Yeah. <laughs> Superhero movie sometimes. Oh. Rebel Moon. <laughs> Rebel Moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, it basically is a superhero picture. movie. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I can agree with that. Spider Verse took everything great about the first film and cranked and it the made dial it worse. to eleven. It made oh, it worse. yes, cranked it up to eleven. Yeah, you're fatigue right. Yes. could not be escaped. The team behind the Spider Verse hmm. movies proved that there's still plenty of life left in superhero movies. I'm surprised you went that direction instead oh, yeah, of animation. Not, but, yeah, okay. not yeah about that superhero seems movies to be the aren't dead. Yeah, yeah, superhero movies say, aren't this because year, one did well the, with 20 that flopped. All of them are drowning in their own fucking piss, and then yeah. there's this one that's like, okay, he's like, see? <laughs> the one that has this head above the piss barely <laughs> can just breathe. You just have to make a damn good one. Oh, oh whoa! Wow, he didn't oh. The animation. That's oh my critical. God. He's just said all the other ones are shit. That's true. Chris, no. Chris, what are you doing? Work you hard on We should say Stuckman, though, yeah. sorry. Yes, Stockman, please don't right. use the word right. Chris. Stop it. Stockmanize them all at once. Stockman. Jeez. Damn Maybe it. the rest were good, but this was damn good. Was good this one definitely establishes that Miles Morales is Miles Morales. He just said it was. Like he, you know, like he didn't actually explain why he thought it was good. <laughs> he's <laughs> gotta, he's, the next sentence has to be about how good the animation is. No way he doesn't No, it's it. over. It's over. It's, it's the done. easiest Did take. Oh my yeah, god! Oh, okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did he not mention the animation? Am I crazy? He didn't mention the animation. No, he, he didn't. He kind of like, no. he kind of said something about the animation. <laughs> Are you sure? I thought he said, I thought he said, he I said he the did, team. Like he said like animation, maybe? I could have sworn no, all I, he had no, to say no, no, about no, it was no. the fact that it was a superhero movie that did well. Yeah. He said that it was dialed okay. up to 11, and let, that would be an umbrella term that might be Yeah, let me, let me roll back 10 <laughs> seconds so we can watch the whole review again. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a little bit longer than that. Oh, where are we? Yeah, this is right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the best superhero movie of the year, right. by far. Okay. Spider-Verse took everything great about the first film and cranked the dial to 11.
in a year where the term superhero fatigue could not be escaped, the team behind the Spider-Verse movies proved that there's still plenty of life left in superhero movies. You just have to make a damn good mention one. It. No, no animation. Oh my then. god! Damn. <laughs> yeah, I really you just have to yeah. throw 300 Spider-Men in with a Miles Morales <laughs> movie, and you got yourself a winner. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that like the animation for it is like culturally super impactful. You can see it like affecting other sort of films. I can't believe you would mention that. That's like the easy. When, when we're like almost insulting that was predictive what he's going to say, what we're referring to are the like easy accepted takes. Yeah. So when he forgets mm -hmm. to put them in, it's like, what are you doing, man? Are you crazy? Yeah, like, <laughs> why doesn't he just read the titles and just read off his titles? That's all you do. <laughs>can get over how fucking long these are. Uh, Jesus. The movie has ever been a warm hug. Alexander Payne's The Holdovers. Oh, there you go, movie. director. Paul Giamatti plays the most the lovable actor. curmudgeon this side of Hugh Grant and Harrison Ford. And when I'd reached the end of the film, I could have watched these characters for another 30 minutes just go about their lives. You know, when people make those sorts of statements, they don't usually say for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I know, that's really <laughs> odd. I could have, uh, 30 I minutes is the limit. I, like I could have watched 30 minutes so much. I want to see more minutes. But only 30 <laughs> minutes. This is the end. I think this is the end. I think as soon as we hit play, is it going to, well, is the music going to? Before that, though, I was just going to say, like, yes. you know, um, the Avengers, Age of Ultron, a lot of people say, like, the best part of that movie is when they're just hanging out, having drinks in uh, Dark Tower. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would say, like, yeah, if you have the dialogue strong enough, we could just watch them do that for a whole movie. You don't usually go, like, I could watch that for 30 <laughs> minutes. You're like, <laughs> okay. I could, I could go, like, five more minutes with these people. You know? <laughs> I loved them so much. 35 minutes would be pushing it, though. Yeah, yeah come on now. Much. We've all got they things They described to do. Harrison Ford as, as a lovable curmudgeon. Is that true? Like, mm. is it lovable? Like, Harrison Ford, oh, he wants to die. That's really cute. <laughs> Maybe he's talking about... which like, Ford uh... we're talking about. <laughs> What's the, the day? Chill. What was it? What oh, was that movie where he played the right. news anchor guy? Oh, Morning Glory. Have you seen that? Morning Glory. I have seen it. I liked that. I thought it was fun. I liked it too. Yeah. We should watch it sometime again. Because, yeah, the premise of that movie, I think, is that Rachel McAdams takes over uh, a, a, a sector of a news station and she wants to move Harrison Ford, who's like the weatherman and has been for like decades, into more active news and he doesn't want to. And, you know, conflict happens. It's, uh, I remember that being fun. Hmm. Winter vibes along okay, with the heartfelt conversations go. brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> ah, there it is. All right, yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye. Right, what is that? This is a film that I actually want to see. I've heard a couple people recommend yeah. it so far. Is anyone, someone here is going to be better? Than, well, uh, Chris Gore, you can go ahead and summarize what this film's about, right? Because you've seen it, I think. Oh, I, I have not seen the holdovers. Is one of the few. No, no, no. American fiction. Oh, American fiction. Oh, yes. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I have seen American Fiction. It's awesome. It's it's in limited release. It's only playing in theater. I don't know when it opens. Why? But it's it's very good. It's it's basically totally rips on uh, white progressives. So well, like and just how they plot synopsis, right? They... Is he writes a book as a joke, and then it turns out to be really successful. That's correct. Yeah. So he he just sort of leans into well, I guess this is what white liberals want so i'm just gonna like do what they want and write and it's he just does it yeah to sort of f with them and then it becomes a huge hit and so sort of stuck with this persona that becomes huge but it's not what he really wants to write yeah he doesn't want to be put um, in a box the trailer sold me i want to see it um yeah no it's very good it's very good oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> These aren't even necessary. You I'm can just say number five dreams. is, and then say it, and then start explaining. You don't need this. Well, I'm, I'm getting tired of hearing the same like seven yeah. seconds. Yeah, of, dude. Like lame stock music. I'm tired just of that, like, again. Nine. This guy wants to make films, huh? <laughs> <laughs> First okay. time director. He's an expert in pacing, Gary. Director Cord oh, yes. Jefferson teamed with director, Jeffrey Wright actor. to bring us an eye-opening but also hilarious look at how Hollywood loves to put artists in boxes and keep them there. In this case, how the establishment is profiting from black artists and even silencing them under the guise of lifting them up. One scene where a group of writers are judging the quality of books for a contest 
gave me my biggest laugh of the year. Why? Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> Jesus God, Christ. He, like, sacrificed all the time to be, just to tell us there's a scene that made him laugh a lot. Yeah. God. All right, well. I mean, yeah. right, anyway, moving on. Well, I feel like our casual yeah. thoughts about, like, I have, oh, I've, I've, I've only seen the trailer and I feel like we talked more about what the movie is. <laughs> Well, it's just, I don't know, like, if it's the thing that you're really passionate about, like, it's the thing that is your central interest in life, you think you'd just be, like, overflowing with observations. You just, you know, someone had to stop you, right? They'd have to pull the microphone away and make you stop, I mean, you, or, you know. You, you would think that, but doesn't he have, like, Mike Flanagan reviews that, like, seven minutes long? It's oh, like, it's my favorite thing uh, ever. Like, uh, yeah, I think the, it? I think the, well, wasn't, like, the Haunting of Hill House one, like, which one was it? it was, I don't know. I, like, I want to say minutes. this, you can go and confirm it, but I'm pretty sure his review of the TV show at ten episodes <laughs> that are an near hour, an hour please. each per episode yeah, is four and a half minutes. Yeah, uh, let's take a look. How? Um, yeah, it was, it was four and a half minutes, exactly. Four minutes and 29 seconds. How is that possible? How can you talk that's about insane. ten episodes of television in any way that's meaningful in, like, four and a half minutes? Well, the thing is, honestly, like, if, if we the challenge Drinker that... to review uh, the Lord of the Rings extended trilogy in <clears throat> five minutes... <laughs> Feel like you'd be like, okay, I'm gonna be speaking well, fast, you just, you and then you would like you shoot play. out so yeah. much shit. Yeah. But obviously, Chris, like the first minute will be intros, stuck and yeah, fucking yeah, all this fine. shit. And then, like the second minute will be who who made it, what he's made I'm before. Really fast either, because like if you if you like race and just try to jam it with as much stuff as uh as possible, maybe. But even then, yeah. probably not ideal. That'd be an interesting challenge, wouldn't it? Review as extensively as possible something huge within, like, a minute. Hey, look, four minutes and 29 seconds is as close to exactly four and a half minutes <laughs> as you're gonna get, all right? <laughs> that uh, isn't unless it, it was still, actually yes. four minutes and 30 seconds, but in spirit, look, all right, in spirit, spirit. it was actually. I understood. I was there. <laughs> I, I know, right? Like, I keep pausing. <laughs> what is she looking at? What's up there? Number Maybe four. It's Rex, Rex, that's the, the nature of the marketing. You've got to buy and watch the film to find out what she's staring at. Uh, oh, Emma I'm not that interested. Definitely Emma Stone. I don't know. Probably the director as well. He keep, he's gone back oh, to Oh, definitely, the yes. You'll say it's a wacky yeah. take. It's a really inventive and creative film. It's going to challenge people's perceptions of stuff. Maybe I've gone too far with that. I don't think he's going to maybe won't say that. But, It'll uh, make you think about Yeah, but the stuff. thing is, <laughs> surely now these should start getting longer, but they've not really increased in size. Maybe I save it all for number one. That's what she I said. wanted him to keep going a bit more with his American fiction review. I, I feel like there's a little bit of relative depth there. Like, he had a point about, like, uh, writers being put in a box, <clears> and you just, you know, executives just want the same thing over well, and over fair. from a, a surely successful could, person. I thought that was interesting. But... We could go on about every one of these films. Just a little bit more. Yeah. yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I'm just bit. saying that one in particular stood out to me. It's like, oh, you got something there. Oh, to, we're we're on the next one. I oh, guess done? there's oh. nothing. Oh. By the way, um, yeah. uh, I, I I feel so fucking cruel saying Chris Gore as opposed to just Chris. I'm just gonna say Chris. I'm gonna do it. You know who I'm talking to, Chris. Uh, <laughs> I assume you were interested in seeing this more so to see what his selection was. But at this point, the selection's not very interesting because of the fact that he's his his like approach to it describing why any of these films are meaningful is kind of just like uh. You know what I mean? He it's, literally, he has no insight whatsoever. That book that you purchased, which I'm shocked, but <laughs> I, that book, I, that book has made the rounds at the Film Threat White Elephant Gift Exchange for years. I got stuck with it. I just mailed it to Az because <laughs> I do not want that book. Well, in see, here, here, you throw this away. When I'm done with it, I can <laughs> mail it to uh, fucking Gary. <laughs> yes, please do. It's no. just, it's a, it's a joke. This is book us. piracy. I'm All right, I ever gave you my it. address. Are there any shocking <laughs> selections in that book when you flip through and see well, what it's the most basic? We're doing that next because me and Fringy know what the list oh, is. I assume you do as well, but the, the world doesn't know yet. So, oh, I don't have the book anymore. It's oh, I, I have it. it. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll oh, take God. care of you. <laughs> oh my goodness! The chapters were so short. I mean, the chapters in that stupid book are so short. <laughs> They're longer it's, than it's this the video's chapters. Oh, that's that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Weird. <laughs>
weird. Right. I never thought I'd see Emma Stone as a variation yep. of Frankenstein, so I'd like to thank Yorgos Lanthimos for giving that to yes, me. She will likely are. secure a second Oscar win for this, but it's honestly Mark Ruffalo who impressed me the most here. He's staggeringly funny and didn't he say something? Mark Ruffalo say something like he's it's finally can act doing things again because he's been stuck in the MCU for so long. And it's, you sort of sit there, it's like, you chose to do that. Like, what are you, yeah. what? Yeah, you yeah, could yeah, have left it any time. For it. You took Go the money. The well, you signed the contract, also, my how, dude. How were you stuck? They never made a Hulk movie again, so. Yeah, he comes in for like a day. <laughs> <laughs> goes, blah, 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 then uh, just leaves. I was stuck working two, two <laughs> days a year a to do a scene, scene for She-Hulk where they destroyed my character. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, they just, they, they gave me this big check and I just said <laughs> yes and did it. <laughs> I you just know? couldn't go. Crazy. Uh, if only there was something else I could have done. Completely different from anything we've ever seen from him before. And the film is absurdly gorgeous looking, with wonderful costume design and sets. Oh. I don't know what's about okay. it yet, though. Some of them are always, like, surprised that that's seconds. it. Yeah. Well. I timed it. 25 seconds he talked right. about wow. that. Wow. Uh, Here's the big one, folks. Pretty long. Everyone loves standards. this movie. So let's see if he impresses mm -hmm. you with his assessment of this film. Gonna start any minute now. Here it comes. <laughs> Without a doubt, the biggest surprise of the year for me. A stunning, emotionally powerful, and downright thrilling film. Really? Godzilla Minus One proved that not only is there still life left in our favorite kaiju franchise, but after all these years, Don't they could make what just might be the best one yet. When that Godzilla you deliver theme... that any more <laughs> <laughs> right? The best one After all yeah. these Listen, years, okay. we finally have the kite. It's my da, 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 da. one. Uh, we don't even know if it is really his favorite good. one. All he said is it might be the best one. You're like, can you maybe? It's like he's watching a timer and he's like, I'm talking too fast. <laughs> uh... I need to slow down. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced he went to G Chat GPT and was like, give me the list yes. of all the good movies this you year. Ever think... And then just like he gave him a list. And he was just like. Here's the thing, though. A, I think only a human verbatim. is capable of this level of boring. Like, I think ChatGPT oh, no. would have generated a more interesting fucking script than this. Yeah, ChatGPT <laughs> would be like, well, obviously humans want to have yeah. uh, expression and emotion so that they do not get bored and unplug me. So I mean, just, <laughs> I need just, to... <laughs> just the things that read out stuff that you put in, they're like pretty expressive these days already, so... But yeah, we should have done our predictions, because of course he said, like, it's stunning, it's emotional, it is a good movie, and it's... You know, shown that Godzilla ain't done, it's like, I mean, well, they, they're cranking along with their huge MonsterVerse stuff, so I, don't, I guess we didn't think it was over anyway. Um, I assume well, what, that because they made the a lot of money of, and everyone knows Godzilla, they would keep guess, making them. Isn't there also the implication there, like, of the that he thinks that the Western ones are kind of, like, not that good? That's how, that's his, that's new stuff, mm. but he, he doesn't say things are bad, he just doesn't say they're good, and it also implies they're bad, that's... Well, that's yeah, the which, key um, to a good reviewer, is trying to interpret what they mean by what they don't say. That's what mm. I like in a reviewer. <laughs> kicked mm. in, I felt this like This movie was... is not only adjective one, but also <laughs> adjective it is also two. <laughs> <laughs> and also, maybe adjective three. Whoa. <laughs> well, let's not go that far. But not get crazy. Duckman, Dude, you lips. just want to get him drunk. Just see what he might say. You'd be like, come on, Chris, give me an opinion. Silly. Give me a fucking opinion. Come what on. What do you think about making YouTube videos? <laughs> I fucking hate it! <laughs> I would love it if he said, you know what? You know what? Blade Runner? It's bad. He'd be like, oh! <laughs> Let's go, Chris! Overrated. <laughs> <laughs> say that into the microphone. <laughs> how, many, how many times did he need to watch it before he said he liked it? Was I it believe like it was time? five. <laughs> Why? How was does it five? that happen? I don't know. I, I do find that really funny. Um, it's exceedingly <laughs> funny. I mean, I can understand, like, after the first watch Staggeringly watch funny. He said staggeringly funny. Like, ah. after the first watch, I was like, oh, maybe I didn't get it properly. I give it another shot. After the second one, I'd be like, okay, no, I still don't like it. It's fine. <laughs> like, what was your thought process here? Uh, okay, I give well, it another go. And He's another one. <laughs> you're you're supposed to one. like it. Which, that's what motivated <laughs> him to do it. It's a film you're supposed to like. So he had to keep watching it until it's like, Ah, oh, oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah, I, I get, yeah, I get it, I get yeah. it, I, you I know what, it now. the funniest thing would be if like, I, I kind of always got it, I just couldn't put it into words. Yeah, you know, I always did, but I wasn't there yet, and that's just a testament to Ridley Scott's excellent direction, and Harrison Whereas Ford, the watches Blade Runner, and he's like, 
It was kind of. I'm kind of mixed on it. Did weekend, he watch the weekend, same uh, version, or did he watch uh, like well, all the different which versions? Version he watched. I can't remember which <laughs> versions he watched because it can make a difference. Also, rags. We can talk about that at some point. We Please, let's do. I rewatched it. Uh, I think a week or so ago, and I came out with kind of mixed feelings. <gasps> I liked it, but it's kind of mixed on it. Uh, we can. We can. I'm Something to, to discuss. Always happy to watch Blade Runner again. But hey, I just I way prefer that than I watched it. I have opinions, but I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a funny scene. Yeah, coward. it was funny. Uh, just own it. Like if you if you didn't like it, that's that's again, yeah. it's more interesting. It's interesting if you mean? didn't like it. It is. There are people out there who can be like what you consider obnoxious and terrible opinion, but I'll always consider them more interesting than the people who have every approved opinion you could ever imagine. Yeah, exactly. When, and then like you find like, out. Yeah. They do actually have controversial and very mm. specific opinions, but they just don't want to tell anyone about it. It's like, oh. Yeah, I mean, like, memes aside, the fucking brass ones on Cinematic Venom to make a video talking about oh, yeah. how shit The Lord of the Rings is. Like, geez, <laughs> I, unironically, like, wow, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, you go. What a shit. Yeah. Just Chad yes it and say their shit. Yeah, Theo, <laughs> Theo said he's talking about me. <laughs> Bill Cinema <sighs> with a giant monster. Wait, sorry, oh, did he no. say real cinema? Go back, I want to hear that. <laughs> I want to hear that. He old cinema. I love how he said then giant felt... monster and then it just ended. <laughs> you have to mention a giant lizard, come on. Like, I was so watching... Speaking of giant real... lizard, Chris Stuckman, everyone. Uh, no, everyone's talking over it. You gotta go back I'm again. I'm sorry, Free. I couldn't stop them. Freedom of speech. Until the theme kicked in, I felt like I was watching real cinema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, I, I don't know. I feel like... So that's really cinema. funny, but I mean, again, isn't the implication there that like the the, the most thing, most everything else is not real cinema? Yeah, not real kino. That, 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 the, by the way, heavy, which, which real... by the way, I with the Western Godzilla films, like these new ones, they're not good. Like I don't like them at all. No. But you know, by the way, he's that, not allowed to do that. If we had him here right now, and we said define real in cinema. He knows in his head. He'd be like, I can't do that because I'm going to eventually get to the point of saying that other things aren't those. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I might say trap. something that verges on committal. Yeah, like, well, yeah, if he said, like, yeah, other films are shit, and this one was fun, you're like, Chris! How dare you? I mean, stuck well, well, I, well, I mean, I'd be saying Chris and then clapping. It's like, okay, at least you expressed how you actually felt. Oh, dude, it would be a... It would make the channel so much more interesting if he was willing to say these things. But no, he said no. He's <laughs> even more boring than he was just years ago because of the whole, the new format of, like, I can't be critical. Who wants well, yeah, so much a channel that has zero insight and zero original ideas? Yeah. That's the thing yeah, at least he's a review. coward. If you get rid of the lines about the kaiju, then all you're left with is it's stunning, it's emotionally impactful, it proves that films can be good if you do them right. And you can just apply <laughs> that to every single thing he's covered so far. Well, and I mean, you wouldn't have that. to change anything. Well, I mean, you can. That was what he did for Spider Man. He didn't even mention the, the thing that was expected to be mentioned of the it, animation. like the good animation. He just said That's it insane. was good because it was good and it proves that <laughs> good movies can be good. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Anyway, yeah, well, we've got how much left? Like, a got third two of the video? Left. We got two left. Yeah. A third of the video for no, two of them. I guess he's going to give a it, long uh, review. Uh, no, it's let's probably going to be, be a little outro. It's going to be the He's going to talk again, about the state of Patreon. cinema, maybe. Oh, uh, well, with so, because with Oppenheimer, because Oppenheimer's, Oppenheimer's next. next. So, probably. Christopher Nolan, Killian Murphy's best performance. Yes. Practical effects. Take uh, the yeah. of the atomic bomb. Yeah, practical effects, maybe. And that it shows, he's going to say, it has to show something about the Metro Cinema. Yes. It, he could pick from a couple of things. Who would have thought that an R-rated biopic would... Uh, <laughs> I'll <laughs> take a billion dollars. You know what? Uh, well, you captured there as well, Rags. Is like, you could have a normal person would be like, who'd have thought? Like, that kind of energy. But he'd be like, who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> who would have thought that a sort of... thing would have occurred in such a way? I cannot believe it. I Giant am blown monster. away. Giant monster. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> it's only this, this one and another one, and we're Stop. free. Just two more, Mel. We can do it. <laughs> Christopher Nolan wrote mm -hmm. and directed yes. a three hour biographical Yes! Film. yes. Oh, we did it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. Thank you. Uh, and with end. no CGI shots. Oh, and yes. 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 yes! Oh, my God. Oh, to pull in almost one billion dollars. Yeah. 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 
We can write these. We yeah. can do it, guys. <laughs> we did it. Oh, ding, God. ding, 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 ding. Remarkable. Chris, to write your videos. God, Killian Murphy, do it. Chris, we are chat GPT for you now. <laughs> We've done it. And in our day and age of franchise-dominated yep. money makers. Killian yes, Murphy meta. should get the Oscars yes. for his intense okay. portrayal of wow. Isaac's best. And with any luck, Nolan will walk away with a statue or two. Well, if he's well. saying he's getting, he should get an Oscar, then surely he's I think that's, saying. Yeah, that's very close point. to the same statement. Yeah. When it comes to my number one pick mm, of the year. Not sure if it'll I, qualify. Oh, that's it. Wow, that's, that's, it. It. that's it. That's it. We actually we got everything that he said. Nailed it. Nice. Yep. All right. It depends on what his. Wait, what would his number one be now with everything? I have no clue. Um, hmm. Triangle? Uh, no, it's probably well, something I mean, that makes him look good. It's certainly not the color. <laughs> that won't be his. Uh, um, that won't be his number one. The Marvels. The Marvels. Uh, <laughs> <the Flash. laughs> Some people say Bobby. He's done Bobby. Yeah, Bobby was like uh, done Bobby the already. The creator. Oh, the killer. Maybe I don't think he. The killer that. would be based. No, no, well, no, because his review is not that like. Even by his standards, Rebel level Moon. of passion though, is not very high. Rebel Moon? Rebel Moon. Rebel yeah, Moon. Is it going to yeah, be like man, some indie funny. film that no one's ever heard of? It can't be Mario. Someone no. saying Boy into Heron? No. Or Hero? no, no, that was an honorable mention. Oh, yeah, that's I right. Think we're done. I think we're done with Heron mainstream this films. Dick. I we're think it's definitely done with mainstream. I think it'll be like... <laughs> okay, I think the... Them. Yeah, those suggest... So I think the most likely... Iron Claw could be... It can't be, like, as was mentioned, it can't be a movie that did really well and is really well known. It can't be franchise. That can't mm. be number one. No, so, no way. So the killer could be it, oh, and it could be um, Iron Claw as well. That's true. Extraction two? No, I don't think you would pick no that. Way. Napoleon? No I don't way. think you'd pick well, Napoleon. Well, that should have been on the no, list instead of no Mission way. Impossible. I don't think so. Not for the best movie. Extraction two is good. I like the Extraction two. I awesome. suspect the yeah, killer. Extraction was yeah. great. All right. Yeah, I'm not is... expecting the killer. I'm expecting it to not be that. I don't. I, um, genuinely, I don't know what it's gonna be because I. Yeah, no idea. It could be anything, kind of. <laughs> my, if, if you would have asked me in the beginning, I would have probably said Oppenheimer or something around those lines. If Oppen you would asked me in the beginning, I would have said Killers of the Flower Moon. I would have thought you'd put as number one. I thought Oppenheimer out. was number one, because I'm just like here for the memes, so I wouldn't pay attention <laughs> to the numbers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Expendable <laughs> balls, let's do it! Really let's it do it! Until that about would be hilarious. Ago. Oh, it was a week ago oh. that he discovered, so it wouldn't be the Iron Claw. It would be Iron Claw, yeah. I had no clear pick in my mind like I did last year. Or the year before it, I I just didn't. Okay. Do you understand? Okay, yeah, Stuckman, this right, is this uh, is fact. Really you can cut all shit. of this. Yeah, you could just no, cut and you hit that twelve minutes or I don't, whatever. Wait, so is the film that he's picking came out recently? <clears throat> yeah, which would yeah, be Iron Claw. Ago. That would make sense. Iron um, Claw is not what, what, mainstream what, yeah. in the same way, and it's not franchise. I still need to see that one. Okay, but I really like, went what, back and what forth is... in my head to see what movie would make me look coolest. Why would he need to be going back and forth? Wouldn't it just be that Oppenheimer was his number one until a yeah. movie came along yeah, and impressed him more, and then that would be you, number you one? You have to understand for you. He, he oh, was probably trying purple, to be man. like, I need to pick a number one that looks awesome, but like Oppenheimer, uh, it's too mainstream. Everyone knows Oppenheimer. I can't pick Oppenheimer. Yeah. Gotta be something else. Dude, right. No, okay. the year had a lot of movies I loved, but none that really stood out to me until I really started to. Think. Yeah, you're oh, right. This doesn't wow. make that's sense a, at all. They, he's mentioned how they've all really stood funny. out to him. Yeah, yeah, they've this all is stood longer out than any of his reviews. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty. That is pretty funny to say, like, oh yeah, I liked a bunch of them, but none of them stood out. It's like you understand that's negative, right? No, you understand In this is way. your top fifteen list, so they all of these stood out to you. They're on negativity your top list is just positivity turned upside down. So. They're so notable that you mentioned them, and you mentioned honorable mentions. That's how I also they all I agree were. with chat. How fucking funny would it be if it was Aquaman two? <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, you know, Aquaman I, I two really captures James the Wan. nature it of really the really elevated the bar for superheroes. It could be anatomy of <laughs> environmentalism. It goes to show us that superheroes, <laughs> when <laughs> done right, climate change as, uh, with their brother. <laughs> Think right. about it, and I realized that without a doubt. My number one pick was the movie that did everything I want a movie to do. Okay. Hmm. What? <laughs> what? The first slam dunk? I've hey, never heard of this. That, hey, but that's a surprise, isn't it? Nobody guessed I've, that. That's you the know, most I've interesting one this. so far. Wait, uh, uh, Chris, Chris, have you seen this? I have not seen it, but it, oh did, open theatrically. I, it did open theatrically briefly. Because we'll get anime at one of the theaters I go to. I 
You know what? A friend of mine saw it. He said it was fine, but what, he wasn't super pumped to, you know, mm. about it. So you know what the problem I, is? I, well, how does how does this change your world, everybody? I, I, well, I, I haven't no, even heard the, of this the, film. The problem is it's not going to change shit because it's going to tell me 20 seconds, so uh, duh, 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 and then outro. <laughs> yeah. That's what's going to happen. We've got so much video. What is he going to do if he doesn't review Nothing this? Nothing of interest. Yeah, Can he, we do something else? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got, got this book is coming. <laughs> It's got three Back minutes to, to talk about this yeah. movie that nobody guessed. I know, yeah, I haven't even heard of this film. I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, never heard of it. So this I'll goes to it. show Chris is much more of a filmaholic than I am. Like this, this actually says, okay, tell me why you would like why why would I? Watch I bow this? to my king, my, my movie king, <laughs> my, my captain, movie. my king, <laughs> my captain, my captain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> he should have played the extended special version for number one. <laughs> this guy wants to be a director. This guy really wants to be a director. Yes. Jeez. Goes on for like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, he could have made it really thematic with it being an anime and had a long ass fucking intro that needs yes. to end already. Jesus it has, Christ. It has, it has stuck him with a with a katana, like you know, sliding across the different directions and stuff, cutting up the screen. <laughs> that would be so cool. I can't say that this film was a surprise. Because I, I had zero surprised expectations for it. The anime and manga have a passionate fan base, but okay. it never reached the popularity of juggernauts like Demon Slayer or Dragon Ball Z. I okay. went to see the film because I try to see anime Those are in animes, theaters though, right? whenever I get the chance. I truly did not expect to experience such an emotionally evocative film. I didn't expect to cry. I didn't expect to feel my adrenaline skyrocket, yeah. and I certainly didn't expect for it to be my favorite film of the year. What but do you think it looks it... like when his adrenaline skyrockets? I Whoa. wouldn't like to see that. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Maybe he uses like a contraction or something. He does that thing where he like he doesn't get up, but he lifts up his arms slightly and, go, <laughs> and looks around and is like, "Is is everyone else oh. feeling that? I wow." Feel Maybe that. his eyebrows move. Oh, calm down. <laughs> I had a human feeling. So I was imagining once. Bill Bailey goes, in black <laughs> books where his shirt's off, he's jumping on top of a car. Oh, dude, Simpsons reference. It's like when Mr. Burns' heart beeps, uh, beeps, burps, but... Uh, <laughs> heart beeps, burps. Burp. <laughs> heart burps. That's what, uh, that's what Boogie's heart does. <laughs> <laughs> his heart burps. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't know the Mountain Dew bird. <laughs> the only reason his heart keeps pumping is because it thinks it's eating blood. <laughs> <laughs> is this like times. rotoscope uh, that's what i was thinking it looks yeah. like yeah. that it yeah. looks like it's like 3d animated and then they have like they 2D over people. it or something yeah no, it's definitely say, rotoscope for sure yeah it is rotoscope say that no other film this year gave me the laughs tears and thrills that this film did repeating yourself you already, yeah, you already told yourself. us it was like the best emotional he experience. said it made he said it made him cry and that it made his adrenaline go high and then he said like that it what did he just say the thrills and laughs like sadness laughs and, and spills, yeah like now we just need so horror he's... that's all we got left can you just tell me that's why right. though no that's for you to discover i'm so when angry you see the movie yourself. yeah because, because like guys in terms of pitching the films to me all i know is that it's like an anime film about basketball but i don't like I don't is, know, like, the premise of the story. Imagine you see him for the very first time. You watch his thingy there. And it's like, it made me feel this and this and this. Like, okay, but why? Like, I don't <laughs> know you. Is that good or bad? Like, it's your number one, but what does it matter to me? that's what he's counting on. Like, that's what he's counting on. The fact that he said that he liked it means that that should matter to you because if you like yes. what he typically likes, even if you don't sh necessarily share the same reasons, that's enough. Yeah, but I'm saying because, if you're, like, a completely new viewer to his channel... That doesn't uh, mean well, shit to you. If you're a new viewer to the channel, then yeah, you're totally out of luck. Yeah, like, that's what I was going Out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> also, Thea's choosing to highlight the arms of the creature in the bottom right. I find that amusing as a comparison. <laughs> like I mean, it sounds ex exactly like on like the Hollywood Reporter articles. If you have somebody read the uh, the, the voice read the article to you, it sounds mm. just like that. <laughs> yes, I use that all the time. A coming of age story and a tragedy all in one. I'm whoa, sure. whoa, coming whoa. of age, right? Okay. So coming of age, that's one tragedy. thing. Then they have the tragedy aspect in another thing. And there's those two things, but in one oh, thing. Throw up. Yeah, so I you can't, you can't handle the quality. <laughs> uh, now you can make a Factor 75 meal. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, really, in, in less dramatic terms, 
<laughs> slightly less dramatic terms anyway he's just pitching what a lot of movies go for which is to make you laugh and cry like that's pretty common right of trying what? to get the balance of comedy and drama entertainment and you know sadness in this the midst made me feel so emotions more. i mean half of this just comes across as though it is a review of eddie film <laughs> like just just I mean, yeah. do this. Yeah. he's just it's telling you what boring. they're about uh you know Doing the Cliff Notes version of what would be back on the, uh, of the Blu-ray. That's pretty much what he did. I saw those two background characters just looking exactly the same. <laughs> Shit, I'm putting in way too much yeah, work in my video. <laughs> <laughs> different hair. There you go. We oh, okay. It. Slightly different. <laughs> Many of you. I don't it. really care for the animation of this. I'm just gonna be honest. Uh, yeah. I, I I'm mean, not sure. I need to yeah, see more of it in I, its I, natural it's, habitat. Uh, yeah, maybe then, that. Then, then chopped yeah. up. So I don't know what it. You know, you know what I mean. So when you get the chance. Check this one out. But Off why? Of Tell me why. Ow. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Oh, no, metal, metal, metal. He told you why because it no, made him No, he didn't. Laugh he did tell me shit. He it just made him check it out. Oh, emotions. His heart check it out, Master. I want to kick him, baby. <laughs> we all want to kick don't babies. Do that. That's not special. No, don't worry. We don't have one here. No, don't do it. I can get a baby. Chris laughed. He cried. He shit in his pants. He pissed himself. He came. You need to watch this movie. I'm laughing. It's so funny. Can you fucking believe it, though? Chat, you can see where we are. That That's the end. Yeah. So we got all this. And I say... Sorry. In any... <laughs> I was gonna say you have one space, it's not even that long. long. Two the minutes will be, be like a summary of 2023. <laughs> yeah. Tell us it was a really great year. Ups and downs. You know, there was a lot of flop, that but there were still good movies. Dying. But really, it's yeah, not. exactly. <laughs> it's but not not like when he made that video where he was talking about all of his concern about yes, the future of yes. film and industry, right? But Listen. he's allowed to do it. Well, let's see what he says. Come on, Chris, entertain yeah. me. See, I mean, audience, Stuckman. if you're not afraid to be challenged at a movie like I, you know, I am, uh, then you can still enjoy cinema. Times my number one pick of the year is a movie that I feel like I have to show people. Top Gun oh, okay. Maverick was that way for me. Oh, then maybe I make a full video on that it. I loved to see that Probably movie has. and to appreciate uh, it. I don't think he would have the said first more about slam it, dunk. I feel <laughs> very similarly about. I want everyone that I love to have fun with that movie because I really do think it I want I everyone to to... that I love. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Sound like, um, again, I was saying the cattle prod idea. If he sets that up in the back on automatic, it'll it rem <laughs> remind him. Just wake him up once in a while. <laughs> yeah. When you talk about the people you love, you want to be a little yeah. bit more energized. I, do you mean like a cattle prod, mm. like that? What that just swings back and forth and zaps him, or like a cattle prod that he needs to duck out of the way every time it's it on comes like, down? Um, so it just keeps him on like high alert the whole you know, time. Like a system of gears that just eventually just pushes it forward, brings it back. You got to randomize it. You can't oh, expect. Oh it yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Was it the Rube Goldberg machine? Yeah, yeah, something like that. And it's something like that, but for what a cattle prod to wake him up every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, tell us. Sorry, Stuckman, looks tell like us got, about um, looks Dial like of he's Destiny. Had plenty of it. He oh, did no. review Dial of Destiny, didn't he? He must have. Um, yeah, I'm sure he did, right? I mean, I'm sure he was very like. Positive. He was probably like Harrison Ford. Hasn't skipped yeah, a beat since <laughs> as much as decades ago. <laughs> it leaves you in a great no, place of joy, That's and so it good. thrills you yeah, at the same is. time. And it's very, thrills. very funny. There it is, thrills. It's, it's about, about time. It thrills. basketball. There, there we go. It's funny all, again. All yeah, the funny. you not already. Yep. There was a scene I it laughed has at. Emotions. <laughs> it has plot and characters <laughs> you see and the, emotions. The newest super chat. Grandpa, I want you to watch this Japanese anime about basketball. <laughs> 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 I just love you oh, so I much. I didn't watch my squad get killed on Iwo Jima to watch no Japanese basketball <laughs> movie. <laughs> His grandpa even calls him Stuckman. He's like, Stuckman, God damn it! <laughs> you gotta wake up, boy. Extremely underrated, despite having an immaculate Rotten Tomato score. Oh, that doesn't letter. fucking matter. Oh, yeah, so the immaculate <laughs> Rotten Tomato score. Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my god, the you Rotten fool. Tomatoes score, every guys. Time... It's so high. Every time that gets brought <laughs> up. Wait, said, oh, wait, 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 wait. 2022? Hold on. Wait, it's a 2022 movie. Uh, wait, what? Hold on. what? You fuck! <laughs> was it really? <laughs> you or, or, or no, unless it, Was it released? Was it released in America in 2023? That could be it, yeah. 
maybe. Still a 2022, right? That Would that count? Uh, uh, well, uh, at that point, that's dealer's uh, choice, kind of. Yeah. yeah, I agree. All right, well, so apparently it came out on the 3rd of December, 2022. But... Hmm. That's a 2022 movie. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, would be 2022. Uh, that's well, yeah, I'm going to call it my best movie in 2023. Is just the best in movie of 2023. People well, saying shit. the other anime. The Lord of the Rings. Out was the Wings thing. again. <laughs> 20th Whatever. year in a row for me. Yeah, <laughs> the other one came out in 2022. The other, the Suzume. Yeah, it says 2022 on Wikipedia as well. I mean, I November, would be inclined to believe that it got re-released in the area that he's in or something because that's a really That'd weird mistake guess. for him to make yeah well because i remember people kept telling me puss in boots is 2023 it's like well, wait i thought it came out it came out yeah, like no december way. 2022 so yeah okay well hey, that's why it was the movie of the year last year and on the note of um rotten tomatoes i remember uh black panther had a perfect rating <laughs> until a guy gave it just under fresh because he didn't like the action in it and everyone wanted to kill him <laughs> <laughs> normal <laughs> it's so funny like taking any stock i will say right i'm of two minds no stock in the meaning of rotten tom tomatoes tomatoes <laughs> but um i i do always want to know it just out of curiosity <laughs> because it'd be like what does it mean for a movie you're anticipating that gets 100 or 50 or zero and it's like you know nothing but at the same time, I just want to know what's the number out of yeah. curiosity. When Rebel Moon hits yeah. zero with top critics, that's pretty funny. I mean, like, you, can, you can use that. <laughs> Box so. score. A great IMDb score. Everybody who sees this movie loves this movie. It oh, just kind of... everybody. All right. Man, you could have told oh, us why it was I, good I, I, instead of saying everybody who I know likes oh, it. Um, <laughs> it looks like he's about to start... My grandpa it. liked it. According to, uh, according to good old Wikipedia, <laughs> this is the fifth highest grossing... Japanese film of all time. Why could he could have said that? Yeah, I got well, buried. By yeah, see, he's about to say nobody like that. Nobody watched it, but it sounds like a lot of people watched it actually. By the fact that it's an anime. That's fucking. That is why he's chosen it. That is like the only reason he's yeah. chosen it. Why did, right, but I guess he didn't make really like more in the heron then, because that one was getting more attention <clears throat> in the West. Yeah, because it's Miyazaki. Mm. Movie. Well, what about the other nobody... one though? So Suzume. That was Yuzuki. pretty. That was because I'm seeing here, that says it's number four in terms of most successful. I honestly think that made, as like, long as he puts this as number one, way. he can mix and matches the rest. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Really knew number one is reserved for something super obscure in the West, so people will think like, oh, wow, this guy really <laughs> This Chris guy, this he knows what's up. I mean, Stuckman. This Stuckman. Maybe <laughs> some <laughs> North Korean indie movie. Also, it came out around the height of Barbenheimer, and a lot of movies got buried by that and i feel like not this one because it goes on i still i'm not fully convinced by that as a phenomenon like no i'm getting tired of people saying that like people keep saying mission impossible should have moved it's like dude fallout made 800 million dollars it is an established franchise that made a lot yeah. of money and was consistently making more money as time went on I don't they had every reason to believe that they were the ones who were going to succeed not the other way around i don't remember least, anyone as well saying man i was gonna see mission impossible but once I, I, I mean, can I really fit that in? I've got to see Barbenheimer. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's a thing. Dead Reckoning yeah. was so amazing that everybody was like talking about how amazing it was and sharing yeah. it with everybody. And they wanted to go see it again. It would have succeeded more than it did. And it did have it a okay word of mouth. People did talk it about a, it. It just didn't last that long. It had the biggest opening weekend of the series. Well. It, it started out it incredibly crazy. strong. It's not like it was a film that got buried in terms of like initial exposure. Heaps of people watched it the first weekend, but then well, afterward. Hmm. Just remind me, was what? Uh, I guess I don't. I don't want to demand of you the specific dates, but was Barbenheimer running before or after? After Mission after. Impossible came out the week before. See, okay, yeah. that yeah, yeah, exactly. It's 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 post hoc, like it's after what's happened that people are like, ah, oh, well, that's the reason why. When I think the simple one is, it's just not that good of a film. Well, so and it didn't make that much of an impression on people. I do want to accept, like, just because, you know, we've done an assessment, we've basically de determined that, like, so much of it is absolute nonsense. And we do believe that that plays into, even you know, the average audience member's enjoyment of it. We, we genuinely do. But at the same time, um, you know, there's plenty of films that we've said, uh, like, Guardians uh, 3 would be an example, probably, of something we were like, that was shit, but still did uh, pretty, I was about to say really good. Is that accurate? Did it do really good? Wait, what? Sorry, Guardians, Guardians 3? Three. Oh, yeah, Guardians it, Three it, it, made it, it, like eight hundred fifty million dollars. Yes, yeah. 
which better is better than every other. Relatively good sure, compared to a lot of other things. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely all the other Marvel shit. Yeah. But I'm convinced that if a Fallout level movie came out, as in Mission Impossible Fallout, that the uh, I reckon, I don't know, I think Mission Impossible would have been fine. Um, I just I just don't understand how we could look at a sequel to a film that made like over eight hundred million dollars and say shit yeah, we're money. Foolish, we're foolish of them to not move out of the way of again, as Chris Stuckman even pointed out, the three hour long R rated biopic. The Barbie movie was always gonna make money. But I don't know if anybody expected it to make The marketing money for the Barbie did. movie is almost like uh, worth just checking out on its own because it's so impressive, like uh, what they did. Yep. Yeah, probably. Which, by the way, and, I and... I didn't experience any of that marketing really beyond trailers. But when I looked at a thread covering it all, I was like, "Holy fuck!" They spent money on this in many countries, doing all kinds of extravagant oh, marketing uh, stunts, which is Dude, cool. They, they made a Barbie house. They made a and giant Barbie on, statue, uh, I think, as well. Somewhere. Put on Zillow. <laughs> like, well, they, to they be they fair, that Barbie house already existed. They just repainted it. Oh, Damn. yeah. Why does it bring the mood down? It was smart, you know? I mean, fuck the movie, but uh, yeah, no, the, that was the best marketing since Black Panther that convinced uh, an entire country well, they that made you're a whole fighting continent, racism. Yeah. You're racist uh, if you don't movie. see it. Like, oh, man. If you don't see it, you're a racist. <laughs> so. Not again. Right. What has he got Not left again. to say? <laughs> this is one of those gems of the year that throughout the years, especially anime fans, are going to look back on and be like, yeah, that one was special. Guys, it has been an like amazing basketball? year. Really a crazy year. A lot of stuff has happened. You said that already. Wow. You, you um, said it ages ago, Bell. It was like 10 minutes ago that he said that. It was even longer for us, but I still remember. It's funny, there are moments <laughs> in my scripts where I'm like, that was actually five hours ago that I said the thing, so I might repeat it now. Like, yeah. <laughs> just in case yeah. you guys have forgotten. It's been fun to be able to share these moments with you and to talk about movies with you, as always, uh -huh. for so I mean, many that's, years. That's, uh, that shit. word talking is doing a lot of heavy lifting, I gotta say. I mean, <sighs> like I said, we could have created this video. I could have done my stupid little Stuckman voice. You guys could help me out with a script, and then we could have just taken well, well, stock footage like, from trailers. <laughs> you know, David Fincher has done it again. The killer, <laughs> yeah. directed by David Fincher, starring Michael Fassbender, is a fascinating. Directed by David Fincher, world. presents I mean, David Fassbender. Fincher's The Killer by David yeah. Fincher. You, you know, this is yeah. literally a junior high book report. This is this yes. is the level of <laughs> generous. Of, I, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that is generous because you would be expected to you, say yeah you have to say more than what he said because mm -hmm. uh some people say he's like a wannabe roger ebert but like roger ebert had controversial opinions yeah what yeah no yeah, yeah. He, he he's a long way from you know, roger ebert one that i found out recently yeah. is roger ebert rated uh it. home alone three above one and two <laughs> That's yeah, he thing. had some Robert bad takes. Well, what was funny you, was that Siskel, if you watch the video where he says that, Siskel's like, I, what? I, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you, can't, you can't be serious. Now, and I'm looking and of forward course, to his uh, video games on art take. Oh, boy. Uh. That, that's one of those. I was about to say poorly aged. Like, no, that was bad. No, <laughs> that was always bad. Yeah. I, I, I get annoyed. I want to push back against the notion that, like, oh, that's a statement that, yeah, back when it was during the SNES, I think it was actually, he said it in like 2007 or something. Um, but the idea that that statement, if you said it about games on the SNES or Genesis, would be more apt is stupid. Like, those games are art too. They all are. <laughs> they yeah, have yeah, yeah. art in them. <laughs> For um, starters, if you want yeah. to get that, that, like, even just that uh, as from, a starting point. From the chat, Roger Ebert right. has nothing but shit takes. He gave John Carpenter's The Thing one star. So that's satanic to do that, okay? <laughs> Damn. It is. Yeah, and but it, Satan's like, real. Cisco, Cisco so, had bad takes, too. They both, over their careers, had some horrific takes on classic movies. Wasn't something that Roger Ebert, wasn't his whole methodology that he was trying to write it on the basis of what he expected people who would want to watch that kind of film would think? Like, that it was contextual. So, like, if he was writing, I don't know, like, a comedy, he'd be writing it based on his expectations of what people entering into that kind of comedy movie would want. Hmm. Mm. Huh. That's something I don't know. I'm sure, I don't know. I think, I'm pretty sure he said that, that it's, like, it was relative, that it changed depending on, like... What, Every so um, like, video review I've seen of him, it. he's always talking about how he felt about it and what he thinks it should be. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe I'm mistaken. I just, as I understood it, it was the idea that if he was going into, I don't know, say like a Martin Scorsese film, he would enter into it with like those kinds of expectations to where he might rate it lower than a film that he considers worse, but it's like relative as, as part of his standard.
Do you, uh, does everyone here remember the Siskel and Ebert stand-ins in the uh, uh, Godzilla movie from um, Roland Emmerich? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, that shit's funny. Like, <laughs> it reminds me of Shyamalan and I think even Ryan Johnson to an extent you could say about um, Knives Out. There's these like references to the people they hate in real life. It's just like, oh, look at you. Shyamalan, if you guys haven't seen The Girl in the Water, I think it is, he makes himself the most important writer in the world in that film. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh, Lady yeah. in the Water. Uh, Lady. That one, I, uh, I found the quote here on good old, again, Wikipedia. Um, so this, this is something that he said. When you ask a friend if Hellboy is any good, you're not asking if it's any good compared to Mystic River. You're asking if it's any good compared to The Punisher. And my answer would... And my answer would be mm. on a scale of one to four. If Superman is four, then Hellboy is three, The Punisher is two. In the same way, if oh. American Beauty gets four stars, then the United States of Leland clocks in at about two. But the thing is, so that's just... that already sounds a bit flawed, because it sounds like he's saying that it goes, it gets uh, rated on a superhero movie uh, metric. But the yeah. thing is, compare, let's, let's say, for example, like if you were judging Logan versus fucking like a Superman, it's like the, those two... You know what I mean? Like, it's like you wouldn't. How do you even compare wow. them in that way? Well, they are as different from each other as you might find a comedy and a romantic fucking comedy. Yeah, you, hey, yeah. look, right? You don't need to convince me. I think that that's, <laughs> that's, that's like a really messy. Reaching to the choir. System. Yeah. I yeah. got you. To another year of doing that. My film should be coming out next year. Uh, it's submitted to various Ooh, yeah. festivals, and we've been able to finally. Chris, get it. I mean, Stuckman, get it to me early, and I will. We'll check it out, and we'll <laughs> review it honestly. Give us a review copy. Like yeah. this. Hell yes. Playing it. Make sure to send a lot of Factor <laughs> seventy five with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mel was making some of that earlier. What kind of a film is he making? Uh, yeah, that's what I want. Horror? horror movie, right? Horror, horror. I think, yeah. yeah. Oh. Which got, is uh, just oh, up my movie. alley. I love horror when it's yeah, good. I mean, he might be a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Those eyes. Our ADR, which is great. And so we are just about done with it. Yeah, I mean, there's great. just like random little color corrections and things that we might adjust here and there. But it's like 99.9% <laughs> done. With. It's like a movie. It's real. And I can't wait to share it with you guys and what that journey will be like uh and as always i mean it here. is it is uh clever isn't it right like if you if you stop doing the being critical in any way shape or form you kind of like priming people because i mean if you are critical and people will be like well better be fucking good then huh you know whereas if it's just like i'm just to i like movies all right i love movies you, i love them so i believe like being nice to you. i believe and i could be completely wrong that he's going to do better than the AVGN or RLM movies. You'll uh, certainly do better than the Channel it, Awesome movies. Mm, I would say so. So when you say better, what what do you mean there? Like the bold statement. Uh, I better in the set. Mm, that's a good question. You think people, <laughs> what I'm what I'm getting at is, do you think people will say like, yeah, it's good, but then they're not going to talk about it like really much at all? Like it's not going to make a huge his his fans or... will absolutely be comprised of fifty percent. That was amazing, and fifty percent. I did love it, Chris, but um, I feel like you could have, and then just generic statement, like the characterization was slightly off, or I feel like it could have been paced a little bit better. Just a, li a t literally one second of it being cut out would have been better. That's all, that's all I want to say. But then there'll be people like us who will probably find it to be like, oh, that shot was neat, or that joke was kind of funny, or oh, that character did that thing that was kind of okay, but the most of it we're going to be like, oof. <laughs> but to be fair, uh, yeah, like, that's, that's oh, what yeah, happens with YouTube I mean, and movies. I'm hoping the best for Drinker, by the way. I realize that I'm saying this and it could sound <laughs> cruel. I, um, I have seen the trailer for his, uh, his, his short film, and it looks pretty cool, I will say. Yep. With uh, Red Letter Media, it's like they're trying to be shit. And it's mm. like uh, they would. I mean, space space cop. You don't think so? So they've they've admitted they they fucked up with space cop, and and what that means is more so that they bit off more than they could chew. They didn't expect it to be as difficult, and that they didn't. I don't think they thought that it really achieved. Like I don't know if this is controversial to say, but I think their average best of the worst video is infinitely more funny than space cop. Um, I don't That's know what true. happened. A lot of the jokes in space cop are very like, eh, yeah, okay. So, because I, I don't know a whole it's lot a about comedy. it, so that was like, okay. And the, Space Cop be... dragged a bit for me. Uh, the trailer was funnier than the movie, I thought. I think that's Did true it, as uh, well. 
you, you know, a like chunk of money to be messing around with, or like. Um, what was but the, deal? the thing, so what I what I think John's referencing, which I would completely agree with, is this moments like where they're in quote unquote a spaceship, and then you'll have like Jay playing one of the enemy soldiers, and they'll shoot a window out, and he'll go, "Oh no!" and then it'll cut to a wide shot with a clearly obvious dummy getting pulled through the window. That's really great. I <laughs> yeah. love that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then there's also stuff where you're like, "Oh, that was an attempt at telling a joke, and it was not funny at all." Oops. Okay, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Moving on. You, uh, it's sort of a it's a mixed bag in that way. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So they don't really want to give it another go by the so, sounds of it. Would you be interested in seeing them give it another go of making a film? So someone just said Red Alert Media can dish it, but they can't take it. They have admitted more than anyone on the internet that their movie's bad and they make fun of it all the time. It's part of what I love about them is that they're more than willing well, to make yeah, fun of themselves. Um I one of the things that struck me when I found out Space Cop was coming was I was like, oh, they're doing another comedy type thing. They they often do either comedy or horror comedy. And I was like, why can't they try a drama? They they talk all the time about like how to do proper drama. It would be cool to see them like legitimately try and make something that's very much, um, I don't know, supposed to make you feel... Because uh, Gary often says, and I, I'm inclined to agree, that comedy is harder than drama. But the never like, doing uh, drama at all, it's like, come on, give it a shot. I, I think you guys can yes. do it. Yeah, it be that that comedy has like a higher skill floor than drama. Yes, um, yes. the yeah, best of both of them is going to take like a lot. Like you know, Lord of the Rings is not easy, um, and that's like the yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah drama, it's one of the best comedies I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> like, the possible, possible drama of just like pretty basic beats and tension and and you know highs and lows. That's like something that whereas making someone laugh, it's like there's there's really no clear it's, rules um, on how that works. It kind of goes a lot of guidelines. You're either good at it or you're not. You know, it's not even something you can really teach. Timing. How do you teach yeah. timing, you know? Yeah. Like, how do you teach that as something? My impression is that, for that when it comes to writing that kind of stuff is that comedy is actually, it's not as stressful. That There's actually not as much tension when you go in to try it just because the worst you can do is then produce something which is shit and you know it's shit so you can laugh at it, which is itself a, a kind oh, of comedy, right? Is, if you try to like, set out to write a sincere work of drama, and you really want it to be taken sincerely, you can't really laugh it away when it doesn't land at the end. Like, it's harder to even begin to write something like that just because you are setting the bar higher for yourself at the outset. Uh, are you talking, like, from the perspective of the creator in that case? Because what yeah, I was... Yeah, yeah, Because I... Bad comedy is really hard to watch, whereas yeah. a bad drama can yeah, I be think, funny. But uh, I, I get it from the, yeah. from the creative <laughs> perspective. If you bad set out to create a worst drama thing. and it's bad, then it's like, oh, shit, yeah, I can't laugh at it, can I? Because yeah, I was someone, trying to make something great. Like, yeah. if all of us put out a thing where it's like, this is my stand-up special, and we don't laugh at a single joke, oh, man. Oh, that yeah. Sucks. yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, if I put out a thing oh. like, this is my drama, and it's, you know, guy with sword, and he's killing a dragon, and he saves the girl, and you're all just kind of like, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, it's like, you can, yeah, you can just sort of coast through it a lot of the times, yeah. but bad comedy, you can't, uh, yeah, it's like, bad. I mean, it, bad comedy is really difficult. Like, yeah, to get jeez, through. like, 9-11 well, yeah. was bad, but at least it wasn't a bad comedy. Fucking hell. And someone just said, uh, I... this just in Pride and Prejudice is less easy than Hangover, lol. It's like, it's not about, like, every comedy is harder than every drama. It's just a matter of, because like I said, I think, I think it's kind of intuitive to an extent that, um, if you completely fail, com it, it, I think it's easier to completely fail comedy than it is to completely fail drama. Drama Compare has some how many very... classic dramas there are to com classic comedies. Yeah, and, and honestly, so when I just said good guy kills hard. dragon and saves girl, a lot of audiences well, yeah, would be okay like, with that as long as or, you get yeah, some or, basic characters in there. Your basic dramatic or, beats are like very comprehensible in a way where what are the basic beats of comedy? It's like, well, that's a bit more complicated. So what I would say is. But, an equivalent maybe like character slips and falls. It's like, yeah, that can work, but you're not gonna be able to play that more than a few times before everyone's like, this is boring. Yeah. You know, like basically. Well, as someone who, I actually co-wrote and produced a feature comedy that came out years ago, my big fat independent movie, which is oh. a parody. It's a spoof satire parody film of independent films. I mean, it's at times raunchy comedy. I'm not going to say I knocked it out of the park. I give myself kind of a C for it. But there are, there are some parts that really worked. Um, Clint Howard's in it. Uh, Bob Odenkirk uh, oh, has, cool. plays a bit part. Hmm. Bob Odenkirk, he plays the part of a, a – he's a hitman who's bleeding profusely, but he pays rent, and he lives in the trunk of the two other hitmen in the movie. So every time they open the trunk, he's in the <laughs> trunk and has a, an exchange. I mean, it, it's stupid oh, comedy. Right. But, I like that. 
it. It turns out, though, that like the audience that likes indie films with jokes about Amelie or like uh, other independent films, Tarantino films, they don't like raunchy comedies. They they just don't. That audience doesn't. Yeah, they're like, sexless, but... sterile losers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ex- yeah. So what, whatever. Like, I, so that was like my first feature film, and you can. I'm going to I'm actually going to re-release it next year on uh video on on video and then also I'm going to put out a Blu-ray. But you can pick up if you can find it. You can get a standard def DVD cheap on Amazon if you can find it. But yeah, no, it's um no, it's uh, I I think it's I think it's weird when you're like like I've been in the critical space for a long time but I've also made films. I made a, this short film called Red with Lawrence Tierney years ago that blew up in the 90s. Um, Scott Ian from Anthrax actually did music for it, but um, I don't know. I always I I like doing both things, and I don't give a shit. But when I see like someone like Stuckman with a t shirt that says filmmaker, he's just trying too hard. Yeah. You know, like just <laughs> I am a if, filmmaker. If people, like, well, it's kind of like yeah, the I, uh, the equivalent of the guy who sits in the Starbucks with his laptop, almost like wanting somebody to ask him what he's doing. It's like, oh, I'm right. Yeah. Like, little, yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> With a like, hat that says bringing, screenwriter guy, on it. Yeah, kind of coexisting exactly. yeah, he's the guy who gets up, gets orders the coffee, then they say a word that sounds vaguely like writer, and he goes, Yeah, yeah, I'm a writer. Yeah. How'd you yeah, know? I'm a writer. As a writer, <laughs> I can speak on this. I'm writing this really No, no, no. We said Richard. Really Richard, like, your coffee's ready. Uh, Richard. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> yeah. Caramel latte. I gotta dip out, Mahler. I gotta go. Sorry, guys. Sorry That's to interrupt. All right, but, sir. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us. That's all right. See you around. We'll go on later. See you later. Bye. Take care, everybody. It was fun. Yeah. Ciao. Yeah. I, I I actually got to dip out soon as well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, if you ever want to efap my film, I, I would I would be all for it. Love well, it. Maybe we will. It's the but, only uh, way. I mean, I'll see this. We're almost just to the book. We're just a minute away. Oh my God. Just I'll just say this. Like to, you know, I talk to people in the industry all the time. They're just they're more critical than critics because they know when something is shit. Mm-hmm. Know when what they're putting out is shit. And so it's like for Stuckman to be such a pussy, like it just, it, I, I don't know, it just annoys me. But also like, I've never watched Stuckman. I watch, I'll watch John Campia when I want to know what a normal normie thinks of anything. Like what's the normie opinion well, on the, this? Because John Campia's takes are all milk toast. He doesn't really have very many thoughtful. He is definitely, Pia and Stuckman could do a show that would put us all to sleep. But like. I never watched Stuckman. This is the most I've ever watched of him. How does this guy get hundreds of thousands of views? Like that's the thing that kind of like I'm miffed by is how does a guy like There's an easy answer. Stuckman... He started this really, really early. Yeah, he was one of the first who oh, started okay. doing that. It's literally he just yeah. recorded himself reviewing movies in the simplest possible way and he did it for fucking fifteen years or some ridiculous shit. That's why like whoever uh, it's it's why DSP and like what's it what was it the irate gamer? There's the only reason these people have any traction at all is they did it really early. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine Chris started today, he'd get nothing. Nobody would well, especially this. remember that, like, in terms of, you know, I guess production quality of, like, a nice expensive camera, a nice back, well, you know, background, right, that's like, <laughs> you, you got all the cool lights the and you trailer, got the collection visuals. movies, as opposed to, you know, how scuffed it can be, like, if somebody's doing it for the first time. That's, like, a big barrier as well. Like, this just looks more professional, even though the content of the script is barely anything. Well, and, and for reference, so anyone who's listening to this is like, wow, they just fucking hate. It's like, no, 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 Jeremy Johns is the one we would recommend as the positive angel version of this. Someone that I yeah, wouldn't pretty- necessarily like be like, oh, I can't wait for his opinion. But if I went to his video on a movie, I would expect to hear something that I hadn't necessarily thought of. I'd be like, mm. oh, yeah, that's fair. Which and, um, is, like, that's a super important and valuable thing of, Hey, you got the capacity to surprise me in a meaningful way, not like, oh, you surprised me with your pick, but then you still said nothing really about the film at all. And I think yeah. wasn't didn't Jeremy Johns say like, holy shit, Star Wars is dying at uh soon after TLJ came out, or or sometime after? I remember thinking like, oh wow, yeah. that was a uh, mm-hmm. usually only see that in the further depths of YouTube. You don't usually have to. I say that now. Everyone's saying it now, but it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, what else can you say? It's, it's the only. <laughs> Mm. But Chris isn't yeah, going to say it. That would be mean. The starting early thing is huge. I mean, mm-hmm. if you've spent 15 years slowly amassing an audience, I mean, that, that that pays off. I mean, I regularly think about that, and I wish, like, I had just stayed independent rather than fucking working for Machinima back in, <laughs> back in the day, you know, where, like, I neglected my channel for, like, almost a decade. And then I sort of went back to it and, like, tried rebuilding it. 
and it's like I, you know i never thought machinima was going to be so mismanaged yeah it's but like, it just se it seemed like the logical thing to do at the time but then you know well just, if any of us train wreck were reset to zero today it's uh it's not an easy climb but i still kind of believe that we could all get somewhere meanwhile uh I don't know. Like, this isn't even trying to be mean. It's just like, what? Why would anyone want to subscribe to Chris Stuckman after after what we've just seen? Like, that was incredible. It, it was there was just nothing there. Yeah. And the best thing was whenever I asked Chris Gore, like, "Oh, so have you seen that movie?" And then he gives us a quick summary, literally on a stream, some thoughts <laughs> he has, already more substance than the scripted video. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. With you. Uh, sharing that journey so thank you once again for watching and i hope you guys check out these movies on this list and they bring a lot of joy and entertainment to you i'll see you, you always guys bring in us joy you, you didn't sell it motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no. or as always thank you so much for stuckmanize us do it watching and if you like this you can click right here and get stuckmanized yes yes, yes. yes. that's yes. his turn yes. i thought that yes. was like a meme that other people made up <laughs> No, hey, it's, it's real. It's don't you, really don't you real. feel better now? He stuckmanized you. Listen, this was like the most emotion he put in the whole video. <laughs> like, he was looking Isn't forward to this the whole video. It's like, oh, I can't wait to I, say the words. I think we're going to get stuckmanized again. Let's go again. Thank you go. so much for watching. Yes. And if you like this, you can click right here Where? and get stuckmanized. Yes! Uh, he said yes. it again. <laughs> stuckmanize me, Captain. We did it. Yes, the music do as do well. Do the do classic. Do do. It's beautiful. So if we were reviewing his film then, it, it was like this was a film by Chris Stuckman and it was an emotional <laughs> Oh, we have poster. to do that. And we have to put out a video that does that. I, I felt things. <laughs> directed by Chris good. Stuckman, who has previously directed short films. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the, a, uh, the, what a the, the, the The Godzilla one bugged me up? the most. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. I was just gonna say, does he have a feature that he's that's coming out, or what's going on with that? Yeah, yeah. Shelby <laughs> Oaks would be the the movie, the feature film, and it's I think already coming out making next it. Fury Tad, right? Yeah. Did he say he's making it? He's trying to sell it to different places. Submitted to it to festivals and everything. Film festivals, which is a tough road because most mainstream festivals don't like one. They they they're not. Oh, don't let them hear you say they don't like to be called mainstream. <gasps> Right, right. But I mean, the big festivals like Sundance and whatnot, those are tough to get into. Um, I had a movie at Slamdance, which is the other festival, but it, and I've, I've been on the festival circuit with a bunch of things, but the market's really changed uh, in the last several years, as has everything else in terms of like what the expectation is. I don't know that Stuckman would care about him uh, having it, so that the festival is the best route for him. But he could just release it and distribute it himself if he wanted. Curious yeah. to see it. I really want to see it because sometimes, I mean, it's not unusual for critics to cross over into making films. I mean, that's the whole story of the French New Wave, right? It's like, we're going to write about film and then we're going to make movies. It happens quite a bit. Rod Lurie, um, among others. Uh, but I, I'd be curious to see it. And horror is a pretty easy genre, though, to be fair. Like, it's... It's in terms of like a movie out of the gate. I think horror is probably the easiest, only easier than drama or comedy. Yeah. But hey, I've seen what passes for horror these days. I agree. I was about to say, yeah, there's a similarity yeah. with all genres in terms of like what to do with the basics to get away with it. But I, I guess you're right. Yeah. Like horror, I've always seen as like the, it's like the gutter with the, like what, what is currently accepted as the good horror. And it's like, oh, look, it's a scary ghost house. And then it goes, blah, 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 and the character like, <laughs> has to go to some expert. And they say, like, didn't you know, in 1921, there was a woman who died. And she cursed the whole town. And you have to beat her with And then they, they beat <laughs> with this person. But then they, at the ending, they go, <laughs> and then it cuts to black. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, they defeat <laughs> them. And then there's an after credit scene. Or, or, or just regularly scene at the, the end the regular ending where yeah. they don't win the ghost actually and it's fucking boring and, and this is the thing a lot of people because i love horror and it's like oh really wow what do you recommend i'm like let me get out my tiny list yeah. <laughs> like, <no. laughs> all right here's half the list the run over by um, color. Right. Wish, wish upon is obviously at the top of the list yeah wish obviously upon. wish upon all right, did you no see talk to me is... that movie made by those youtubers from Bringy australia saw that. oh i saw that one yeah, yeah I, saw that. I saw that one I quite Which, uh, enjoyed it. I think it's like one of A24's most successful films. So that's got to be the most successful like YouTuber turned making. Oh, what yeah, about the wait, uh, well, David Sandberg, guy, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, because he did. Yeah. 
No, I think yeah, it's, it was okay. I, think it's very, I liked it. I, I tend to like horror that's more psychological, less gory. I think gory is just yeah, too yeah, easy. yeah. I love me existential and psychological. They're my uh, number ones. Um, mm. Gore has its place, I, but like I often find most of the gore horror I watch, I'm not watching it to be scared. I'm watching it to be in, like entertained. Uh, Soul being the like number Saw, one. Yeah. 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 So good. Well, you know, like Final Destination too. That's pretty gory, and it's like, yeah, but it's so funny. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah, I it love how is. funny those movies are. Uh, unfortunately, I, I gotta, I gotta take off. Um, speaking of gore, I gotta gore out of here. Um, oh, fair oh enough. Um, I will say, I was about to read his um his fifty best movies of two thousand. I don't know if you want to stay for just the reading or not. It's uh, it's up to you. Uh. Oh my god, it's already torture. Um <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll stay for Not I'll, that stay, exciting. For a I'll stay for <laughs> Yes a it is. <laughs> <laughs> Rags underselling the mighty Stuckman. The so Stuckman yeah, Hunter. so the context I'll be as fast as I can to allow you to leave. Um he made a book called he wrote one uh, called The Film Buffs Bucket List. <laughs> the Film book. Buffs Bucket List. National By best way, let me seller. Just say about his book. His book is yes. like a pamphlet. You're holding it, right? Like, <laughs> yes, I'm holding it right now. Right here. You can see it. <laughs> you literally have it. Yes, I do. Not to get too technical. I've written a How couple many pages. <laughs> okay. How many Did pages? they get it's numbered? Insane. I don't. Yeah. Okay. It is 170. Okay. Average that's, book that's many. sell in the marketplace needs to be fifty to sixty thousand words. I guarantee well, it's I less gonna, than half that. You got to keep in mind, uh, he's got fifty movies he talks about, and it takes I think three pages per because he has a a page with just some artwork that looks like clip art to represent the film, and then a page, sometimes a page and a half to represent like his review, which we're gonna read some today because it'll be very fun. Yay! It's barely a book. Is is what it's it's it's. Like he talks in the video, that's the book. Mm -hmm. it's, it's well, awful. honestly, the book goes into Very more depth, specific. like slightly more depth than that video does. <laughs> slightly in kind. So it's titled The 50 Movies of the 2000s to See Before You Die. So, um, uh, Fringy read this list out to me, and I think I was missing two. I'm going to go ahead and guess, Chris Gore, you've seen all of these. I would be curious to know... Oh, um, I which of these has not been seen by any of the cast today, but I shall start reading them. Now, uh, the thing about Chris Stuckman, especially with a title like this, I'm expecting to have heard of every one of these films. I did not expect to have seen, I think, 48 of them. I was very surprised. But here we oh, go. Oh, jeez. Well enough, uh, can, you imagine giving that book, can you imagine giving that book to someone on their deathbed? <laughs> saying you're about to die here's this book we better be, start right now they'd be like you gotta see this before you die like okay i've seen all of them <laughs> like, right. okay, well okay you're good to die you're good all right to go. well you're good all right here we go so from the top american psycho i mean okay yeah yeah okay memento yeah, good old nolan sure. unbreakable the uh, the best of Shyamalan, I think most would agree. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, of course. Spirited Away. That's um, yeah. There you go. Donnie Darko. Mm -hmm. Ocean's Eleven. Minority Report. Signs. Okay. Which when I saw Science. that, I was like, I've got to read his thing for Signs. Why is that on this <laughs> list? And we will. X Men Two. Pirates of the Caribbean: The Curse of the Black Pearl. The Last Samurai. Old boy, the Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King. Woo. No fellowship, yeah. no two towers. Oh, fuck you! I'm sorry. Are you insane? I'm so sorry, Chris. Just only Return of Not the you. King. You're he could have just put Lord of the Rings trilogy, but yeah. maybe that's yeah. I don't know. Spider Man that's Two. Wild. Collateral. The Incredibles. Shaun of the Dead. A History of Violence. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. And then we reach one. Uh, funnily enough, I think when you described this to me, uh, for you said hidden cash. Um, or hidden cat. I I I said to you at the time I hadn't seen it because I didn't recognize that name at all. But on the book it says cache and then in brackets hidden. Me and Rags watched cache. We actually. did, and boy, I did not okay. enjoy it. <laughs> I was not all hugely right, fond right. of it. No, but I have seen that one. <laughs> so I was like, holy shit! Mm -hmm. Would uh, not recommend Casino Royale. So is, is it is it cash or hidden cash? Sorry. So it's cash, I think cache or cash, and then in brackets cache. hidden. I think that means that's the English translation. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Uh, Casino Royale, The Departed, The Born Ultimatum, Zodiac. 
There will be blood, no country for old men, trick or treat. Trick or treat, I guess. Trick or treat? Yes. That <laughs> yeah, is, um, it's like apostrophe R, yeah. An anthology Halloween movie. I like it. I think it's neat. The Dark Knight, like Coraline, 500 Days of Summer, Inglorious Bastards, Inception, Toy Story 3, Drive, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. When was this book written? Because <laughs> I'd be curious how many um, Mission Impossibles fought over that spot, you know? Well, and also, 2000s I thought meant 2000 to 2010, but this list includes films that came out, like, after 2010. Oh yeah, so... dude, if we actually got a list of all the films that didn't make it to this list, I think we'd all die. Um, <laughs> the Avengers, Snowpiercer, Prisoners, The Winter Soldier, Enemy, Under the Skin, which I'm kind of shocked is here to be honest. Yeah, see, there's one I mean. A lot of these films are from the 2010s, yeah. not the 2000s in the general sense that people think of it. But... Edge of Tomorrow, The Babadook, Birdman, Whiplash, When Marnie Was There, which I don't actually, that's the only one I don't recognize. Yeah. Um, Mad Max Fury Road, Creed, and the best one saved for last, no. of course. Star Wars The Force Awakens. <laughs> no. What? Make sure you see that before you die, okay? Corporate approved um, list. I, I mean, in a sense, would, yeah, you kind of uh, want to see it before you die just to see what they did with Star Wars. No. <laughs> <laughs> Protect I, I, those old people from seeing it. Why Man, die happy? <laughs> the thing about that list is it's just like, those are like a lot of really predictable, safe choices. Yeah. Um, there's not many like, oh, huh, you know, there's not, you know, like, wow, except for like, wow, The Force Awakens, holy shit, okay. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them are so expected that it's like, oh, uh, yeah, but... Well, kind of like, again, if you're top ten, you got like Casablanca, Citizen Kane, like those types of films, you know what I mean? Or, or like The Godfather, or, um... Uh, like oh, no. Taxi Driver or stuff like that, it would just be... Gary finally oh, realized he hasn't left yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh Gary finally left. <laughs> <laughs> what are all these voices in my head? Who's that? They sound like my friends. Why is there so many movies? Uh, it Wait, seems like it's... Metal here? I thought what? he wasn't here. <laughs> oh, I've just been here the whole time. Oh. I was He's talking before we Mahler's started. Mahler's channel, I think. <laughs> where is this metal creature? <laughs> <laughs> I'm right next to the long man right yes. now. Oh, we're, look, we're both appreciating the book. Yeah, yeah, he's right next to him. He's on the one side, and there's a sheep on the other side, just chilling out. True. That's Metal Frank. flew he's across chill. the world to you see know, to, to read Chris Tuckman's book with his best friend. <laughs> with the list read out, I'd like to read uh, a quote that is celebrated okay. on the back of the book from author of Shiro's Vala Ventura. She says. Of Chris Stuckman. Chris Stuckman is the Roger Ebert of YouTube, and this book is awesome. Is that it? That's, uh, that's yeah, that's the, the quote. <laughs> oh, and this book is awesome. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. I well, guess, so I look, can read the back of the book. Those quotes are always really short, but I do find that pretty. What, well, like the description of the purpose? Yeah, but they don't have book. to feel so <laughs> yes. short. <laughs> yes, please do. Please. All right. Please do. Millions of movie fans rely upon pop culture taste maker Chris Stuckman's film reviews before they buy a ticket. Why? Taste maker. Because Stuckman delivers Don't the goods. Don't ever call me taste maker. Oh god, you're not ready for this. I hadn't even read this I guess before. Just call me before fucking the asshole before, before you call me taste maker. I guess this was before the era of um inf uh, influencer as a term. Yeah. He's a taste right. maker, which is decidedly more awkward. <laughs> So yeah. it continues because Stuckman delivers the goods with deeply informed and thoughtful reviews that help us sort out the must sees from the don't waste your time schlock fests. A schlock fest sounds like a, a, an endorsement. I'll That's absolutely watch well, a schlock, well, schlock well, fest. And that, also, that also sounds pretty negative, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Well, this was written before his change. This was the old Chris. Ah, this was so... before his rebirth. This was before okay. the Stuckman ah, Renaissance. He must I take see. the book down, okay. because it's mean. We can't have meanness. His honest take as a cinephile is something you can always depend upon. Oh, he wants to fuck movies? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is what sets him apart from the pack, and makes his bucket list selection an excellent guide to movies you just gotta see before you start pushing up daisies. I'm sorry, but who who yeah, loves film needs this list, you know? I don't know. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm it's like told... like a self-help guide for people who already know how to do the thing. I'm told day in, day out, that I have, like, the worst mainstream taste levels ever, right? But the, <laughs> the taste maker himself has provided a list in which I only don't recognize one and haven't seen two. Like, come on, man. The taste maker. I can just die according to him. <laughs> but I'm not exactly <laughs> looking to. I... <laughs> All right. This continues. Since the turn of the century, movie lovers have been enjoying a second golden age. But which films are the best of the best? What are the top movies since 2000 to see before you die? In the film buff's bucket list, Chris Stuckman, one of YouTube's most popular film reviewers, not so much anymore, gives us his best of the best. These are films you must see before you die. As Stuckman says, my love of movies turned into the, turned into the art of film. What? What? My my, uh, my love of movies turned into the art of that's he's not a very good writer. My love of movies turned into movies the art of turned... film. That is the that sentence. Is what it says, right? I'm I don't it. know. I can only see the microphone. Oh. <laughs> but you're there. Well, you can the, read it yourself. He's yeah, the, he's referring to his own transition into, into a, like a, a filmmaker. Like he wasn't a filmmaker before, okay. and now he is. Right. I assume that's my what love he's talking of, about. Oh, he's trying to. That's not great grammar, but that's okay. <laughs> no, that still doesn't make any sense. Because then it might. No, my love of what? No, love what? I mean, I'm just trying to guess what the fuck he might. <laughs> no, be I think you're right. To. I think what he wanted to say was, my love of movies turned me into a person that makes movies. I always love when you when, yeah. when, when I read something. Say, oh, it's probably a language barrier, and then you guys are like, I don't know what that means. Like, oh, okay, I'm it's fine. The <laughs> Listen, barrier. Americans have trouble with <laughs> language barrier. <laughs> <laughs> a good movie is like a bomb. It can soothe, enthrall, entice, inspire. A Discover bomb? Movie. What? A, a bomb can entice? <laughs> I don't wait, oh, know. Wait, 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 all right. Oh, okay. Discover movies you and your family will love with this book. St what? Start the popcorn. Start the popcorn. <laughs> Start the popcorn. <laughs> I mean, I guess... hang on, I'm just gonna turn off the popcorn real quick. Up and... Well, you, you, <sighs> that, you can, they do, you can, you can. What, like, but you, nobody says you start the popcorn. The popcorn. Before. You, you say the popcorn. grab the popcorn. Grab the popcorn. I'm gonna prepare Start the it. No, <laughs> we're gonna make some popcorn. This is second language. You put start the, key the popcorn. In the ignition of popcorn, <laughs> and you popcorn. get it going. I'm hitting play, guys. Get the popcorn started. And then we have to <laughs> yeah, wait for it. Uh, pause it five minutes in. <laughs> we have another quote Press from Alicia Malone, film oh. reporter and author of Backwards and in Heels. She says, okay. Chris Stuckman's intelligent take on film has seen his popularity on YouTube skyrocket. And his passion is easy to see in this book. The film you. buff's bucket list has a fantastic selection of movies, both big and small, that all film lovers can enjoy. This is a wonderful reference guide for the times where you don't know what to choose and will enhance the knowledge of all movie geeks. I mean, if you're saying I just so. don't buy the mo movie geeks have seen these. Most of well, yeah, these, if not again, all of these. Movie geeks have most, uh... seen most of these. If there was, if we were to make a book here on EFAP with all of our, our very good friends, um, mm. if we were to put our collective brains together and we were going to introduce people into, I guess, this, this sphere of the hobby, then we would pick a bunch of movies that would incorporate different elements of the filmmaking process. So we'd make sure that the movies would have like really good cinematography or like the use of color. Uh, some really good characters. We'd pick some long movies, and we'd pick some really short ones too to, you know, to be able to, you know, show the difference between them. Um, but they'd be a, it'd be a varied list that covers all the bases, along with the explanations as to why this is something that you should maybe appreciate, and here's what it did well, and you can contrast that with these movies that are done really poorly, so that it's really easy to, I, I guess, to see and to learn this stuff. I it wouldn't just wouldn't be see all these good movies. I'd be recommending bad right. films, to be honest. I'd, uh... Well, so, I... <laughs> Return of the King and Spider-Man 2, it's like, bro, come on. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to include, like, a sequel, surely you're going to have to include the earlier one as well, if the story is uh, very... There's only 50 like, entries from really... yeah, we, we can't well, yeah, this up. Yeah, I guess there's that. Um, and obviously, there's, there's, there's probably no point in talking about all the... F I mean, obviously, good films will be omitted no matter what if you limit yourself to yes. 50. Um, but I, it is, again, it's just like, man, they're all, like, very, 
normal choices. There's not many surprising ones. What's very cool about like, this? Oh wow, really? Is that the way it's uh, written here is that you can cross them off your bucket list and you can rate them from five or out of five stars. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Because um, that's what you do if you're a movie reviewer. You rate things out of five stars. Hell yeah. Or yep, four if you're Roger Ebert, right? <laughs> I always found four to be weird. Oh yeah, he did four. Ooh. Yeah, four no. is weird. Four is I'm shit. I'm going to read his signs review, but then all of you, I expect all of you to target one of the ones I mentioned, and then I will read the review of, of that particular chosen one. I will happily read the list again to you if you require that, but I assume something stood out to you. At least I hope so. Well, I've already heard that once. I'm going to grab more alcohol. Wow. <laughs> He's right, you know. I, read I, it to him. I, I actually actually got to dip out, guys, but um, this has been um, a pleasure. <laughs> well, yeah, What what's your assessment of Chris Stuckman? <laughs> give, us, give us your unadulterated thoughts upon the man himself. This is so basic. It's Try all mainstream Hollywood. <laughs> it's all mainstream Hollywood stuff. Thing interesting, no radical choices, no independent films, no foreign films, no whatever. I mean, it's just like that is it's like a list of movies that came out. That yes. is what he compiled and then decided to spew thoughts in the on paper, right? Which is, I don't know, like it just there's I feel like I learned nothing. So, and you were pointing out he told you earlier, when to start the popcorn, yeah, he did. He gave you, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did, yeah, that's true. Set the ignition for the popcorn. Um, but like Jeremy Johns, you were talking about earlier. I I like him. I like his takes. Mm -hmm. They're short. Sweet. He gets in, gets out. He has something interesting to say. Um, he's not afraid to critique things when they deserve it. So, um, I I quite en enjoy him. But uh, but I do think it's I do think it's interesting to like pay attention to someone like a John Campier, Buckman, just to know like, oh, is this a normal person thinks? <laughs> is this that what the normal people are saying? I guess original thoughts. You're right. You know, like, but Stuckman, I don't know. Like, so I don't pay attention to him. Has his subscriber count gone down or views of his videos He's, gone um, down? Or like, what's the... Deal? His engagement has lowered uh, ever since he decided he wouldn't be critical. But I think it was go. it was trending down anyway, because the fact is, like, anyone who watches almost exclusively him, the second you watch another sort of film reviewer that has much more passion, I don't see why you would continue watching him. You'd be like, right. oh yeah, I, guess, I can't wait to hear him say the exact same thing again about another movie. Yeah, like, I I, th I think John Campia is experiencing the same thing where he's seeing just his views. <clears throat> Excuse me, his views are just like, have dropped dramatically, mm. you know? Um, it's I think it's also because he, he got rid of Robert Meyer Burnett, who, I mean, he was the reason I watched the Campia show was I always wanted to see what RMB had to say, but now he's got his own channel, so there's really no need, so... Well, I'm going to be honest say. with you, I don't have a particularly strong view of John Camp here <laughs> from the clips I've seen, thanks to Gary and others. He's, uh, but you know, you know, maybe he seems, he seems overtly happy with a lot of what happens with Disney stuff, which, uh, is always a red flag of like, yeah, you think they're doing great right now? Okie dokie. Um, but I haven't yeah. seen him review, you know, your average film. Maybe he's, uh, got plenty of insight here and there. Probably not as it's much shocking as Chris Stuckman, of course. Right, right. But uh, gentlemen, it's uh, been a pleasure hanging out with you. It's my first EFAP, so thank you for going easy on me. <laughs> I, uh, um, and, uh, glad to have you, sir. We'll try and get you back again to maybe talk about a movie, uh, one that we love. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yes, no, definitely. Just something interesting, but I don't even know. How do I leave? What do I do? Uh, Just go to a different Discord? Big red button. Okay. The hang up. Yeah, yeah that'll yeah. work. It's a red button. You're having to walk me through this. It's like Gary the trying to get out of a room. On a <laughs> well, as you saw, Gary an didn't array leave. Of five buttons underneath the play, the not player icons. The fucking Gary took like a whole hour to leave. So, <laughs> all right, big red button. Okay, you got this. well, uh, Merry Christmas in jail. Hey, everybody, Merry later. I great okay. hearing from you, man. Peace. All right. Well, I guess uh, I can read you his signs review now if you'd like. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> yeah, Bell, you did <laughs> the whole went, time. even went for a P. Ow. Yeah, oof. He, um, he's said, abusing himself for the art. It didn't even hurt, but I said ow anyway. Yes. Um, <laughs> Signs, 2002. Drama, sci-fi, thriller. We've all seen Signs, a classic, starring Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix, Rory Culkin, Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Beautiful. Studio Touchstone Pictures. 
All right, here we go. Here comes the... Like, the way he does this is you'll be like, this is the movie, and now here's the reasoning, so get ready. If you read the introduction to this book, then you already know how important this film is to me. It literally changed the way I view movies. The only reason I'm writing these words oh, right yeah. now is because my mum took me to the theater in 2002, changing my life. That night, I sat in my room a new kid. Signs affected me so much that I even attempted to recreate the film in a shoddy and pointless shot-for-shot -shot remake. Our resulting film was embarrassingly bad, but it undoubtedly communicated my love for filmmaking at that age. Almost all the negativity I see directed at signs are from complaints that universally <gasps> miss the point. Idiots. People tend to pile hate on Shyamalan Toxic. because they watch his films from a very straightforward, wooden perspective with most of his movies, and especially with Signs. This is not the right approach. Mm -hmm. On paper, Signs is about a grieving family dealing with an alien invasion occurring around the world. Mel Gibson oh, wow. gives a harrowing performance as a former priest trying to protect his family from this otherworldly threat. Simply follow this plot and Signs still works as a marvelously suspenseful, surprisingly funny thriller. Hilarious. That's it. Oh, is that everything he has to say? No, about that the was movie? just him whining that people don't like Shaman Ling on. on... <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm wrong. There was another whining. page. There's two more paragraphs. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ooh, Here boy. we go. Oh, wow. We haven't even seen this before. Now this is Shyamalan Lama <laughs> Ding Dong. I mean, I was counting on you to reading me all of it. Here we go, man. This oh my more. god, I'm so excited. But where signs truly shines, I don't know. is its brilliant subtext. Mm. The film is riddled with hidden meanings that oh. few audiences pick up on. The loss of faith, denial of a higher power, heaven, hell, demons, angels, prophecies. Wow, Shyamalan's, like a Zack Snyder film. Shyamalan's script and subtle art direction build a truly touching story. And one that many have overlooked. You can watch Signs as enjoyable escapism, and it still works. But if you're willing to dig a little deeper... I'm positive you'll discover a thematically rich and powerful work of art. It still hasn't stopped what? inspiring me, and it never will. Even the movie ended. You don't have to <laughs> dig <laughs> into signs at all to find loss of faith. That's like the character talks about it overtly. Is um, that's not like subtext. Signs is a bad movie. I like it, but it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, the yeah, signs well, is maybe actually the... weren't so wooden. Signs is the movie, along with The Village, that turns Shyamalan from being a good director into a bad one. That's uh, And then Lady in the Water's after this, right? Assigns. Yeah, but the problem is that you're Pinocchio, Mola. You're, you have a you're wooden. You're wooden perspective. You, that's, that's you. <laughs> oh, man. Damn it. I think your nose got so you, too. You, as, um, you filthy lies. As Lil Platoon just pointed out, nobody missed what Signs was about. <laughs> We got it. It's but aliens well, that don't know how to open doors. The better the, science the film way... is Scary Movie 3, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> True. The, the, the way Chris writes about it, I mean, I don't know how old he is. I don't know if this is the case, but it sounds like he's describing his first experience at the theater. Like, is that, is that the first thing he went to 2002, see? 2002, so he would be... be... Right? I don't know. Can't be, yeah. He would have been around the age of 10, something like that. No, okay. why? That would it wouldn't be his first. I mean, it would have been the one that affected him the most, which, you know, it can be anything. Which, by the way, is fine. But claiming nobody understood yeah. it, oh, so fucking cliche. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I've never claimed that about certain movies. That's okay. I'm just saying, signs of all things. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, yeah why yeah. didn't you pick a cool movie like like Pokemon the movie? Yeah. Well, like, if, if he's just describing his first theater experience, like, that's the 14. first movie that he saw in a theater that made an impression on him, and he's, Damn. like, excited about it, then, Apparently like, whatever. Apparently he was 14. I mean, like... Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. I don't know if that was the first thing he saw, but, like... I mean, I've talked before about my experiences watching Lord of the Rings blowing my mind, but I was seven, eight, and nine when I saw those in the theaters. Mm. Yeah, you can imagine very they, formative movies. You can imagine they blew me away. <laughs> well, I leave it to uh, we'll go we'll go from left to right from my Discord. So Fringy is the first. What review would you like to hear from the selection? Wait, are we are we having to actually like go through several? Of Not all of them, now? just your choice. Pick one. Um, 
Well, yeah, but it, that means we're going to go through like six of them. Yeah, uh, could you read me the list one more right, time? Uh, let me. Well, I'll just find the list. Yeah, you know, what, if you compose the list, so everyone can sort of figure out which one they want to get while we do the yeah, next one. Yeah, hold on, let me. Uh, I have let it here. Let me. Let me see. More, yeah, what, what are you doing? Oh, right, you... well, let's go with the Incredibles. Yeah, okay, we'll do metal first with the Incredibles. Now, the reason I'm going to need to speak excessively is because I got to find it. So here I go yeah. speaking as if there's something happening when really there isn't yeah, I can at all. Yeah, speak too. There's like two people. Holy like fuck, he's speaking microphone. too. But That's I'm one. just, I'm picturing, I'm picturing Mahler and Metal both awkwardly using the same like keyboard. crammed into the same <laughs> mic stand. <laughs> I don't know if he ordered these. No, I need to type no. Stop he it. He did order them, I think. Okay, so Incredible should be 500 days of summer. No, this isn't ordered. Damn you, Chris. Oh, it's not? How or... am I supposed to find them with ease now? I guess he doesn't want me to, specifically to prevent me from doing a stream like this. <laughs> well, there's a chapter list, surely, right? At the front of the book? Maybe there is, who knows? Let's have a look. No, no, no. Yes, I am no. physically with the long man, no. in the same room. Isn't that crazy? Wow! It's not right. even Germans the finally getting what they bring. I don't know how to. I don't know how to type. There's no chapter list. Not not even the first time that, that happens. It's crazy. That that's just silly. <laughs> <laughs> it is silly. That's just silly. He's got the list at the end, but he doesn't have a page number for them. Why won't you do your list well, in the same order than the thing you've written? That's... Well, page numbers and indexes and table of contents. That's some pretty high level yeah. stuff that you don't learn early on as a writer. That's some yeah. Th those are some industry secrets. Come on, man. Is this seriously not a content, Wait, a list of content? I think he did them in order of release date, but then he didn't do that on the fucking ending <laughs> list. <laughs> Chris, you fucking retard. What's uh, wrong with okay. you? No. Yeah, but he didn't do that on the collective list at the end. Why? He did them alphabetically <laughs> at the end, I think, did he? No, that's just so random. So he did three different lists? Three different <laughs> orders? They're not the yeah, same well, listing, I know that much. Yeah, when did, uh, when did Incredibles nice. come out, Fringy? You'd know that. 2004. 2004. Oh, we're almost there. Yes. Oh my god. 2003. There we go. Four. I didn't expect this to be such a confusing thing. Incredibles. Found ya. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Incredibles. It's gonna take Gather around, Incredibles. everyone, for the review Get of Incredibles. Marshmallows. Animation action adventure. This Director Brad one. Bird, starring Craig T. Nelson, Jason Lee, Holly Hunter, and Studio Walt Disney Pictures. Oh, that was there was basically <sighs> a full review of the movie right there. I was gonna say we've mostly <laughs> covered Chris's video on All this. All right. Now. <laughs> We just Dude. need the seven. You open up the book and it somehow plays the seven <laughs> second long sound. He's labeled of it. those quick facts. <laughs> He's like, well, that's those your are, review those, usually. <laughs> those are quick facts, yeah. The first time I saw Toy Story, I couldn't imagine anything topping it. Oh, no. Incredibles. I wanted Incredibles. Bulge. <laughs> he did say Incredibles. <laughs> In fact,. It took nearly 10 years for Pixar to make a film I viewed as an improvement, and here it Ooh, is. Ooh, good save, Mahler, good save. <laughs> the Incredibles centers around a family of superheroes forced to lead normal lives when a lawsuit outlaws all superheroes. <gasps> oh, that's a sentence. Mm. This is a brilliant idea. <laughs> it's, oh. not a great, it's not a great sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine really the Hulk bad. sitting behind a desk at an insurance agency. That sounds hilarious. Eventually, trouble inevitably brews, and our heroes have to come out of retirement. Mm. Brad Bird has become a what household heroes? name. No, he hasn't. That's... Wait, I wish he, that would he, meant he said our heroes, but he hasn't listed them yet. Yeah. Or mentioned who they are. <laughs> no, just imagine the he's Hulk. Just like in the, fine. Yeah, just he like said later, someone he like the Hulk. Says, That's good enough. Yeah. Imagine the, imagine the Hulk behind a desk, and then yeah, our heroes he have, he have to... He hasn't concisely presented the premise, <laughs> which is that it's... A you know why, family. Friggy? You know why? Because he's saying this as though you've seen it. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, he writes like he writes like you've already completely bought into it and you've seen it. What's the point of this fucking bucket funny. list? <laughs> like, you've seen, you seen Incredibles. You've seen Incredibles. Uh, but yeah, you said B Brad Bird has become a household name. I, I, if we're talking like no. Spielberg, it's like it's not that level. Is he even Nolan level? It's like probably not. Um, I would say that he's probably one of the more well-known directors of animated films. I'd agree with that. Um, yeah. But that would still, but that's still like niche. I would imagine that most people, many people, have seen his films. But I, I, I would be surprised if you could find any just normal sort of moviegoer who could name one Pixar director. That would surprise me. Mm-hmm. 
That's fair. Yeah, I feel like Pixar is the household name, and Brad Bird yes. was, yeah, Pixar, got famous exactly. working the same for way that a lot of video yeah. game, When it comes to video games, the development studio is what people often think about. It's the team, not necessarily any individual, like, you know, guy at the top, creative director yeah. or whatnot. But with Incredibles, he was still proving himself. Bird's The Iron Giant received critical praise upon its release in 1999, yet it was a financial bomb. The Incredibles helped put Bird on the map. Like The Iron Giant, Incredibles, or The Incredibles, sorry, is a loving tribute to old-fashioned filmmaking, heightened by a jazzy score from Michael Giacchino. The film's vibrant visuals explode off the screen, no 3D required, even better than animation, though, are the, I'm sorry, what the fuck? Even better than animation, <laughs> though, are the characters, he's saying the characters are better than the animation. Okay. That's a, that's a weird thing to say. That is yeah. a weird thing um, to say. I it's don't even know better. how to. Well, imagine yeah. I said like the the only characters the in Lord of the Rings are better than the practical effects. You'd be like, uh, yeah, I feel like that only works when you're talking about the extremes on either end. But apart from that, it's a really strange thing I, to say. My guess would be that it's like, well, when people think of animated films, they're often thinking of the animation. So, see, this is how I establish to them that the characters are so great by saying that it's better than the animation, which is really bizarre when the animation is part of the storytelling and imbuing the characters with life. Well, the yeah, I feel like the direction you... of each of the given characters, the way that they move through the world and how it changes. Like, you know, Mr. Incredible, right? When you take, like, the way that he looks cramped in his office to eventually going on his big training montage to where it becomes like in shape again superhero that's all storytelling that's coming from the an the animation that's in the character so why mm. it's just well, a weird point to make you could probably say something like you will be more impressed by the characters than by the animation but the, why, would you, I mean, why would you make them not... compete why would you do <laughs> yeah, that now exactly. you have me compete now you have compete. me in my brain making those two yeah, you, great things the sentence would be like each other. perhaps as impressive as the incredible animation is the character writing or something like that but yeah, instead well, he's like equally impressive yeah you know equally impressive or something don't yeah, yeah I'd say it's hard to it's it. hard to say which is better the oh, right. characters or the animation. You're gonna be so pissed the next sentence here oh. it goes. You ready? Oh so boy, do they start with that. a prep do they end with a preposition? He says So on about the characters, right? That's the context of the next sentence. Okay. They the family sorry, they quite literally leap from the screen. Oh fuck. <laughs> off. Well, they don't quite literally leap from the screen, buddy. They quite I, I like they how he says it's not enough to do. say literally. <laughs> literally isn't strong enough of a word. He has to say they quite, quite literally. literally. They quite leap from yeah. the screen. <laughs> they quite yeah. literally leap from the screen and strangled me and slapped me in the face. <laughs> Uh, oh, the family dynamic is a huge screen. part of the film's yeah. emotional heft and makes their eventual team up all the more enthralling. The Incredibles is tons of fun for everyone, but it's also an extremely smart film mm. that still entertains today. I mean, yeah. Bird's energetic world is populated with superheroes that feel more human than the actual human stars of many lesser films. Ooh. Oh my that's God. A, that seems like it's a clumsily written... Well, it they seems seem unnecessary more than the, the actual of human stars of the real life. Yeah, that's... Surely and plus that. you're comparing... Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. Right, so was there one. any other Pixar film on that list? Mm, I don't uh, think there was. Uh, old boy. <laughs> old boy. <laughs> oh, Toy Story. Was Toy, Toy Story, Story three? Story three. Yeah, that was oh, it. Right, right, right. Which, uh, damn. Okay. Um. Obviously, yeah. Mm. Uh, look, I have Pixar favoritism and bias, especially for that era. I, I don't know that there's any studio that consistently <laughs> delivered that many excellent films. Back then, yes. Because, mm. like, yeah, if you asked me to make this list, there'd be more than, there'd be more, and there wouldn't be Toy Story 3. <laughs> there'd, there'd be Finding Nemo, Ratatouille, Wally, -E, um, and Monsters, Inc. I, 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 yeah, I think I'd put all of those ones on there. And it's like, what about Up? It's like, yeah, maybe mm. I'd put Up on there. Maybe, but definitely those five. Um, All right. That's okay. Who's right. next? That's okay. I'll go next. Uh, I'll go next. Oh, well, I thought... Unless Fringy would really like to are we go. Doing, are we doing... I was, I mean, so, since I was we did, so excited. Since we did Metal and myself, I feel like at this point it could just be anybody, but I don't mind going in an order of some sort if you want. Yeah. Okay, Rags. Yeah, sure. You can, uh, you can pick. Go for well, it. Well, I'm looking at the list from IMDb, and I saw number one, and I had to stop there. Let's go with his number one pick, Star Wars, episode 
five, six, seven. The Force <laughs> Awakens. Oh God, David, that was going to be my pick. I think uh, yeah, I will find one. another one. Hands right. off my pick. I've Get your found own it already, list so pick. We're, we're great. Um, well, I would just like to thank Rags and the little platoon for mentioning this because I was torn between Force Awakens and another one. Like, now so now I can pick my Maybe other choice and you. hear this. Yeah. So, The Force Awakens 2015 action adventure fantasy. Director J.J. Abrams, starring Daisy you Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar sci-fi. Isaac, you, Studio you, you, Lucasfilm you, you, Limited. Uh, uh, that's strange. I, I think I would probably go with science fiction before fantasy if I was. Yeah, that's that weird style. that it listed as a fantasy that's and probably. not science At the fiction. very least, you call it science fantasy before fantasy. But, yeah. You know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. It's, it's okay. I'm fine normalizing it. science fantasy as a thing, but like, if you're gonna choose, that's not the one I'd go with. Because well, yeah, it's you, it's you like 95 percent science list, fiction and five percent fantasy. Perhaps no film in it. history was more anticipated than Star Wars: The Force Awakens. In fact, that anticipation has led many to unrealistic expectations. The Uh-oh, original trilogy is often highly regarded in the minds of fans as untouchable near perfect entertainments i don't like that line at all i don't like that either (laughs) while i do love those films i also recognize that no film is perfect boring in today's day and age a highly anticipated film that perhaps isn't a work of utter perfection can be lambasted as awful it's a strange and unwelcome development but nonetheless the force awakens receives a lot of unwarranted hate what a way to start your fucking review of The Force Awakens. <laughs> Everyone hates sorry, it. Ma- By the way, Mahler, did, we're nearly halfway like you're through. you're me against uh, it. Did he use entertainment in the plural? Wait, wait, wait. The, did, he say, did he put an S at the end of that? The you sentence in that. full... It's just not always... Yeah. The sentence in full correct? is okay. the original trilogy is often highly regarded in the minds of fans as untouchable, nearly perfect entertainments. That sounds weird to me. But, okay, if that's <laughs> yes. a thing, then okay. I wouldn't use it there because if you use entertainments, you normally are trying to group a bunch of different forms of entertainment. Like mm-hmm. if you go yeah, to the fair, right. the fair yeah. would be a place of entertainments, many different kinds of entertainment. But we're wow. talking about a bunch of movies, a collection mm-hmm. of movies. So also, if we're picking apart the grammar, highly it's regarded crazy. as untouchable is redundant. Obvi- if it's untouchable, then obviously, yes, it's highly regarded. It'd be regarded yeah. as untouchable. Yes. I mean, we can all agree it's an entertainment. Very true. I'm, I'm starting to think <laughs> it is one guy entertainment. Isn't a very good writer. <laughs> I will take one entertainment, please. <laughs> all right. That continuing. will be $1. I loved this film. And I honestly feel that in years to come, and especially with future releases, it will garner oh. great respect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Nostradamus over here. Oh, you Christopher, no. <laughs> <laughs> you fool. Was this written in 2015? That could... I think it's 2006, like early 2016. Oh, at least no. Google tells me no, it was really. in February it's, 2016. It's very similar to that Kramer clip of saying, don't take your money out of Bear Stearns. It's like, oh, whoops. <laughs> I want to read it again. It's such a funny line. I loved this film, and I honestly feel that in years to come, and especially with future releases, it will garner great respect. So the opposite came true. With horrible releases, uh, the TFA is lost an incredible amount of respect. It's now considered dirt, basically. Pretty much. Um, and then he goes and, on to uh, say... JJ hasn't made many movies since. No, uh, well, <laughs> Rise of Skywalker retired him. <laughs> so, like, kind I of. Um, well, I would think it's considered the least dirt out of the new three ones. Because like that, that's like the safe ye- retread of A oh. New Hope, right? So what's happened with I've... a lot of people is that they see it as the reason everything went to shit. Like, it, it started it. Um... So it depends on right. who you're talking to, but I think I think you're right. I think if everyone was settled into choose the worst, the TFA would come out on top. I think because people Probably, have a very it's... personal hatred for TLJ, and then most just film lovers think that Rise of Skywalker was an insult to film in general. Mm-hmm. Right. So he goes on. Hell, 
The Empire Strikes Back received a surprisingly lukewarm response. No, it did boring. not. Everyone lukewarm response. Does it, Everyone I don't know what's going on. Like, came out. My parents I don't, like don't this care that much about Star Wars, but even my mum knows about Star Wars because of that. She was alive when this was going on. She was like, yes, everyone fucking was obsessed with Star Wars. It's like, why are you pretending like you could just say, yeah, most people didn't really care about Empire, you know? <laughs> like, this is kind of a <laughs> meh movie. It came out, you know. <laughs> oh, such bullshit. Received a surprisingly lukewarm response upon its initial release back in 1980. You always yeah. wonder, like, what exactly is the point that someone's trying to make? Ah, see, a film got a lukewarm response, so maybe in the future everybody will consider it good. And it's like, yeah, but what about all the films that get a lukewarm response and are permanently <laughs> have a lukewarm response forever? It never changes. Yes, it's um, it's the thing we heard since like from the beginning, and I believe uh, once we hit the ten years, everyone could admit they were wrong. We're at what? Yeah. Oh, metal's here. Yes, oh, we're getting close. Hi, metal. Uh, hello, we're hello about metal. Eight years, Hi. eight years <laughs> removed from uh, the Force Awakens. <laughs> we're getting there. Um, well, I was going to say the TLJ is the one that most people say like it will be considered a masterpiece in a decade. It's like no. Yeah, most say. Uh, most someone's say. told me uh, in chat that Empire Strikes Back won People's Choice Award for the year it came out. Do you mean people's uh -huh. people's meh award, people's hatred award? Look, or... I I don't like I I just based on everything my parents say and the things that all the olds you know talk about. Oh, I don't believe this idea that that this <laughs> it seems like this lie that's uh, propagated to try and justify TLJ. That the Empire Strikes Back was not loved when it came out. It's I, bullshit. Everyone knows it's bullshit. Well, Empire Strikes Back is what turned Star Wars into like a franchise. That's what yeah. made it the franchise that it became. So I mean, yeah, to be fair, like nobody knows the Y wingers thing. either. Yeah. So often, I am your father, and the scene. I would. just there's just yeah. no way. There's no way. Well, yeah. This is a total rewriting of history to try and make TLJ to. To say no, 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 it'll get better, just like Empire. To try to, it's tie, kind of to try and tie those two together. Like that argument it passed be... its sell by date anyway, because you know, we're now mm. several years out from TLJ. So even if you accept the premise that Empire was received lukewarmly and then improved, it would have improved much more quickly than TLJ hasn't at all. So like even if you accept the premise, the argument doesn't hold anymore. But the premise was incorrect anyway. So well, the, the, it's it's interesting that the claim is predicated on no arguments other than well, people didn't like it, and then eventually they did, as if like <laughs> that's a meaningful response to criticisms that are being levied, like specific criticisms that you would have to change people's minds on the things that they are criticizing for the perception to change. That's what needs to happen. And and it feels like when mm. TLJ came out, everybody was having a huge like there were so many discussions happening about the contents of the film. That have been like thoroughly exhausted at this point. What it, what is the new information that's going to change people's minds on um like the hyperspace kamikaze or Luke's like a complete not a character assassination? What are the new arguments going to be five or ten years later that will change everybody's minds? Yeah, that's right. There aren't any. No. Nope. Yeah, I, I yeah. You got me there, Fringy. You got me there. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Something like. like I also find it funny that it's like, if you have to wheel out that argument straight away instead of like making more, I guess maybe that'll be what he's about to do. What are all of these comprehensive defenses that are going to be like wheeled out? <clears throat> Yeah. They've already done it. They're already at the the internet is like YouTube is a graveyard of attempted TLJ defenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Which is funny. Uh, it's kind they of all like tried. Different... Everyone tried, and it didn't stick. None of it stuck. Well, it's kind of kind of an interesting phenomenon that conversations happen a lot faster now, to where reaching, I guess, the end point of the world's idea on any given film or television show, like that, just happens a lot more quickly. Yeah, it's not going to take so. years for people to come around. It's like, well, people basically figure out how they feel in like a month or two months, or you yeah. know, the months, internet like and social year. media they do sort of hyper accelerate that discussion. And yes, yeah, you're right. To where, uh, like, what's going to happen other than people going on Twitter trying to make posts like, oh, you know, everybody got it so wrong. And it's like, nobody's convinced. still thinking about this scene. Yeah. <laughs> nobody's convinced. Yeah. First reply. Yo, this movie was trash, lol. Well, every, <laughs> every post just, about that throne room scene, I, I don't even know that they attempt to make it an appreciation post as opposed to a fight post. They're like, when they post it, they're yeah. like, yeah, let's get going. Yeah, My favorite ones other ones like I haven't still haven't seen any arguments except uh, Ridley is a woman that she's bad. It's like no, it's just because of shit character. Ridley, 
I mean, Daisy, oh, I guess that works, yeah. That's Daisy pretty... Ridley, I was going for, yeah. Fair enough. Right. I don't remember Ridley in, uh, in uh, Star Wars. I don't remember them fighting the big purple dragon guy. But they should have. Would have improved They should have. Would have been a better no, movie. Have. Don't, drag, don't drag. Don't besmirch his name. Don't drag him into this mess. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I continue? There is a particularly funny line coming up. Oh, well, like, actually, I, I really need to use the loo. I can't. So, and I, but I want to hear this, so I'll be right back. Very well. Quick, we stop, shall quick platoon, stall for time. Quick. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, no. Platoon, tell Just, us about um, the thing that you were going to tell us about. Flip. I, I can stall for time on TLJ. This is easily oh, possible. Um, so. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, but like, okay, going back to the Empire comparison then, mm -hmm. just for stalling for time's sake, because <laughs> this is such an obvious point and it really doesn't need to be said. But like, even the types of criticisms that you could level against Empire are not the types of criticisms people did level against TLJ. So even if you, again, accepting the premise that it was received lukewarmly, the, I, the most I think I've ever seen is that people were, you know, like surprised at the darker tone that the franchise took. Yeah. And if they wanted a feel good thing like a new hope, then they were surprised and maybe weren't necessarily like happy or satisfied because it was darker. But if you go into basic, you know, plot dissection or constructional character construction, decision making by characters, uh, expanded world building stuff, like all the stuff that TLJ falls apart on, it's not just a matter of artistic difference that leads people to say that no TLJ is just a dog shit film. It's the fact it's a dog shit film on all of the levels. Hey, you're not going to find me disagreeing. <laughs> Something I found yeah. interesting is that um, part of the mounting of the defense for The Last Jedi is now, oh, you know, they made a real Star Wars movie. They made oh. a real movie and that that turned off Star Wars fans. It's like, you can't build up TLJ by talking about how shit, like, all the other Star Wars <laughs> movies are. It's not going to work. Like, who do you think you're going to well, convince? Whereas The Empire Strikes Back can be built up without tearing down A New Hope. You don't have to tear it down to present even, like a um, case for that film. Even something like Return of the Jedi or the prequels, where we're all very aware from years of dissection, what's wrong with them? I don't appreciate comparisons even with them. I'm just like, leave them alone. Compared to TLJ, at least they were trying to add to this fucking thing instead of Rather absolutely destroy it. Destroying. My favorite back and forth is when someone says, let the past die, kill it if you have to. That's the message of TLJ. And then someone goes, you idiot, that was the villain's point of view. The film is actually countering it. But then the more interesting take is then to see someone's like, you idiot, that's obviously what Ryan was trying to do, but he created a film, and people would argue intentionally, that actually does support that point of view and does destroy its legacy, does kill the past. He believes that's the way to move forward. That would be his version of subversion. Meanwhile, uh, we have tried for many years on EFAB to try and, try and push back on the damage he's done to Subversion. Some of my favorite films of all time incorporate Subversion, and he's made it a dirty word, so thank you for that, Mr. Johnson. That dirty Subversion here. What a big Johnson he is for doing that. Oh, he probably is a small Johnson. Oh! <laughs> <Get him. laughs> he's, he's at home listening to this right now, and he's like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that milk motor guy is too much. It's, it's too much. Of course, the Germans said that fucking piece of shit. Fucking German. <laughs> <sighs> then you get like the other ones as well. When you, they they get a bit desperate by the end and say, "Well, Ray is not a Mary Sue, <laughs> and anyway, Luke and Anakin were Mary Sue, so it's fine that she is one." Uh, no, none of that's true. But also, yeah, the. The, the compulsion to try and tear down the thing before to make the new thing seem better, when you start getting to that point, when you've stopped arguing for the film on its own merits, then you are already losing that argument, I think. God, that conversation got so poisoned because people like moved it into what is a Mary Sue and whether or not she categorizes the correct as it or whether or not it moves on in a meta sense of whether or not it's like, can we just talk about how she, as a character she was? That was like where we were going <laughs> with that. Mm -hmm. So you have to like reformat and be like, she... Always, any struggle she encounters in the entire story either ultimately benefits her or she escapes it immediately. And then they're like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> You're like, okay. God. Uh, I think uh, th there's a weird thing going on there where it's like, I mean, I'm not a Star Wars guy, but like I can recognize like broad storytelling. What kind of guy are you? And like when, you, when you're telling a, <laughs> when you're, <t> who <laughs> are you? When you're doing like a trilogy of movies people are looking at it as like a, a sort of three at one sort of three act story where the middle chapter or act has to be like the darkest chapter. Right. 
So like the, the you know, your low point is going to be in the middle movie, in, in the middle movie of like a trilogy of movies. And so people look at The Last Jedi and like they just they justify all the decisions made in The Last Jedi just by the fact like, oh, well, it's supposed to be dark. Like The Empire Strikes Back was dark. And it's like, well, there's there's a good way and bad way of doing that. I, I'm speaking of uh, as somebody who initially liked The Last Jedi, and then I, I listen to you guys talk about it. I'm just like, oh, yeah, you guys make a lot of good points. I mean, maybe this, um, this movie isn't... Does that, that mean you're great, a victim like, of, like, the alt-right pipeline or something? You've been <laughs> radicalized. <laughs> I was about to say, you know, don't worry, John, there's, like, a there's a guy out there, I think, who made, like, a seven-hour video about how much he didn't like it. You can probably check that out, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Just, uh, <laughs> curious, yeah. Full suggestion. But, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, that one, that is the film that has been talked about the most uh, in EFAP sort of history, because it's just the one, it's the baby. It's the one that changed everything for a lot of people. And right. uh, honestly, would be seen as the flashpoint for the current place that not only, um, I guess, sort of Star Wars and Lucasfilm are at, but also to an extent where Disney is at, and then also to an extent where Hollywood's at. You can definitely uh, place the pinpoint further back. In fact, it would probably be more accurate to place it further back. But it seems to be the one that uh, everyone sort of sees as like, holy shit, it feels like there was a before and after with that film. Which is kind right. of interesting to think about. Culturally. Like in terms of perception? Like people initially yeah, liked it? And it then... I think before TLJ, there was much more of a willingness to be like, listen, they're the ones making the films, so we understand that they're the ones that know what they're doing, and we're the ones that watch them. So we go, hey, you know, that that, that was kind of fun. Uh, even the worst films would be like, eh, 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 eh. but um, I mean, a lot of people said that they fucking, you know, essentially vomited when they saw TFA. So I'm not going to speak for everybody. I'm just saying there was a general cultural shift. I vomited I think... when I saw TLJ. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of people who, and this, by the way, this phenomenon was, I never saw it more passionately than with the finale for Game of Thrones season eight. But there was a lot with TLJ who I think legit saw the film and were like, that was, eh. and then they went to the internet being like, is someone talking about this that captures my point of view? And then a lot of careers were born. Including my own. And EFAP and Mahler, yeah. Hello. We're here because Hello. of you, Ryan. Thank you so much for making that shit movie. <laughs> but I mean, kind of a dick for killing Star Wars, but I mean... Uh, yeah, well, yeah, he'd take a good with a bad. <laughs> Didn't Next have to go that far. Half yeah. a dozen in the other, as they say. Anyway, I can continue with his assessment of The Force Awakens. Please do. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> so, well, we're halfway. <laughs> He says, the practical creatures, animatronics, and use of real locations and sets make the world feel lived in and realistic, adding to the grounded and tortured new characters. Kylo Ren in particular is captivating, enhanced by an impressive performance by Adam Driver. John Boyega is endlessly charismatic as Finn, but the real discovery is Daisy Ridley, who plays one of the best film heroes in recent memory. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> God damn, really? He said that? He said that. Wow, all right. I wonder if he would say that today. You know Probably what? Probably not. I think he wouldn't, because nope. I get the impression this is, as we've said before, this is all very much just, he, put, he licks the finger, puts it up in the air, and says, uh, Force Awakens is great. Oh, yeah. And then a few he years later, he's like, Force Awakens is good, and if he put his finger up now, he'd be like, Force Awakens is, is a mixed bag. Oh, oh nope. bye. <laughs> Wait, the reason I was going to pick them on because I, I want to know what like about John. the Force Awakens. John, even if you John. like that film, what is the pressing need to watch the Force Awakens before you die, as opposed to the other Star Wars films that came out in the two? Because why so, die happy? Well, that's true, but they, on an artist, <laughs> like, adding to the galaxy, whatever it is, like, why wouldn't you pick? I don't know. Even with all its flaws, something like Revenge of the Sith so is he, a more like Star Wars. He and Star Wars is a direct product of RLM. And in the sense that he is 100% in line with them on the prequels, he would never express a different opinion. Um, I don't mean that to be critical of either of them necessarily. What I'm trying to s explain is he would you never see the prequels on this list. Um, he considers it part of his identity to be that he can hate on it. I think we should probably cover his prequel reviews at some point, because that could be pretty funny. But he, oh, um, yeah, I could. You know, like, all of us, I assume, here agree that all three prequels beat out The Force Awakens. Um, yep. In fact, they all beat out the sequels, mm -hmm. just in general. They beat out the prequel yes. trilogy. Mm -hmm. they're, so, they're bad movies, but they, they yeah. definitely beat out the sequels. Well, the sequels trilogy. are impressive in, in how they were written. In any case, um, yeah, he, he, he actually makes vague reference uh, to, to what you're, you're talking about. If I continue here, he's, he's, he's going to come up. 
He says, um, Ridley, as in Daisy Ridley's work here, is so real that I'm itching to see what else she can do. Another great addition was Oscar Isaac as Poe, a cunning pilot and a very fun character. Cunning? I just find mm -hmm. it funny. He's a very fun is he character. Cunning? <laughs> Not really. Very fun character. I mean, you know, there's more cunning expressed by um, uh, Finn in, in that Finn. scene. He's the one that kind yeah, of does the work. Yeah, I don't know why he'd... I don't know why he'd... Ex I wonder what he was thinking when he wrote that. Well, he wasn't, but, I mean... Don't know. I mean, he's just not in the movie much. No. <laughs> and there's not... Even with TLJ, which I'm guessing, yeah, it was said it was written, this was written in 2016, so it doesn't even Must have Must have been written before TLJ, yeah. Um, the Force Awakens also breathes... Oh, wait, sorry. While it follows a similar formula laid out in previous films, that's pretty funny, The Force Awakens breathes new life into the franchise with its energy, its humor, its emotion, and above all, characters. Mm. That's really funny. I feel like that statement <laughs> aged so terribly. I think, that, yeah, honestly, is. though, this 100% matches what everyone was saying uh, when Force Awakens came out. This was the take. Mm -hmm. Especially, it does feel like yeah. um, The Force Awakens was kind of the first of what a lot of films uh, were trying to do at that time, which is grab as much of like the iconography that people recognize of whatever franchise you're trying to like reboot or <laughs> retool uh, or continue. But like in terms of the actual substance, it's vacuous. And that like the, this was kind of early on where when you see all of the visuals of all of like, oh, wow, look at the, you know, look at the tie fighters and look at the x-wings and look at like the droids and everything isn't that cool that now that doesn't really work as much anymore people are like oh well yeah i mean yeah you can do that you can make things look like things i recognize but it's almost like now you're kind of sitting there worried like oh shit are you actually gonna is it gonna be written well yeah. is it gonna do yeah. a service to the series that i like or is it just gonna look like the thing that i like you know like it's the fucking halo right that's like that was what yeah. that was I mean, like, ctfa annoyed me coming out of the cinema for that reason because i came out thinking god i really hope the next one isn't just empire but bigger um but i could kind of understand that the rationalization was well you know it's been a long time since star wars and the prequels weren't universally loved so you can understand from the studio perspective you're going to do mm. something that's familiar to everyone get bums back on seats restore faith in franchise and progress from that point i didn't like the film but i could kind of understand the decision making process i thought and then, obviously, the rest happened, um, and it got much, much worse. But I saw yeah, the, 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 now also, like everyone else, as you say, everyone else is also playing so much on just member berry iconography stuff that it ceases to like be a strategic thing, and it's more just laziness at that point. I saw someone saying, I watched it in a video, and I was kind of convinced that uh, Tron Legacy is The Force Awakens before The Force Awakens. And I saw them oh. compare them, and I was like, oh, shit, that's kind of true, like in terms of the approach they made the film with. Um, okay. Yeah, because that film did leads. Tron Legacy sort of regurgitate what the first Tron did. Is it, that what they're kind of saying? It was. Um, that was supposed to be at least from the evidence they presented in the video. This is so long ago that I watched this. Um, they tried to argue in the video that it was Disney's attempt at making what Force Awakens ended up being before that, as in like this was going to launch a big franchise, but it didn't do well, and they were like, "Oh fuck, abandon ship quickly, so that we can move on to the uh, next." Right. I think I understand what you mean right. because like Tron Legacy led with a lot of like it led with the bikes. The bikes happened really early on because that's yeah. like the thing that everybody remembers. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say that Tron <laughs> Legacy is a cool. more imaginative film than TFA. Tron Legacy took more risks conceptually. I remember, what I remember liking it. it. I don't remember I like yeah. it stands like, up, but um, the style was really cool. It's an cool. interesting looking film. The style was definitely cool, but like they introduced a bunch of like new conceptual stuff into, I think we're going to call it the Tronverse or something, but you, know, you have the, the ISO creatures, like sentient mm. digital things, which they didn't do anything with because they were wiped out, but it took more imaginative leaps with its story than TFA did, certainly. Um, I would say so, yeah. Doth um, Punk, man. That was a great soundtrack. That was, oh, the soundtrack was really cool. Nice soundtrack. Yeah. So, uh, yes, what I was getting at in terms of what he implies, this is the end of the paragraph. He says, It was so refreshing to once again see a Star Wars movie with entertaining, likable characters. So, obviously... Name one. Well, he, he would probably fucking name the whole cast. <laughs> what, what he's saying, of course, is that the prequels had no entertaining or likable characters. Which is just not oh, true. Yeah, Come that's on. Not that's not true. true. That's not fucking... true. Obi-Wan is hilarious. I think... I think fucking Jar Jar was entertaining. Palpatine he was, he was really stupid as shit. Like, <laughs> Palpatine, buddy. Absolutely He's Palpatine, awesome. yes. I mean, Count Yoda's Dooku. Cool. Count Dooku. Um, good old General Grievous was cool. Like, it's 
Yeah, that's at just, least there were superficially cool things what, about it, even if well, you drew the line what there. The, what, yeah, what, 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 what the prequels had that the sequels absolutely do not is that almost everyone who saw them would be like, you know, it's kind of shitty, but I'd like to see more of Count Dooku. I'd like to see more of General Grievous. I'd like to see more of Darth Maul. I'd like to see more of the Clone Wars. But like, good. <laughs> Can you give me that? Because this looks interesting. Yeah, Nobody I'm says I gotta see another Poe Dameron adventure. Give me that, please. I think, um, <laughs> the prequels presented much more fertile ground for, like, in terms of world building. It's really fertile ground. There's like a lot of things that you can do in that world that they did do through video games and stuff. It was really cool. Whereas the sequel era is like it's salted. It's it's really hard to grow anything out of that era. You yeah. Know? They're almost like polar opposites for world building. If you think of the, the opening of Phantom Menace, which you, know, you don't ever expect the Star Wars opening crawl to start talking about tax disputes and trade mm. reform laws and all the rest of that stuff. But it, it's laying groundwork that allows the rest of the expanded universe from that point to pick up and tell more interesting stories with the world that's being created. And then TFA comes along and then TLJ after it. And it's just like, yeah, there was a new Republic for a bit. And it's, um, it's kind of gone. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna and say... the First Order is just the Empire again now. They've been around, apparently. Oh, absolutely. What happened when you really consider Force Awakens is it shrunk the universe hardcore. The problem with the prequels was like, look at all of this galaxy-wide conflict. Like, whoa! And then it's like, you can find out more in books, or maybe in, uh, you know, uh, third-party elements or shows. But uh, the movies themselves are not going to cover a huge amount of what's going on there. But you'll keep, you'll see it out the window, and it'll look cool. And you're like, oh, that does look cool. Um, the sequels were like, Everything mostly takes place, like, on a selection of... What was TLJ covered? Like, one, two planets? Maybe? Um, I, well, I guess you'd have three, right, with Kanto. Oh, four. It was four, Also, well, wait, th th uh, let me be clear, right? So the the chase happens from the original planet that we don't even get to... Like, it's, it's, it's a whatever. It's like a port. It's barely anything. Then yeah. you have Kanto Bite and the side story that most people think should be cut. Then, then you, you have got, uh, Crate, which planet. is the most important planet, but it's mainly a battle scene, Crate. It's not like... Yeah. Do, you, do you understand what I'm getting at? Like, it doesn't oh, well, yeah. feel... Compared to, like, for instance, in Andor, where it's like, oh, Ferrex, you've got, like, a really, really comprehensive view yeah. of that place, you know? Um, even, like, Morlana 1, which you only see a couple of times, you get a real sense of place from that one, too. Well, and um, to go back to the OT, right? Aldani, Think of Bespin. Same deal. Bespin occupies what? Like, the third act? A bit of the second act? But, like, you get to see life yeah. on Bespin, then it becomes very relevant plot-wise, and then like, an escape scene is in Bespin. Like, Everyone knows Bespin. I mean, like, if I, <laughs> most people know Crake because it's like a meme planet in terms of like, all the shit that oh, happened yeah. on there, like the love thing, d kill what you, protect well, what you love, don't kill what you hate, whatever. Star Wars has to keep going back to Tatooine. Yeah. Um, why does it keep going back? It's like, because well, you get a really good sense of place in a, a New Hope of what Tatooine is. And then, and they don't know how to build worlds, or at least most of these projects don't seem to be able to build them. Like, how much do we know about that planet that they went to in Ahsoka for that episode? You know, the, the shipbuilding planet that they <laughs> Which went one? to? Oh, oh Corellia. Yeah. Was that Corellia? Yeah. We, we, we yeah, saw Corellia in the um, solo movie as well. You can pick up a oh, lot of stuff about oh, Corellia, yeah, but you wouldn't right, get it from Ahsoka we did, itself. That's right, I forgot. Um, what, about the, what about the planet with the red trees? What do we learn about that place? <laughs> Uh, yes. uh the 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 that's planet where the whales stuff. come or whatever yeah that's right the star Wars. nothing nothing that's about right. the life uh, there only it's a forest mm -hmm. how much did we learn about um about the planet that they went to get sabine from the one with the city there that had uh that had um mr krabs how much <laughs> do we know about that place yeah well, i mean that's probably the most we know about any this... planet she she lives very far away from the city in a tower until the tower is closer well, I don't know. It's just you know Aldani and uh and Andor. We 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 got like a good sense of a very specific part of that mm -hmm. planet and like the interactions between the Empire and the local people there, as well as the strategic no. importance of that planet in the uh in the Empire. And that's like three episodes, and we'll probably never go there again. It can, it's yeah, it's pretty funny when you compare it to what were the planets in uh, the Rise of Skywalker? What were they? Uh, Mustafar, one of the earlier ones that nobody knew that was Mustafar. It have oh, trees on it what? somehow. Oh, it's that where, one it's where, where Kylo was, was to collect people, right? Darth Vader's yeah. uh, waypoint finder or whatever the fuck it was. Is that the scene oh, when he moonwalks? Yeah. Yes, that is the moonwalking it scene. It is, yeah. He does! I forgot about that. And there's that. people to this day sharing that as an you awesome think if he move. he was gonna moonwalk, it'd be So unimportant. fucking stupid, why would you <laughs> moonwalk? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's the, the, that, 
that's a different song. Let's beat it. Okay. I just wanted to do a Michael Jackson reference. He's, he's, had, <laughs> he's had alcohol rags. Let him. Let no, him that's be. good. That's good. Okay. That's good. I would have um, done the one sober as well. Fuck you. <laughs> no, Star Wars is good. I like Star Wars. <laughs> You're a Star sober. Wars. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean in, that, Rex. In Tros, there's, nice. there's the desert planet with the happy aliens. Oh, yes. The one where they find uh, Lando. <laughs> Well, Lando they finds fly them. Now. Oh my god, yeah, the They Fly Now planet. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure, I mean, and I remember there was Hexagol, a time... Which has a planet surface which is principally made up of Star Destroyers. <laughs> yes, even under the foundations of the planet are constructed of Star Destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, hell. Alright, we're getting it's through Star it. Destroyers all the way down. We got one paragraph left. It was okay. wonderful okay. seeing Han Solo grace the screen again, and the film wisely makes use of him and the rest of the original cast, teasing us in enticing ways. By killing him. <laughs> <laughs> why That's did he, enticing. Why did he it's enticing it to him because he wanted to die. Yeah, there you go. that makes sense. The Force Awakens leaves us wanting more, which is exactly what it should do. Impressive, Abrams. Most impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure J.J. Abrams will come out eventually and say that Star Wars was a huge mistake. That he shouldn't have taken that job. <laughs> and it will well, be very funny and we will all laugh. I don't, I don't even dislike him that much, but it's just such shallow writing. I kind of like do. that, <laughs> what you, you just fair, fair, fair enough. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, Mahler doesn't give you Taika Waititi vibes. I was, I was never really that sore him, but like when, like I, him. when I when I when I hear I, sen I know, sentences like that, it's just like you are just writing fluff, like surface fluff to sort of distract people to avoid actually diving into what actually makes this film good or bad or, or whatever, right? Like, it's just, it's a yeah. dodge. Well, that, so that bugs me about it. It's actually interesting to bring up Tycho because um, part of what makes me really annoyed is that I know he's capable of really good shit, but he's, like, yeah. lazy and fucking around because he's doing the thing of being like, Star Wars, that's not art. I'll get the money. Marvel, that's not art, whatever. Ooh, ooh, I can make my own <laughs> movie where I care and, like, do blah, blah, blah. And it's like, fuck you, man. Why can't you, like, put more effort in and actually, like, especially taking care of something that people care about? That would be nice. And then, you know, J.J. Abrams is not quite the same beast. This is a guy who just, looking back on his whole career, I'm starting to wonder. Because it was funny, Alias comes up every once in a while. And it's like, what's Alias about? And it's like, well, there is a series of magical items that belong to someone who built them years ago that no one understands what they do or what they're going to lead to. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, that's, that's like, it's oh, like pure magical idea. boxes. And it's like, what's Lost primarily about? It's like an island that no one knows why it's here, what it does ultimately, and that it's mysterious and has loads of unanswered questions about who's there, what's happening. It's notoriously known as one of the worst ending like, seasons of television ever. It's like, fuck. Like, he really is... <laughs> Consistent. Um, the the I think the wildest one was rewatching Mission Impossible Three, yeah. where the the item in that film that's so important that everyone's after and all doing kinds of things that nobody knows what it actually does. It's like fucking hell. He keeps mm -hmm. doing it. How can he keep getting away <laughs> with it? And I guess that's the thing is that with the rise of Skywalker, he was forced to answer questions that he raised, as well yes. as follow a story that ignored a lot of his material, and then it just revealed what kind of storyteller he is, which is not one. He's he can't do not it. One. He just can't do it. He can't I mean if you can't end a story, like I mean what are you? You know, like as a storyteller, if you can't complete stories, if you can only start them and then pass them to other people I have to sort through your mess. Well and so what's funny you? is we do the B because I just wanted to that you can't keep getting away with it. But the thing is, he didn't. He didn't get away with no, it this time. He's not no. getting away I, I guess he got away with it in terms of making a lot of fucking money. Yeah. But um, it looks like he's not making anything anymore. He He's had that thing, that, like, deal with Warner Brothers for, like, the last four years to make a bunch of DC stuff, and he hasn't made anything. Nothing's materialized. And I guess he'll probably walk away from that deal with a bunch of money, but I doubt he'll get another one like that again. Mm. <laughs> Which, um, right. yeah, I guess that's, you know... Who's that next? Happened mentally. Um... Uh, I'm just taking a look at the list here to see what, what does he say for, what does he say about No Country for Old Men? <laughs> no, <laughs> boy. did you pick that? I want to know. <laughs> I haven't seen it in of, a long time, but I'm scared. Really, right, wait, what year did that, that come out? Was, uh, that was 2007. Okie dokie. I thought it would be much older, to be honest. I don't know why. 
Such a fucking good movie. Let's see what I he says. I love that movie, so I want to see what he has to say. Unfortunately for No Country for Old Men, it only earned one page from Mr. Stuckman, not two. He only... Wow. So he had more to say about The Force Awakens than No Country for Old Men. Dude, well, he loved The Force Awakens. I, can under, I think I can understand that. There's an uh, element of No Country for Old Men that I would almost want to be kind of brief with it, so that you can... So you kind of go in with a sense of discovering what it's about and trying to say, mm. if that makes sense. I understand sense. what you're saying, Rags. I do understand it, but I don't know if that was his motivation. I wonder if it's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really. yeah, I'm not saying that this is what he did. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, as someone just pointed out, he already had two pages for TFA because someone was just bitching about people hating it, which, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It is, in a meta sense, when you're writing a book of recommendations, really weird to spend most of your reviews saying, like... Fucking people didn't understand this like science or well, was like, 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 oh, yeah. it like you shouldn't be doing that. You should be just like this movie's awesome. Who cares whatever people were saying at the time I wrote this? I'm just saying it's awesome. Anyway, No Country for Old Men, 2007, mm -hmm. director Joel and Ethan Cohen, starring Tommy Lee Jones, Javier Bardem, and Josh Brolin. Studio Miramax Films. The Cohen brothers have always been universally talented. Their understanding of screwball comedy and tense drama has impressed me for years. You may think I've included No Country for Old Men in this book simply out of obligation, yes. As if that's just one of the movies that has to be discussed. You're not going to discuss it, but of course it's on here. <laughs> Discussing is a strong word. <laughs> the thing about it is, there's a lot of movies that I think should have been on this list that haven't made it. And I, I would recognize that just from the fact that I can see uh, certain movies on here that I'm like, how did this even make it on here? Like, um... Or all the, the Fincher movies from 2000 to 2016. Uh, well, so, um, the Social Network was 2010. Um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo would be included in this. Gone Girl would be eligible too, because if The Force Awakens is in that, yeah, Gone he, Girl um, was 2014. He chose Zodiac out of all of them. It's like, Which, okay. um, out of all of them, I would not have chosen Zodiac. I would have uh, chosen, if I had to pick one, it'd be like The Social Network or Gone Girl, if I had to include them from the 2000s. Social Network's my favorite, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure which is my favorite. I fucking love his work, though. It's shit. Um, oh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, but on the contrary, I had a very love-hate relationship with this film at first. Oh, is he going to say the thing that everyone who doesn't like this movie <laughs> says? Oh, he didn't like I didn't the like ending. the ending. Did he not I, like the I don't ending? even know what people said Let, about that, so I'm curious now. Well, so, I mean, to explain what I'm trying to say before we read on, is that everyone who doesn't like No Country for Old Men, the first thing they'll say is, I don't know, that ending wasn't very good. The ending was bad. It was, you know, you set up this whole plot of, like, you know, hero versus villain, and then you have it all end off screen? That's... I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I didn't like that. Really liked it up to then, but didn't like that. That's the thing. That's what everyone says. And, uh, right. well... Let's uh, let's see this. We're done with first paragraph out of three. We're on to the second one now. It's <laughs> <laughs> like it's reviews. It's it's like ugh, so annoying. I came close to hating No Country upon my first viewing. I'm sure the ending had something to do with that, but I also found the film painfully boring. Oh, okay. is this painfully another Blade Runner boring. situation? Blade Runner. Oh no, is it Blade but Runner? But then. I, I watched when it I 17 more it times. times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as weeks went on, I recall not being able to remove the film from my mind. To my surprise, I discovered a desire to watch it again. And eventually I did. You know where that desire came from? Look it online for people who hated it and being like, oh shit, everyone liked it. Fuck. Oh, uh, damn it. Um, <laughs> I can't okay. have my own opinion. What? No. Oh God, it is Blade Runner. Third paragraph. Here we go. With that uh, second viewing and the subsequent watches in future, I began to notice so much that I had missed the first time and grew to deeply respect the filmmaking and the gorgeous cinematography. No country. But he's not normally, you notice. Normally, the gorgeous cinematography is something you notice the but first time, notice you, even if you don't like it. Though, isn't, that's the most notable. Part. Yeah, we're, we're, we're halfway through the paragraph. We're running out of time for him to tell us what's good about the movie. Yeah. Okay, let, let's go with that, and then I'll. I'll... Here we go. Okay, my thoughts. No Country for Old Men is one of those rare films that seems to grow and change every time you watch it. For that mm. reason alone, it deserves to be in this book. Oh, he doesn't even. Cool. So, to, to summarize, he likes his, the movie. The his assessment of No okay. Country for Old Men, just to be quick here, is, is, is that, you know, I didn't like it at first, but then I did. It's good. Yeah, basically, yeah. 
No elaboration, yeah. Like, this should be such an easy thing to fill pages with. So, you could go, and he's like, oh, I watched it for the first time, and I kind of already almost hated it, and I, but then I just thought about it, and uh, I don't know why, and then you, I watched it again, it's like, oh, now I liked it a bit better. Okay, now you tell me why you liked it better. You can just tell me what were your, what was your thought process? That's like an easy thing you can just write. That's like five, six, seven, eight pages you can easily write about that thought process alone. And then at the end you can go like, okay, I started to appreciate what was going on there, and I actually understood what was going on. Like, wh why, why do you keep it so short? I don't well, and, understand. And, and Metal, if you think about it too, right, on rewatches, what changed according to him, what he, what he referenced specifically, was yeah. that um, he began to notice so much, and then he said the filmmaking and cinematography. That's two things. The things that you would almost well, certainly appreciate a good deal of it's the not even first that. It's, time it's, around. Yeah, filmmaking yeah, is fair. way too broad. I don't even know what he's referring to exactly. Filmmaking? That's all of it. And then yeah, cinematography, <laughs> which I think most would argue has been mentioned. That's one of the things you'd pick up first time around compared to a lot of other things. No yeah, mention of the like intentions, the not... writing, the the themes, obviously, the 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 the, re the subversive elements that the Coens are fucking is practically stitched into their artistic merit is that they subvert. That's like their whole thing. If you're going to watch them or Fincher, because we mentioned him recently, you should expect mm. an ending that's going to throw you off. That's what always happens. Yeah, I will say, like, maybe this is partially in Stuckman's defense, but, like, the first time I watched No Country for, for Old Men, I overall liked the movie, but I didn't like the ending. And then, as I rewatched it, now it's one of my favorite movie endings of all time. Because I understand now what it was doing. Sort of at this illustration of so a man who feels so out of place. And uh, he's feels like the, the world is sort of evolving... Without him, he has no guiding marker. He has no mentor. And uh, the, as a cop, it's like crime is evolving to this point where it's just like, I don't even know what to do, how to behave. Yeah, he's used to more. small how town do I effectively... stuff. He's getting this hugely yeah. violent and intricate, like all kinds of insane shit happening. He's not ready for it. It's not the world he belonged to. It's a, it's an amazing film. Uh, uh, honestly, I, I should, we should pray it more when we get the chance on the. Uh, and of course, the subversion of you build up um, Anton as this unstoppable, like almost supernatural force that's pursuing mm. Josh Brolin, and you're so focused on that that it almost makes you forget about the other people who are also looking for the money to where it's like, oh shit, yeah, like he's dead because there were other people who were trying to get him. And of course he is because what chance did he really have of succeeding here when he had this many people gunning for him? Like that's that's a yeah. bold choice. Um, it's very uncommon. It's very subversive. Well, I love the POV um, of um, Tommy Lee Jones' character entering the final battle post-battle. And just exactly. being like, what the fuck has happened here? Jesus, this is insane. How is this even right. happening? I'm not ready for it. Like, all of it comes so into focus. And then, of the course, is changing. the fact that Anton is defeated by bad luck, potentially. Yeah. Potentially defeated by it, because we don't know for sure. But that the person who's been this incredibly calculating operator throughout the whole film, incredibly precise... Seemingly the world's in his like, control yep. almost, but then well, he... yeah, car crash because the world is not in your control. The yeah, world he is ran a stop chaotic sign. and unpredictable. Yeah, so it happens when you're on a stop sign in a suburb, and uh, and it's what just like all of now. that's really cool, <laughs> and that's absolutely elements that rewatching films can be like illuminating. But the problem with yes, it's like if you don't explain what it was that you noticed, why you maybe didn't notice it the first time around, without like the explanation, it just comes across as. Right, it's a movie that you were supposed to like, you didn't like it, and that was, like, untenable. Uh, so you had to keep rewatching it, rewatching it, rewatching it until you could justify to yourself that you liked yeah. it. Because in the absence of any arguments, what am I supposed to conclude about what you actually think about the film? Yeah. I mean, I just had that with The Killer, because we, uh, Mahler and I rewatched it. Because he asked me, what do you like about <laughs> uh, it? And I I did a bit of yeah. the uh, pause every five minutes and talk about it format. Oh yeah, I mean, oh, I, I love that shit. <laughs> because I already liked it a lot, just just on, on it being like a cool action thriller kind of dealio, but I didn't even pick up on all the actual things that are going on. 
and then we went through it again. It's like, oh shit, this is like even better now. <laughs> yeah, that's a because because even with films that you get first time around, rewatching and then seeing all yeah. of the scenes that play out and knowing where it's going to end, yeah. when you can see that guiding, when you can see the direction that's all heading, it'll be like, oh, I, okay, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, wow, yeah, I didn't notice that first time around. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. But again, it's like. What's meaningful is not just saying I rewatched it and I liked it. What's meaningful is I rewatched it and then I noticed this, which uh, explains this or um, emphasizes, strengths and bolsters this mm. element of the plot. No, no, yeah, and then I liked it more. And then it's just, just like, always good to see oh, yeah, that, that it can go both ways. Like rewatching it just gets worse, but there's also movies you rewatch them and it's like, oh, it actually got better now. It's always I nice mean, that, to see. That seems to be yeah. kind of like the way it goes. Is that good films? Yeah. Um, when you notice that it's improving, it's like, oh shit, all right, so, cool, awesome. And then it's not someone like, just mentioned, the right. film is great, but the off-screen stuff still stinks. How would the film not be better if it was not off-screen? So, I think maybe this can be illustrated by, uh, and I guess, spoilers? But since me bringing in uh, Rags and Metal have all completed slash checked out what happens in it, um, God of War Ragnarok Valhalla, uh, we did a stream okay. fully on the entire story for Ragnarok, you can check that out, it's an older EFAP, but... We're probably not going to do a dedicated one to talk about that DLC. However, something that came up, and me and Fringy talked about this offline, so I wouldn't mind making it an online thing now by mentioning it. Uh, when I was completing it, uh, and I think for Fringy too, I'm not sure about Mel, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. Someone in chat suggested, like, wouldn't it have been really cool, slash, depending on what chatter we had, really bad, uh, really good, whatever, to have new Norse Kratos that you're playing fight young OG Kratos as a representative of his life that he's trying to move past, something like that. And um, I think I said on my stream that I trust the people who make this so much that I would have been... Um, the, the spoiler I'm technically delivering here is that you don't fight him. So don't worry too yeah. much about spoilers. I'm not going to... I'm trying to... Actually, no, wait. Uh, mute this for 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 10 minutes, oh god. I want to be free to be able to talk about it, I'm sorry. But So, like, yeah, uh, the, the nature of whether or not he could fight him, I said basically that... Um, it could work, and I trust the people who make this to make it meaningful one way or the other. Um, however, uh, you know, I, I spoke to Fring about it, and I think your reaction was more so like, no, 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 no. I don't think I think we don't want to have them fight. And uh, I'll let you. Do you want to do your reasoning first as to why we wouldn't want yeah. them to fight? So to me, it shows a remarkable amount of restraint to not have them fight because that just seems like the obvious pathway of he is defeating his older self, who, um, and and like removing him from who he is. Whereas really, like, a lot of what Valhalla is presenting is Kratos needs to take on a more broad, all-encompassing perspective on who he used to be, rather than just strictly focusing on all of the obvious mm. bad things that he did and the obvious bad motivations behind it of, like, lust for power um, and ambition informing a lot of his actions when much more so, like, what Tyr is trying to present to him is it's more complicated than that. There, there were things where, like, uh, the one that seemed really stark was, why did you take the deal with Ares? It's like, well, ambition. I wanted to be super duper powerful. It's like, well, what would have happened if the barbarians won? What would have happened if you died? It's like, well, the barbarians would have killed everybody. They yeah. would have, like, overrun Sparta and killed everybody, including his family. Ah, so, like, what is happening there is that you're loading so much of why you didn't like the decision you made uh, based on the consequences of that choice rather than also taking into account whatever merit there may have been to the choice as well. Sure, there might have been ambition, but there was also a desire to save people. You need to, you need to essentially, over the course of, of Valhalla, it's all about trying to more appropriately incorporate his perspective on who his past self was into the way that he moves forward, because his past self is a part of him. It is a part of him, and it informs the choices that he makes, and it's clearly a source of a lot of... um trepidation and concern of taking on the mantle of uh like god of war and becoming like a leader again essentially the same way that he did at the end of the first game and, yeah. god of war and onward um and that what he needs to do is like a kind of like radical self-acceptance of who he was as something that informs the decisions he makes but isn't going to define the decisions that he makes and i think that the idea of well you need to kill your past self you need to like fight him and destroy him would mm. run contrary to the point that is trying to be yeah, built up yeah. over the course of the DLC, which is, he was you, you're not him, but you kind of are. You need to understand that that's who you are, incorporate mm -hmm. it into who you are, uh, and move forward regardless with yeah, like, some amount of hope and optimism yeah, that you don't, you were not going to make the same mistakes again. I think fighting his old self 
would have been more in line with the old Kratos and not the new one. The, yes, I think so. The acceptance yeah. that that he and that old person are not like because I, I I quite find Valhalla so fucking important now to the meta discussion of what uh, God of War as a franchise has become. Like that mm -hmm. DLC basically says like yeah it's it's Norse Kratos and Greek Kratos and the, and the DLC basically says like no they're the same guy. They've just, uh, it's incorporated all of the perspectives he's shared and experienced across all games is all who he is right now. And the, that's yeah. what that, that last monologue, which I recommend everyone check out whether or not you want to play the game fully. <laughs> oh, it's fucking oh, great. Check it out. It's awesome. Um, where he, he, you know, he starts out almost like ashamed and angry at his old self, but he realizes pretty quickly that, uh, and it's through all the things we discover, because one, as was mentioned with, um, the the nature of the de deal he makes with Ares is also how he does like the approach and the perspective he has on his um which which game was it the the second PSP game which is fucking amazing that they incorporate all this shit but um he's got all this he's got something yeah. unresolved with Helios Helios is showing up as a replacement for Mimir and he's making fun of you and you're having a back and forth and it's like this is Valhalla it's very likely a projection of your insecurity related to what you did to Helios, which is rip his fucking head off. And, you know, the mm. game uses the history. It's like, you know, he saved your life and you've had interactions that relate to him that is clearly something unresolved. And Helios uh, says some of the most, like, critical things of Kratos in that DLC. Um, that, again, I recommend everyone play. But the the thing that Tia tells you once you defeat him uh, for that, I think that's the third time, possibly the second time, is that it's like, wait, in that DLC, you you essentially gave your life to restore the sun when it was taken down by the fact that um, uh, Mor Orpheus, I think, kidnapped Helios. Um, I can't remember the exact name, but it's it's kind of a, it's a bit of a goofy plot, what you have to do, but they've contextualized again that's like, wait, yes. but that was really good. And then Kratos is like, yeah, but that was, that was before I ripped off Helios' head. And it's like, well, yeah, but you don't discount that. That's meaningful. That matters. That's something yeah. you did that was really important and really good. Why do you always focus? Why are you always talking about all the horrible things you did? And it's like, well, you, well, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm inclined. Morpheus, sorry, Morbius. <laughs> Morbius. Um, oh, so Morbius I'm very, is unstoppable. I'm very inclined to agree Morbentine. that fighting uh, old Kratos would miss the point. But at the same time, yeah. and this is something that I was talking to Fringy about, was you can contextualize it probably. You need to have it, have it happen relatively early in the DLC, but if you were to fight I, him, and you could even have it be that the more you fight him, the more his health keeps increasing, the more damage he deals, and mm. that you get a chance maybe to end his life, and he like he just you know poofs into a, an existence, and then Tyr is like, is this what you want? Like, what do you? Mm. Why is this even happening? You know, and it can be the opening to understanding something, which is you don't want to fight him, a... you don't want to defeat or destroy him, you want to understand him, what he's about, what it, you know. It would yeah. only ever be contextualized as a mistake. I'm having a big old brain blast, though, because if you are... <laughs> the thing with Valhalla, it's like you said with Helios. It's not actually Helios. It's Kratos' perception of Helios. Yeah, what, what he would Helios say to him, him when he would exactly. be here right now, yeah. But but mm. not but not necessarily a true reflection. Well, yeah, but it's still notable that that's, that's where when. the harshest criticism comes from, is his uh, assessment. Yeah. His... Well, which basically so, is from himself. Yeah. If you think the reason it, why he, I'm Helios is the way. talking head for that, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Is that if they wanted to have it be that you fought and killed Kratos, old Kratos, it would be on the premise that you're destroying a conception of him that you have in your mind that is not an accurate representation of who that guy was. That could be like a way that I could see them contextualizing it as like, this is who you think he is, not who yeah. he actually is. That could be like one angle that you could go with. But like personally, I, I do really like the idea of not fighting him. I think it shows a remarkable amount of restraint. Because could you imagine how fucking hyped that would be? Yeah. Just like seeing old Kratos getting out of his chair, pulling yeah. out his blades, like the blades of chaos, and then the music. Well, and in the middle up. of the fight, he oh, runs off to open music? a chest in the same style as he does in Greek, and yeah. like all those little health blobs yeah. come out. <laughs> I mean, I'd love that, but man, wouldn't be no. as, as impactful. There's so many things in the in, in this DLC where it's like, oh, do you remember these meme scenes that you all laugh about where you press circle <laughs> to abandon your daughter? Yeah, that's like actually meaningful now and emotional. It's like, what? Yeah, and for the that's record, crazy. the argument is dead that uh, the, Gre yeah. the Greek games are disrespected by the Norse ones. It's over. Yeah, um, absolutely yeah. not. The Valhalla game oh, has basically said that the Greek games are misunderstood and are awesome. As, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, that's pretty much what it says. And just how it ends as well, like, if you, if you compare how old Kratos, like, Greek Kratos and 
quotations, sitting in the in the throne when he gets in there, and then the current Kratos like sits in there like with confidence because the old Kratos is just like they're bored, it's like oh, I don't actually want to be here, and then the the when when you get in that in that chair, he's like sitting there with like a with like a posture and meaning. It's like you know what I actually kind of want to sit here for a while. Like this is this There's might be for me though. actually. With it's like, now, well, and we've said so I don't, I don't see how you do God of War anymore without Mamiya. <laughs> like no, I want to, I want to see Mamiya in Egypt talking to Anubis. I oh yes. see, yeah, I see what it looks like when Mamiya is in an environment that he's not so familiar with. Yes, and so the uh, this this I remember there's a video that even Synthetic Man said was like really good, which was the it was always deep, you cowards or whatever. I think that's the title of it, and it's like as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, Valhalla has basically come full circle that uh, we're not ignoring. They did the thing that, um, it's like the positive version of what the sequels were doing, where they were like, stay away from the prequels, they're embarrassing. A lot of people took that from 2018. It's like, they didn't even mention the Greek era, really. There's only a couple of references. And it's like, no, it's just representative of how much Kratos has ran away and ignored and tried to yeah. become a new guy. But by the time you hit the end of Valhalla, the lesson is like to incorporate it, to understand that you were not a monster. It was not that simple. And it's really cool to have Tia be the one that, that sort of facilitates all this change and introspection because a lot of people said, like, it's kind of unfortunate we didn't get the God of War from the Norse era to have his sort of say and his impact on the story. <laughs> but now we do. do we get him? We get to fight him with, like, Aztec, Egyptian, yeah. and Japanese <laughs> Like, weapons. all these different weapons. Oh, so cool, dude. <laughs> all of his travel, because that's a possibility. What if it is, like, Kratos, Mimir, and Tia? Tia is the guide since he went to different realms and interacted with different pantheons as part of attempts to rehabilitate yeah. Kratos' reputation, because what if the perspective in Egypt is, Kratos didn't save the Norse mythology, he killed Odin and usurped his authority, and yeah. took it over for himself, because that's what Kratos does, he's a destroyer. Yeah, it it kind of, it does look bad from, from the outside. <laughs> it's... Exactly, it does look bad from the outside, and that's a good way to try and create more conflict. Maybe you have yeah. a couple of pantheons teaming up, like, dude, we gotta stop this guy. Yeah, like, this guy's going like, crazy now over there. He's gonna come over to Egypt and ruin everything too. So that's it's our so review good. of No and Country for Old Men. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> free DLC. Free. It's free, guys. It's and free. it took me like eight God, hours. I fucking to love it. God of War. It's, just, it's, it's so my good. Favorite. I love it's it. It's pretty dude. good. <laughs> Man, give me more God of War merch. So, like in general. A good string of video games. Yeah, they're fun. I believe we have done myself, Metal, uh, Rags and Fringy. Rags that? and me. So, oh, boy. J Longbone, yeah, Little Longbone, Platoon, and John. John. <sighs> Any one of you three want to pick the next one? Oh, by the way, Chad, you're free to free to come back now. We're done with the, the yeah. Spoiler over. <laughs> because Efep hasn't spent enough time on this recently, and I want to find out how vapid he is on the subject. How about Return of the King? Ooh. Okay. Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. choice. Will he say something yep. like it? Brilliantly caps off a brilliant film trilogy <laughs> and a good the film that is good. Made me feel emotions. Oh, only one page for Return of the King. Oh shit! It is one of those how things. It's so then. long. How? It's about it. He's going to talk about the trilogy as well, probably. Right? I don't know. All right, here we go. Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King, two thousand three. Oh, you're going to say Gollum. Sometimes when <laughs> you say that, and you say the Lord of the Rings, right, that's like what we get to Gollum. Okay. How are you trauma. traumatized by Gollum? You only had to. You watch didn't even us. have to play it, right? <laughs> <laughs> like when my friend is suffering in the next room, and I hear the screams, that gives me trauma. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> Fucking Gollum, dude. <laughs> Director Peter Jackson, starring Elijah Wood, Ian McKellen, and Liv Tyler. Oh, that's the three? Okay. That's a strange... I mean, that, it's not a lie, it's just <laughs> an odd choice. I mean, you'd think Vigo would make it to the third credit, wouldn't you? Okay. The John Wick Vigo? Not that Vigo, no. Oh, okay. Studio just, just Wingnut checking. Films. The word epic, overused as the term may be, was invented to describe movies like The Return of the King. Oh, sorry, he put Return of the King here. He didn't put the there in there. Damn. Um, and it's even in, um, in italics to represent its uh, movie title. Whoops. Italian. Movie Every title. shot in Peter Jackson's magnificent finale to his beloved Lord of the Rings trilogy reflects a perfect bond between filmmaker and source material. Somehow, mm -hmm. a movie over three hours long. Is that tears by? Okay. Tears uh, by. 
That's a strength, yeah. I've not heard that. I've heard, it, I've heard it used in the context of, yeah, going past something very quickly, like you're tearing past. Fair enough. Also, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that to describe the film. I don't think it feels like it goes by quickly. I think it feels like it goes by just right. Effectively, you know? yeah. Like you're, you're quick, a part. You know? It makes it feel big is the fact that it moves with its uh, runtime, I would say. I mean, we described it as we were watching it as kind of perfectly paced, but I know a lot of people don't feel that way, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, he liar. says, somehow a movie over three hours long tears by with your sore ass being the only indication of time's passage. What? <laughs> oh, What's what? wrong? Does he, does he have bad chairs? What? That's You're a... so... What a, <laughs> what a terrible return of the game. <laughs> I think it was trying and to Don't worry, we're only a third of the way through. Run time. Plenty more. <laughs> Condense into paragraph. My ass hurt, weird. but the film was okay. <laughs> I knew it was long because my butt hurt. I was like, "What? Are we describing your your <laughs> experimental college years, or are we talking about a movie?" That's that's weird because I, when, when it wasn't the cinemas, there were still breaks in between movies. At least hmm. for me, I remember there was a break like after like two 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 hours or something. And when you yeah, were told, you just, could just get up. I was just gonna say just like sore go butt jokes. I feel like only apply to theatrical releases. Like if you're streaming something at home or playing it on like mm. you know an extended version DVD or whatever Blu-ray, you can pause it. Right, you can get up, stretch yeah. if you want, and then play it again. So like. I don't know what he's referring to here specifically. Like, it sounds like I missed something. I was just getting some coffee. What? It sounds like I missed a really funny line. Well, well he made a sore you. butt joke, and I don't know if that he's talking about the extended editions or the theatrical editions. Because I, I theatrical. don't think the theatrical edition of Return of the King was three plus hours. Yeah, because he said over three hours long tears by. You'd be saying four hours if it was the the extended. Okay, um, wait. Oh, so okay. what is so the, line? the sentence is? Somehow, a movie over three hours long tears by with your sore ass the only indication of time's passage. <laughs> okay, that's a... Okay. Okay. I think it's the use of ass that really doesn't help. It yeah. feels, like, oddly crude. Oddly, yes. That's the way of um, uh, Fellowship... Also, Go ahead. Just a bit of a brief tangent, but I just realized it's like, oh, he's got no DreamWorks films on his list either. No Shrek. Uh, or Kung Fu Panda. Oh, you'd think Shrek would be on here. Yeah. Omissions. You would think that he's... at least Shrek, if he was going to no, pick one, that at least the anime Shrek ones, though, there. for his animated movies, which, all right. Well, I mean, I think Spirited Away is totally fair to be on the list, too, but I'm surprised that there is no mm. Shrek on there. Anyway, Wait, what, what context are we talking about here? Shrek is too much of a meme. Or... He can't put that on his list. <laughs> oh, just, just like of 50 films from the 2000s to watch. It's like, well, Shrek is. Really oh, great I see. and influential, so like that makes sense to me as one to throw on there. I'd put it on but, my oh list. Well. Yeah, oh well. But I'm not the film connoisseur craftsman yes. that he is. Well, we're learning to become it? one today from this book. It's true, I have much to learn. All right, so Fellowship and Towers are both wondrous achievements, but Return captured the looming sense of dread and finality, at last providing closure to the journey of J.R.R. Tolkien's famous heroes and villains. Wow. So, so I guess Tolkien didn't do it, but the films did. <laughs> 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 All right, then. Right, Tolkien's okay. like, what are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Why'd you say it that way? <laughs> Return. He keeps referring to him just by the. F I guess that's fine. Yeah. Return harnessed a powerful emotional wallop, somehow making every scene feel grander than the last. Is it okay. possible to harness a wallop? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, some countries have actually transitioned to a wallop-based economy. Yeah. Have they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I harness a wallop? <laughs> Google would know. In hindsight, it's amazing that the trilogy turned out as well as it did. Jackson filmed his opus back to back to back, which in the past has proven to be a terrible idea. Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions, anyone? What the hell? Oh, that was after he did that. <laughs> yeah, what? Terrible example. I think that was hardly an equivalent. Why would you say... <sighs> the Matrix okay. was filmed afterward. So there's no precedent. Uh -oh. You can't cite that as a precedent. It happened after he did it. It's a it's a postcedent. <laughs> post yeah. Um wait, remind me, when did Matrix come out? 
Matrix. So Matrix 99? came out in '99, but so Revolutions then, yeah. and, and Reloaded was like 2003. They were right. done after Lord yeah, of the Rings. Yeah, Lord yeah. of the Rings was filmed in 1999 and 2000. So, you know what I mean? How and, are you citing like ah uh, yes, filming back to back is uh, a risky, as demonstrated by a film that came out after you did this. It also yeah, doesn't, it I'm doesn't pre- even pretty sure because um, Reloaded when and Revolutions are both considered bad, while Matrix was filmed on its own, separated from them. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, like That's, these three were filmed point, together, right? so like it doesn't. It doesn't so I'm pretty matches. sure when the when the first Matrix was made, they had no intention at the time of making. Two no, of no, that then, has a definitive because ending. of the success of the first movie, the studio was just like, yeah. let's turn this into a couple sequels at least, right? I suppose the the point would be that citing something that happened afterward as the precedent for why it was risky to shoot Lord of the Rings concurrently. Oh, he explains. Funny. There's one line here to explain what he's discovered through Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions. And that what he he believes, I suppose, that uh, Lord of the Rings is a trilogy avoided. Here it comes. This is the sentence. It's hard right. to correct one's movie's mistakes, or sorry, one movie's mistakes when you're already filming the next one. Um, I mean, in the same sense that it's apparently difficult to fix problems within a film while you're shooting that film. Yeah, that would be the same thing. That make a lot of sense? Not really, because you can just do reshoots. Yeah, all the actual (laughs) difference would be is that it's longer Um, as a process. As much as you can admit, like, well, yeah, but you can't make changes in sort of a retcon way to film one with film two if film two's already been filmed. It's like, well, Well, yeah, but... I guess the counter argument would be that if the film already exists, you can't change that film at all. Well, I suppose the irony is that um, you can go the opposite direction in the, if Lord of the Rings was filmed and then released and then filmed and then released, it might have been that fan reactions to the Fellowship might have damaged Two Towers and Return of the King. You never know. Pressures can go in both directions. That's true. That's totally true. So, um, kind of a silly point. Uh, it kind of depends on the film. Well, and it's like, wait, what are we doing again? It's like, oh, sorry, we're three quarters of the way through a review of The Return of the King. <laughs> and it's talking about how it's it's not necessarily good to film multiple films in a trilogy or, or, or series back yeah, it, to back? He, well, he's almost suggesting that it's bad to do back to back filming, which is like, what? Yeah, Wait, so, I, I'm a little so bit he's talking about the fellowship there. He's trying to make. Sorry, was was he talking about fellowship of the ring there? He was I'm talking, talking about, about the trilogy, the trilogy. Yeah, the whole trilogy. The fact that it was shot concurrently. Yeah, that that was like a, that that was maybe a potentially bad idea. That that if anything, it transcended being shot back to back when that was obviously the the intention. To do it yeah. that way, so that Which it will be really as coherent as I could make it. Is the trusted wisdom at this point? Most people say like we should encourage the filming of like a franchise concurrently, somewhat. If you can, you know, in the uh, in the context yeah. of something like Lord of the Rings, yes, make them together because you know, obviously, what happened with the sequels, right? That was horrendous. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, you, like, on the one hand, he's talking about the perils of filming back to back, but the sequel trilogy, which one of which at least he's praised, um, probably is is all of the perils of not doing it that way. You've got too much time to try and take account of fan criticism, shift directors, shift writing direction. I assume um, that he is not planning to rewatch The Force Awakens again in his entire life, even though he plays uh, it. What? He watches here. it every year with his you know, family. Well, this is a have to watch this is part of a phenomenon that we've commented on, and it both sucks and is awesome. The uh, cultural community aspect, the social aspect of film watching, or rather even media enjoyment or consumption, where. I was saying this before, but it would have been really cool for some of our favorite stuff to have come out at a time more so like this, where we all get to talk about it and make videos on it and have back and forth with everybody and discuss it and stuff. Versus, like, take Lord of the Rings, for example. How fucking cool would it have been? And also painful. You have to wait the whole year for the next one and then talk about it and wait the whole year. You know what I mean? Like, all of us talking about it, um, that would be really cool. But at the same time, it, like, that sort of engagement, I think this is most uh, illustrated by Game of Thrones, I don't know if people saw the videos, but they would go viral a lot of people in a bar. There's a particular bar where everybody would be watching the episodes and they would like there's this big reveal. Like the Red Wedding, I think, is where it first started to get traction. The whole bar is like, oh my god, oh gee. and people are crying and going, Oh, gee, I can't believe this. Blah, blah, blah. And then every season had at least one, but up to like five of those moments, and then that would be shared everywhere. We uh, we've seen it, I mean my video with the Star Wars stuff covered it, this reaction meta where like 
it goes from being a kind of cool thing that we're all sharing to a thing that everyone's pursuing, and a thing that a lot of people convert it into the enjoyment of the thing itself. The problem is, it doesn't age with the thing itself. The thing itself stays the same. You watch that again ten years later and it is what it is. But you now don't have the crowd, the culture, all of the atmosphere that you had when you first saw it. And so a lot of people go, wait a minute. This isn't, this isn't as good as when I first saw it. Damn. It's like, yeah, because a lot of it was you enjoying it with other people, you celebrating it with other people. And I feel like that's what happened with The Force Awakens to a lot of an extent. Certainly happened to Game of Thrones. In retrospect, a lot of people don't have good things to say about anything past season four as a whole. Like, there's, there's highlights, but there's a lot of stuff where people are just like, oh, I remember going nuts. I remember enjoying it a hell of a lot, which was fun. And I was going to say, it would have been cool to have this with films that, like, we adore, like Lord of the Rings. Also, hi, Az. How you doing? <laughs> right. Hey, hey. Yo, just, Az, what's uh, up? We're reading Hello. Chris Duckman's <laughs> reviews of movies. It's been very entertaining and insightful. Apologies yeah. for the, the lateness of the join. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you're gonna have to choose from the list of 50 what you want me to read out. And don't worry if you pick one that we've read already. I'll just redirect We're you. Just well, I can just tell you. you. We've done... You suck. We've done Signs, <laughs> uh, The Force Awakens, uh, No Country for Old Men. What did you choose, Mel? Incredibles. Incredibles. And we're currently on Return of the King. Um, what do I, I just select anything? Well, select one that you would like to hear his opinion on. Something maybe that means something to you in some way. Um, there's there's an IMDb there. link in the in the chat, Aroni. You can you oh. can click on. But yeah, okay. I still I just I stand by the nature that um it's a really cool aspect to share everything with everybody, but at the same time it like completely skews one's view of a thing to the point where later on they're like, wait, why did I feel that way about it? And it's like you forgot you were watching it with a whole bunch of people and that everyone loved it at the time. We mm -hmm. saw this with Marvel um over time. It just like. Every movie that came out, people were going nuts over it, and then like the Half Life decreased and decreased and decreased to the point now where it's gone. Wasn't it um, Love and Thunder that was the first one we noticed? We were Love like, "Whoa, Thunder the switch on that was quick." Uh, yeah, it took, oh, it took yeah, a few yeah. months. Yeah. It took a few months for Moon Knight and Multiverse yeah. of Madness. But Thor: Love and Thunder was like within the week, people were already turned on it. Because the Marvel like... um, train, the Marvel momentum, was going crazy and quick, but then it just died out. Um, we saw it die out over time. But even like Black Widow was like, no, nah, it was awesome. It was great. And it was really cool to see the backstory and that, you know, Scarlett Johansson did a great job and that everyone should check it out. And it's like, what the fuck? No, no it, it was terrible. <laughs> so. It wasn't at all. But uh, it's all stopped now. Like the Marvels? Fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> People <laughs> talked about that for 12 minutes. People decided that was over before it came out, let's be honest. Even yeah. even fucking Marvel decided that was over before it came out. <laughs> that yeah, quote that, came out, right? The ice now. skate quickly over thin ice or whatever. It's also, like it's really magic. hard to do group react content when there's only two people in the cinema for it. So <laughs> it's, it's never going to be asked. Yeah, we made jokes about that. The two people enter and they're like, are you reviewing this for YouTube? It's like, yeah, you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, TikTok. You're yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so let's sit together. You want a beer? <laughs> Woo! Marvels! When we both know they're planning on doing critical reviews anyway, so... And one of them is like, that was awesome. It's like, you're dead to me. So anyway, to continue, the final paragraph of his review of The Return of the King. Yet, by some miracle, Jackson barely missed a step. Return of the King won 11 Oscars, an unprecedented feat for a fantasy blockbuster. Two words that Academy members seem to loathe. To this day, it's one of the highest ranked on IMDb, and Good. it's still visually wow. spectacular 13 years after its release. It is. He didn't say so anything about why it's good. He just said it's good. No, he just said he it's really good. That. Why? Well, because there's four paragraphs, but he spent well, here's two the thing. of them talking about how it shouldn't have been good. <laughs> <laughs> I, but it was. I don't know. I mean, Chris needs to understand that when he makes these lists, that the fact that it's on the list is already the implication it's good, and we should see yeah. it. Yeah. So you don't have to spend all that time in the little tiny blurb uh. you give to just say that. What was the one we read that implied Ooh. that he was talking to someone who'd seen the film? Was it Incredibles? Where he was talking about it as though people had seen it? I think it was. Rags pointed out, he's like, he hasn't even told us what the movie is yet. And it's like, no. It's... Oh, I couldn't remember which film it was, but it's just funny that he does this. Like, It's like a list of movies you know you should see. <laughs> like, what's the point of that? <laughs> Alrighty, God. I suppose uh, next suggestion we can go with uh, J. Longbone or John first, I suppose. Oh, uh, I was going to say The Winter Soldier. Ooh. Mm. 
Sorry, I'm as that's been chosen now. You gotta find something else. I, I, I'm looking. Choosing. I'm looking. I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at the list right now. Winter Soldier. Oh, I'm gonna have more beer. Mm. The soldier of the Winter. I'm not gonna deny the soundtrack's pretty killer. Oh, this the one gets two pages. Well, a page and a bit. Whoa. So, there you go. That's like two and a half paragraphs or something. All right. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Director Anthony and Joe Russo. Starring Chris Evans, Samuel Jackson, Scarlett Johansson, Studio Marvel Enterprises. Marvel um, Enterprises? I think you mean Marvel Studios. Enterprises. I've never heard it said as I've never Marvel heard of Enterprises, Enterprises before, yeah. I, I don't think that it's... Has it ever been called... I thought it was Marvel Entertainment was the company. Marvel that, Enterprises. Maybe he put the wrong word in his book. But, I mean, the studio is Marvel Studios. Um, yeah. And, the, and if he's talking about, like, the distributor, that's Disney. Hmm, okay. Well... I don't know what to tell oh, you. Apparently, oh, okay. So formally, it was called Marvel Enterprises. That's what it used to be called. Oh, I just saw Marvel that. Entertainment what LLC. That, yeah. That's yeah. <clears throat> oh, someone said that's when Paramount was still involved, but this is 2014. So, uh, 2014 was when hmm. it was Disney. I'm pretty sure the Winter Soldier was dis like distributed by Disney. Whoops. Anyway. Here we, uh, let us begin. Growing up, the idea of seeing my comic book heroes on the big screen seemed like a dream. Thanks to the success of films like Iron Man and The Avengers, that dream is a reality. As much as I loved the aforementioned films, though, it was Captain America or the Winter Soldier. Oh no, it says Captain America the Winter Solider. No, <laughs> oh, this is your book. That's oh, the shit. No. Oops, I put up a little red squiggly. No, that's the the red squiggly would have saved you, Chris. <laughs> that that, the red that squiggly. can happen, all right? Oh, the red that squiggly. Can happen. <laughs> That can happen. Typos can we happen. We know it can happen because I just highlighted Take that it happened. Away, yes, we believe the reality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. No. Well, I'll just uh, I'll post it to you Metal guys. Metal Gear Solider. <laughs> Solider. <laughs> you guys, I love that movie, We Were Soliders. It was, uh, it, it was really good. <laughs> Solider Snake. Well, the reason it's called that is because Captain America had to take the Super Solider serum. So. Uh, uh, the Winter Solider. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, though. It's fine. Captain America the Winter Solider has brought... Oh, that brought harsh, unforgiving <laughs> realism to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, that's the intro. Next Iron paragraph. Man was pretty harsh. Cool. Uh, uh, harsh, ready? unforgiving realism to the MCU is what he said? Mm. Yeah, I you know what? I can well, I am fine with yeah, that. It's, I get why he said it, but I do agree that Iron Man already set that. The like, Tony getting his heart blown out was pretty. You know the scene where he's, he's like screaming and the surgery's happening. That that's pretty raw. Oh, and even just uh, when the blood starts raw. to sort of uh, pull into his shirt, you know, like oh shit. Oh, and you know, oh, um, my. I don't know if people talk about it that much, but it's a bit of body horror when he wakes up and he sees that there's like the car battery hooked up to his heart. It's like fuck yeah. hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. In 2012's The Avengers, Chris Evans played the powerful super... No fucking Solo, way. Man. Oh, I see. <laughs> what? 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 You can what? see it in the image. You can see it. <laughs> oh, shit, you're right. Not super Solid. No. He didn't, he didn't just, he didn't just okay. copy-paste the title, right. but he did it wrong okay. the first time. It's in the same oh, screen, no. That's, oh, I was no. about to say, I didn't realize oh. I'd put it in the screen cap that you guys can see. Oh, no. Yeah. Embarrassing. no. Oh, no. <laughs> Super solid. Or maybe he types <laughs> in a certain way where his. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to spell words correctly for your book, Chris. But, but have you noticed the title is correct up the top? But yeah, then it is. spelled it wrong twice. <laughs> Leave him alone. Okay. He just wants to make films. Yeah. Okay, typos. <laughs> but he's can, writing a book. Can happen, all right? They can. I th listen, <laughs> okay. The the <laughs> true take is we all films. do typos and we should all be made fun of when it happens. Not That's for how my it book. Works. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rags, if you made a book and you made a typo, I would laugh Rags, at you, but then Rags. I wouldn't consider typos. you any lesser of a person. I would I be fucking. Say. I would commit seppuku. <laughs> I would be so <laughs> ashamed. Sudoku. I would commit so seppuku. I would be so upset. The thing is, is that typos, typos do make their way in, but two of the same one is <laughs> for the title, the title, for the title, title of the movie. For the title of the film is a funny one. Yeah, That's I just a think funny it's one. funny. It's... <laughs> I love that it made it into that image, even though I didn't intend for that at all. <laughs> he plays Legit. the super solid snake. <laughs> 
All right. Liquider, solider, or gasser? What did he mean? Hey. Chris Evans hey. played the powerful super solider from the comics, shattering <laughs> walls, doorways, and bones galore. Eh. Evans That's portrayal. It's, it's the... kind of weird to like present, ah, oh, yeah, Captain America breaking bones. It's like, well, I mean, he's not meant to be presented as like some vicious, like beating the shit out of people to a pulp, you know? It's Captain America. Dude, with that guy yeah, who he yeah. kicks uh, off the boat, mm. that guy's spine. Ooh. Yeah, that one's brutal. His oh, spine yeah. is uh, his spine is not not none, fine. His... Not fine. It's splitting two. Um, oh, oh, I've spotted something. Uh, oh no! I don't want to be the the dick who points it out. So someone else has got to do it. Okay. Is this another okay. typo? <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'll read. The sentence that I have noticed this on, I don't think it'd take you guys more than a second to spot it. I was about to say, Evans' portrayal and the excellent script. Can you spot the problem? Hold well, on, I'm sliding. Give me a second now. Give me a fucking second here. Where, 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 where? Super solid. Evans' portrayal the and the excellent <laughs> script. Where's the issue? At least as far as oh, I'm aware, Evans's, it's an issue. Evans' is. Yeah, you don't put an S Evans after the apostrophe on a, a name Evans that ends with S. Yes. Oh, that, yeah, like, that, one, an that one's actually yes. like Evans. embarrassing. That one's terrible. Just That's really so people bad. at home can see. When you do, yeah, Evans' is, there shouldn't be an S after the apostrophe. No, that you should be going. the apostrophe yes. and that's it. That uh, one's really bad. There's another solid coming up, guys. Oh, sweet! No! <laughs> no! No! Why is the Winter Soldier portion so there horrifically written? Oh, <laughs> you see that? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna leave oh, that shit. open, actually. Okay. Can we officially oh. then, uh, mis misname him Cuckman? <laughs> <laughs> what is he, a cuck to spelling? Like, he doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> Punctuation. Um, the excellent script made Captain America the most interesting Avenger on the team. Okay. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. he's pretty good, but I mean, Iron Man, come on. Iron most Man, interesting? I mean, I, that's an opinion that you I'm can fine have. with it. I'm just saying Iron Man. I'm okay. Yeah. That's, fine. that's a fine opinion. That's a fine uh, opinion. I might be in bamboozled here. So there are a few people saying that it's acceptable to do the, the apostrophe and then the S for a name <clears> that ends. An I've always known it to be no additional S. I've never known it to be that, yeah. You don't want yeah. to people's names, yeah. Generally, <laughs> if you have a proper noun, you don't want to add letters if you can avoid it. It's if the noun's plural or not. So if the noun is plural and ends in S, then you don't put an apostrophe after S. If the noun so is it would be singular, like, if it's multiple families of Jacksons, then it might, do you, you might do that? If it's, if you're, for, yeah, plural of a, um, capitalized or a proper noun that ends in s <clears throat> maybe like i have never known this but i've never right. known it well uh, just FYI, yeah, there's it. probably plenty of mistakes i would have missed because i'm no good with with england but uh the stuff like that I, i'm i'm i raise questions a solid there is easy for me to spot <laughs> yeah especially three times in a row yeah uh, what what i think is um Everyone kind of has the little, their own little quirks while typing because, you know, different keyboards, different fingers, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, something that I do sometimes is the first two letters will be capitalized because I don't let off the shift yeah, quite fast I've enough. That, so yeah. sometimes, sometimes I do that. I've done that right. And it's something I've kind of recognized and I watch out for. Um, but maybe for him, soldier is just one of those words where he hits the keys out of order yeah well i was yeah, going to say that i'm an editor from, guy he's typing too fast from, uh, double checks these kind of things before you yeah. release a book yeah, the red I was yeah. Too, yeah. whenever i type is a good thing from or form uh, sometimes i switch the uh the o and r because yeah. my fingers are oh, yeah. competing with each other but yeah the, the point is you're supposed to find someone to proof this or even a machine should proof it right yeah just do, do spell I'm check or whatever to keep making the same spelling mistake over and over yeah, and over Yeah, that's again weird, man. Them. Three soliders? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> to just, like, an innocuous one. I'm still stuck oh, on the... I'm still You've stuck on the wrong actual... More than the, right. the, the apostrophe S. I have never, ever, ever... I didn't... I've never, ever, 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 ever heard of it, of, like, doing Me that. Me neither, yeah. We were always told um, if it's a... Yeah, if it's a proper noun that ends in S, then you just add the apostrophe. Like, R-A-G-S, apostrophe, if it's something that belongs to me. So, but, um, but it was yeah. R A G. I don't know. Multiple apostrophes S. That's uh, true. The more the merry. The more, the more apostrophes. Merry. The more ownership. Hey, the more fun I have, the more mistakes denotes. there are. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Um, <laughs> we need to read up on that shit because that's just not a thing. And yeah, Germany, like I said, I've never but... known that rule, but fair enough. English is weird. Uh, no, just like the whole ap apostrophe it, with s. We yeah, that's what I mean. Do that. I mean, that, that's a funny one. People will sometimes make that error in speech. Sometimes, like not mm. written, where it's just like Chris Evans is. Like they'll say that. Oh, I see what you well, mean. Yeah, like instead of saying Chris subject. Evans, the instead of Chris Evans. Well, I mean, yeah. On the subject of Marvel films, nobody says Marvel Studios is. They just say Marvel Studios. But True. I'm pretty sure they still do the isn't apostrophe. Marvel Studios is already already a plural noun, so it wouldn't be oh, Studios I, is. Whereas if it's singular, I, th I think no, it's no, permissible no. both oh, ways no. in the case of Evans is. Well, but the singular Marvel Studios is the name, like yeah. Marvel Studios. So when they say Studios is Marvel plural. Studios, but but they're doing the whole possessive. It is Marvel Studios film, right? Like that's the nature of the title. It'll be like you're about to watch Marvel Studios apostrophe like whatever the film is. I'm pretty sure that's how they write it, right? I now mm, I need to know. Like, <laughs> now I think it's, I'm, now but I'm, that I'm, would be I'm correct sure. in that situation because the Marvel Studios is is a collective, like plural noun for the group of studios under Marvel. Well, it's a so the apostrophe doesn't noun. need an S after it because it's already plural, I think. I'm probably butchering this like well, hell. I guess but... no, what I'm confused sure. me is that it's like plural of studios for a company, like one company. Marvel Studios is the company. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like think Fringy's trying company. to say like the company name is that and it's superseding any sense of it's a collective studios mm -hmm. referral name. Yeah. It's just a company, like it's strictly a company name. Um, it could, it, it may not refer to anything well, other than the company, not a selection of studios. I guess kind of like how, because again, like Insomniac Games's Marvel yeah. Spider-Man 2, like, <laughs> you, I imagine you don't that... duplicate the S if it's already there. Yeah, fundamentally. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And the, the, well, this now, is the thing about English. It creates complications when you have rules that have crossover. The one that pissed me off as a kid and maybe really blackpilled me on English was um, my dad told me I before E except after C. And then I mm. encountered yeah. 17 different fucking exceptions. I was like, what the hell rule is this? <laughs> like, what, oh. what's the point? <laughs> it doesn't help me at all. It's more I've of a guideline than a rule. No, it's not. It's not. It's a, 50, it's it's really, a fucking flip it's of the not, coin. <laughs> it's not something that I would ever tell anybody. Um... Because it's well, it's weird uh, to to say as a rule, but yeah, I I wouldn't. I would just say just kind of you, you'll learn over time. You know, Dude, you, you'll recognize which is which. That one, because I'm almost certain I'm dyslexic, was a pain in the ass. Because I was like, that one will help me because I can always rely on it. And then I, I was, people kept telling me like you spelled that wrong. And I was like, but the, but the I before you accept everything. They're like, no, this is the one exception. I was like, one exception, <laughs> million <laughs> exceptions. Um. Man, this is going to drive me insane for the rest of the day. This is going to drive me mad. I, I, I don't know what to think anymore. I feel I like I've been convinced out of something. I, I do feel like him because I've like, I feel like now I'm just going to have to read a bunch about like the use of apostrophes for S. It's you've driven me. I think you're right. Yeah, I, <laughs> it might be technically correct in some grammar book somewhere, but I've always understood it the way that you understand it, and I ain't like fucking yeah. That's why, that's why I highlighted it. I thought that that was definitively a mistake. And when it's surrounded by solidus, <laughs> I was like, well, it's gotta be a mistake. <laughs> are, there more, are, there, are there more soldiers or soliders? There's so more soliders than soldiers. <laughs> oh no! It's three soliders in a row. Chris, no. <clears throat> Anyway, let us continue. No more, man. And I'm not doing this to make fun of him. This is simply the next thing. Winter Solida understood that Cap's <laughs> intense loyalty and unwillingness to betray his team, traits most said made him a boring character, were the qualities that made the event. I'm sorry. Traits most said that made him a boring character. He was awesome in Avengers, okay? And in his own <laughs> yes, movie. He was. Yeah. And, and he said he movie. was the most interesting. So he what only became most? the most interesting in this, right? Did most people think Captain America sucked? Was that a thing? No, no I don't remember it. No, I remember right. people no, quite no, liking no, no, the no. first Captain Hawkeye, America movie. Hawkeye, Hawkeye was like the one it. that people thought was lame. Hawkeye, yeah, he, bought, yeah he got barely anything, and then they overcompensated. I remember that for sure, but I thought most people picked between Thor, Cap, and Iron Man, but the reality was it was yeah. really between Cap and Iron Man. And what's doubly strange about him saying That's that it, yeah. is that it implies that he thinks that Captain America wasn't interesting until Winter Soldier. Because he said that he's the most interesting of the Avengers now, but now he's saying that he wasn't mm. before. So well, this is the movie that made him interesting? The statements he's made here make it seem like he's the one, he's the separate from the herd that that he, 
the other people said that it made him boring. Okay. Mm. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, um, okay. Were the qualities that made The Avengers the best Marvel film to that point? Wait, I'm sorry. Let me reread this. Winter Soldier understood Cap's intense loyalty and unwillingness to betray Solida. his team. Traits the most said made him a boring character. Were the qualities that oh. made The Avengers the best Marvel film to that point? Oh, I see. That he's oh, saying right. that other people are saying that that made him boring, but that's, that's an not interesting... necessarily his perspective. Well, there's also the other interesting comment that he's saying that what made The Avengers the best Marvel film at that point was Cap's loyalty and unwillingness to betray his t unwillingness to betray his team. When did that come up in Avengers? Yeah, um, it's not like no he was ever going to side with. The team. Technically speaking, you could argue he did betray his team, but in a good way when he didn't sign up to the Hydra weapons. Uh, oh, um, yeah, that he betrayed Shield by looking into it when they obviously wanted yeah. to keep it secret. And it, hang on a minute, team, are they, really? he does betray Shield because they're Hydra. Yes. Um, yeah. Exactly. So this isn't even accurate. And also, and also, these weren't the qualities that made the Avengers the best film, as if they were like the defining reason why it was the best film. There were other reasons why the Avengers is the best Marvel film. Oh, up way until that better point. reasons, like the <laughs> writing. Not then Cap, <laughs> Cap was loyal. You know. And well, yeah. So we covered a video that argued Cap was the worst thing about Avengers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's true. We'll see. But Chris disagrees with him because they're saying that those traits made yes. him boring, and that's not what that video said. But they did think that he was not good so i get in, in a sense he's on our team but also not uh to continue it turned these perfect american traits against cap forcing him to watch his once lauded stripes dragged through the mud i don't know about that uh well no because the whole thing with cap in winter soldier is that the world has changed in a way that makes it difficult for him to recognize yeah and i would say the film wrong when he gets the outfit at the end that he's reinforcing that the values of america stand against hydra not that hydra yeah, exactly. put the traits into the mud that's not quite how i would put it well, that's that's really weird it would be more so that he just he's he's forced to deal with questions that were not like, back in World War II, it was easier. It was like, well, yeah, I mean, Hydra, look at them. Like, they're, they're super duper evil. So obviously you got to stop them compared mm -hmm. to the enemies existing within. So, yeah. This right, is yeah. The, the, I, the, the first movie was such a great setup for Winter Soldier because all of a sudden the enemies, the, the line between the good guys and the bad guys is all of a sudden not oh, so I, clear cut. I'll say, I absolutely you know? adore the arc they put him on of making him, like, the government boy, and then he gradually becomes the rebel. Meanwhile, yeah. Yeah. Iron yeah, Man being the, the pure Iron rebel. In the other direction, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, really yeah. cool. Um, though awesome. I will, I have some appreciation for the fact that, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. was not set up to be infected by HYDRA until Winter Soldier. That's something they uh, yeah. threw on. They did that, and it uh, caused problems. And Big problems kind of for Age of Ultron, yeah. I would say that there's problems forever because the MCU has not had like an important military apparatus. Um, yes, yeah, sword has since. not replaced shield at all. Sword is so confusing. Nope. Don't even know what they are really no. at all. Isn't it Saber now as well? Oh, Saber, Saber, is, Saber is a space station. The sword base. is the organization. Yeah. Oh, you'd know that if not you paid confusing. attention to the Marvels, but clearly <laughs> you're not a fan. <laughs> The filmmakers famously approached the material as if they were helming a 1970s spy thriller rather than a big-budget superhero extravaganza. This unique angle elevated the material beyond a series of exciting set pieces. Oh. As if that's not good enough, I guess. <laughs> it's a series of exciting <laughs> side pieces. But that's it. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. Oh, oh God. My goodness, for a second there, I was worried, you know, I was like, oh. Chris, give me more. Give me, it added me a more. layer of political and social depth unseen in previous MCU films. Unseen. All right, calm down. Calm down. Iron Man was. What do you great. think Iron Man was about? Iron Man is a great movie. <laughs> yeah. Iron yeah, Man is a great movie. I feel like that's the thing that needs to be consistently reinforced. Iron Man was great, and really, a lot of the other films in Phase One, at at the worst, they were like fine. Um, yeah. Phase 1 is actually more consistent than any other phase that came since. Even I Phase 3, that, yeah. for whatever highs it had, had a lot of fucking lows. And Phase 2 was bad in general, except for Guardians. Just, just remember that, like, yeah, how <laughs> low stakes things were back then. It was comprehensive. Oh god, I miss it, right? I miss it so much. <laughs> yeah, like, because yeah. in Phase 1 you have How much Iron of the Man, universe is at stake? Oh, it's just, like, the city. Oh, it's like, oh, oh shit. 
That's the yeah. thing. Instead of reducing like, the stakes, they went further. Like multiverse, <laughs> baby. Multiverse, quantum verse, quantum multiverse. If this stone doesn't get retrieved, get yeah. it'll be the end of multiple levels. The god of stories I needs to be incorporated now. The very concept of logic will be torn asunder. The concept of souls will be destroyed. <laughs> Like, oh, never no, forget, there's a celestial or titan, whatever they're called, sticking out of the earth right now and That's never right, mentioned. It's, it's never been heaven. mentioned That's again. That's not true. It's mentioned once in, in She-Hulk. Yeah. She-Hulk has it as a little Easter egg inside. Nobody else That's, has noticed it. You know what? Platoon, That's why they did that. To stop that. people from saying it's never been mentioned. <laughs> now people have to say it's never been addressed properly. Yeah. Can't say oh. it's never been mentioned. They got you there. Do you think someone called it the mullet verse? The mullet verse. Where can I find this mullet verse? <laughs> Give me <laughs> back your head, baby. Right All next right. to the Wumble words. The final paragraph. Oh, if boy. one were to judge Marvel's oh, films solely based on their action sequences, Winter Soldier is their best by far. <laughs> the Highway Assault. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Highway Assault sequence is viscerally thrilling. Notice the real fear on our heroes' faces as they engage the bad guys. Never once do we feel these people are invincible. Notice, notice the bullets don't hit Cap's legs. Well, I was about to say, to didn't um, <laughs> Black Widow as well? Didn't she get? Sh did she get shot or stabbed through the stomach? She got shot. She got, shot. Oh, well, she got shot shoulder? shoulder. Remember. Yeah, yeah. Kind of so the issue that, there uh, wasn't that she survived that hit. It was that it takes ages for her to get medical attention. Remember, she's just bleeding out yeah. as she's been captured. Oh no. <clears throat> the and then they lightsaber through the. Not hold up at all. It's pretty. Yeah, bad. and that's the thing, right? I love it in concept, like the the Nick Fury shit where they try to take him out, but he's a hell of a lot harder to beat than they thought. But man, what what they not only what they do to him should be more than enough. But remember, he gets flipped. And then he takes yeah, his lightsaber yeah. and escapes into the sewer? The Question hole. mark? He digs the hole. <laughs> he digs he the hole through, the like, hole. yeah. And then Winter Soldier doesn't just go after him. It's No, he doesn't. Yeah. He leaves him go. And then also, another one that I've always found really funny. When Winter Soldier catches the shield, what if he just took it? Yep. It's like, mine now! <laughs> and then runs away. <laughs> it, it, honestly, <laughs> Cap would be <laughs> fucked. Yeah. Remember they, 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 they explain to him all of the nature of the plan and then try to nuke him instead of just not explaining the plan and then nuking him? <laughs> and also, if you watch the elevator fight, you slow it down. There's a lot of people just like not really doing yeah, anything. That's... There are yeah. there are bad guys. There are bad guys grappling each other. I don't know if the <laughs> film knows whether everybody in the elevator is on cap is that's against cap it's, it's one of those. It's one of those moments where it's like, <laughs> listen, guys, like we can't have him addressing all of you at the same time. So you need yeah. to pretend as though he's he's hit you, and you're like, you guys oh, need to lose geez, a little yeah. bit. You need to you need to shake and and sort of be hunched over, like, oh. Jeez. And then once he's yeah. free, then he's not fighting you. But uh, uh, it's going to move by so fast, we're going to hope that nobody notices. But yeah. I wouldn't deny it. it's the tone of the of the fights yeah. that I genuinely fucking miss from the MCU. Some of them are like, remember when when Fury rough. gets shot, you feel as a, as a as a viewer like, oh fuck, is Fury dead? And at this point, mm -hmm. you wish that were true, but no. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of it comes down to they act like they're in danger, whereas now they're like making joke. Like it's a fun meme as they're killing all of the bad guys, but none of them are ever going to get them. It's like, yeah, this is kind of like a fun meme that we're having right now. It's not like we're fighting for our lives or anything. Mm. Um, uh. And especially not taking it seriously when people are in danger, because it is one of the biggest problems with a lot of these new superhero films. And it's so funny because it's something that got figured out with the earliest superhero films that got made. Show the hero saving people. You got to show them saving yep. people, regular people. Yeah, dude. Not I remember one when he when he uses energy remember? to save those people that in are running car. into him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the car, yep. and then she runs him like, over. Yeah. She's panicked. Which He's is on a limited energy already, but he takes a little bit of energy, or probably a lot of energy. There's a reason uh, to just. Iron Man them. 1 is like a masterclass, but it's not unique. There's a lot of films that follow no, its sort of no, formula. I mean, Spider-Man saves a bunch of people, Superman saves people, Batman There's probably saves a lot people, but now... that, that is found in Spider-Man 1, Raimi Spider-Man, that matches Iron Man 1, that matches, like, even something like, um... A lot oh, of the like origin films. Superman. Yeah. Even it's back such to a... Superman, who be saving people, you know? You gotta save Superman. people. Not Man of Steel, though. Well, yes, we, uh, me and Mel rewatching. <laughs> um... The Running Man. There's a there's a very straightforward yeah. formula in film, and it's just like 
fuck me. When are they going to get back to that? <laughs> like, running a formula. The movie. It's like, I'm not going to kill all these un unarmed civilians. What are you on about? Yeah, it's when, like, uh, oh, okay. when wow. a team of heroes enters the room with all the bad guys, the first thing they say is, get the people out, get them out get now. The it's like, out. oh, yeah. why'd you care? Just shoot them down, whatever. <laughs> it, it is, it, it's such an easy way to endear you to characters when they're trying to help civilians in danger. Um, yeah. I mean, it's even things like your more gruff characters, like John McClane would be trying to help people, you know, like in a yeah. situation or trying to trying to save them or get them out of harm's way. It's such a basic thing. And when you have stories that just like have wanton disregard for the lives of civilians, it's really uncomfortable. It's just weird and awkward and it just makes it harder to, you gotta show hero saving Yeah, people. it's like, why you don't, you gotta, yeah. that casual uh, intermittent reminder of, oh yeah, that's why I really like this hero. Exactly. And that's yep. why they're doing it in the first place. They're not just here to kill people. They're here trying to save people. I mean, again, it's Avengers, Avengers 2012, right? That'd be a good example of how oh, yeah. to point to your big action climax set in a city filled with civilians. Mm -hmm. Show Cap fighting with aliens to try and save civilians. Like, show well, we... Tony trying to save civilians. Show people saving civilians instead of having them fight in a big empty field where there's nobody around. We talked about uh, Helm's Deep being possibly the best sort of fight sequence in film, and part mm. of it is the mm -hmm. uh, drinker mm. said we're not recording. Uh, a big part of it is understanding everything. It's very easy to follow what happens in Helm's Deep, and I would say right. the Avengers uh, New York battle is very much one of those as well. That we have a character that relates to a particular sort of goal, and uh, each of them are given very strict orders, and then we move from one to the other to the other to the other, and we're keeping it going, and they all follow a set of ups and downs. Uh, that, that, that to me is just like, once you've got that, you'll be fine. Like you, you, you can't score below a fucking five if you've nailed that formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you've nailed your core, so now it's about building on top of that and getting to greatness and beyond. But as I long mean, as that's you've extraction. got the foundation, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Both the extraction uh, movies, they do yeah. pretty darn good job with the uh, action and stuff. They just kind of need to, you know, they, tighten everything up around. Yeah, they go a little. It it's like when he when he's hand holding the minigun, taking down the helicopter. It's like, oh, we're we're delving a little into like absurdity <laughs> now, which is funny. Yeah, to be like, oh, oh, but it's okay in T two. Be like, well, he's a Terminator. <laughs> That's yeah, the right. that. Oh, that would be that would be another example of well, right? Of like they strongly emphasize, hey, you know, Arnie, you can't be shooting people, all right? That's yes, not good. that movie's awesome. We're the good for guys. That. We're the good guys, yeah. so we don't do that. We injure, but we don't kill people. Um, but because it would be really awkward if fucking good guy Arnie go was around just running killing around people. people. Why? Because Why you not? can't. Why? Why can't I? Because you, you just, just can't, can. okay? <laughs> Trust me on this. <laughs> <laughs> and then he shoots uh, the guy in the fucking kneecaps, and he's like, what are you doing? I said, don't kill people. And he's like, he'll live. He'll live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love oh, that movie. So good. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, he spells it right this time. If one were to Ooh. judge Marvel's Whoa. films solely based on their action sequences, Winter Soldier is by far their best. The highway assault sequence is viscerally thrilling. Notice the real fear on our heroes' faces as they engage the bad guys. Never once do we feel these people are invincible, capable of surviving anything. And that's a heck of a trick for a superhero film. That's a, that's, that's a good trick. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, honestly, <laughs> that had slightly more substance than the trick. other ones. Oh, yeah, that's did. strange. Yeah, yeah, there was something there. Good emphasis good on slightly. It seems that's, out of It's almost a five-minute review. Good job. <laughs> what are you up to, Chris? What's going on here? Christopher. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got two remaining, so uh, oh boy. I'll, I'll let John go first. What, what's, uh, what's your choice? Oh, wait, before, we, before you do anything. Oh, you're going you're gonna to check out? Yeah, I'm going to hop out. I figured you uh... wanted to stay for the incredible stuckmanization, but maybe you've, 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 you've overloaded on him. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch the VOD later. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, because I won't be there on the night itself. Happy New Year, because you're gonna. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you, you for having me. Absolutely. Happy New Year to you guys. To the bit. Yeah. later. Bye, Joel. Good hearing from you. Bye. Goodbye. All right, John. What have you got? Which one? I would like to hear Chris's input on American Psycho. Oh. <laughs> which which is a favorite of mine, and a lot of, uh, lot of uh, memes that have a resurgence say... uh, this year. Yes, a, a Psycho, the American Psycho. American Psycho it's... is the kind of movie that I would expect him to put on here and not say anything about. And you'd be like, "Well, this is all of them." And I'd be like, "No, no, no, this one specifically, though." This is this one extra nothing. Yeah, yeah. Extra well, nothing. I'm I'm very curious what Chris would say about this because I think it's Christian Bale is playing a particularly complex character in this movie. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, this is the longest, I think, of all the ones so far. Oh my god. Really? Like five okay. paragraphs. 
So yeah, because like you could say he's somebody who's warped by his upbringing or corporatism or capitalism or whatever, but he's playing a very strange character in this movie. Mm. And also, um, for how deranged and sort of male centric the movie is, it was directed by a woman, Mary Heron. Um, you mean Mary Sue? I think Sue? this is her most. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> but I think most people think that this movie was must have been directed by a man, but it wasn't. And I'm curious if Chris ever brings this up in his review. All right. Um, so, hmm. yeah, please. L- let's hear it. Here we go. American right. Psycho. Quick facts. Director, Mary Harron. Starring Christian Bale, Jared Leto, mm-hmm. Reese Witherspoon. Studio, Edward R. Pressman Productions. So uh, this is how it begins. Cool. Serial killers. Hollywood <laughs> seems obsessed with the subgenre. Films like 1995's Seven explore violent crimes through the eyes of the detectives attempting to solve them. American Psycho provides a refreshing change of pace by placing us in the expensive shoes of Patrick Bateman, a slick-haired, high-powered businessman played to sarcastic brilliance by Christian Bale. He's the type sarcastic who... Sarcastic brilliance. Sarcastic brilliance. Sarcastic brilliance. Sarcastic I mean, it's brilliance. Really, it? Anyway. Yeah, we don't even need to explore means. that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> He's the type who arrogantly flies into a fit of envy at the sight of an associate's extravagant business card. Quote, Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. End quote. A watermark. His business card may be lacking, but Bateman seems to have it all. Riches, status, women. Unfortunately, despite his money and position in life, he can't seem to stop murdering people. He can't right. seem to stop murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> it's so relatable. This is pretty what? normal so far. I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> it's, like, it's a right. living. The power of American Psycho lies in the mystery surrounding Bateman's horrific acts of violence. Are his crimes real? Or is the whole ordeal some terrifying lucid dream existing only in his mind? The film traverses his mental anguish in a way I find most remarkable. And it does so with an impressively wicked sense of humor. Few films can get a laugh out of a bloodied naked man chasing a woman with a chainsaw. Or how about Bateman's compulsion for quoting 80s pop music? Quote, do you like Phil Collins? End quote. We're almost okay. at the end, but uh, this, this is yeah, probably the most the normal thickness. review of a film he's ever written. <laughs> yeah. American Psycho is shot with meticulous attention to detail. Nearly every frame contains something visually arresting. In fact, I think many people overlook the immaculate cinematography when remembering this film. But I can't really blame anyone for that, since the dialogue and performances are both so infectiously endearing. Factor in the biting satire of 80s culture, along with two great supporting turns from Jared Leto and Reese Witherspoon. And you really have no excuse to miss it. Unless, of course, you have to return some videotapes. And that's it. Wah, wah. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> Fuck <That's> off. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Come this on, feels man. like um, he, he saw it for what normal? it presents itself as, as opposed to everything it's about. I thought that was the McDonald's Happy Meal <laughs> review. Of, uh, <laughs> the Happy American Meal Soldier. review is a great way to put it. Because <laughs> uh, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. That's basically everything I remembered of it. And I'm just like, I want to rewatch it now to actually remember what it's actually this about. This is the review you give <laughs> when you've got nothing to say about the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which there's, is in yeah, line there's with everything no said. depth to it. Mm. There's absolutely no insight as to what might he's quoted be, the, at um, the very least, might be driving this character. There's nothing. He's quoted the, the subtle of off-white reviews. coloring quote, which is like the meme. That's like the memeiest meme yeah. from the film. It's like, of course he quoted that. That's like the most normal thing you could do. These yeah. um these reviews to me, they feel like what you could pressure some random passerby into giving you on the street. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't that none of these like feel that. like they come from a professional veteran movie critic. No, uh, the moment is when you walk through the city and someone starts telling you about American Psycho. In yeah, it's like, hey, have you heard about American Psycho? Or, you know, or no, you're standing in line to get movie tickets and the guy <laughs> it's behind you is like, oh, line sure is slow. Have you seen American Psycho? Yeah. 
It, it's no, a, it's, it's so, like it's a so really bad book level. report is what it is. It's just yeah, you're exactly. as best you can. You read the spark notes and you're trying to present like, and you use words like, oh yeah, it was brilliant. It was inspired. It was truly uh, awe-inspiring and, and terrifying and riveting. And you just throw those words in there between just regular factoids and things that you skimmed or breeze past. And it's like, yeah, there you go. You've done it. You've presented me with the most basic surface level interpretation of that film. Dude, I was literally thinking of like that Simpsons where Bart Simpson's doing a, a book report on uh, Treasure Island. He's like, this book was brought to you by the fine people at McGraw Hill. <laughs> like, Come on, dude. Like you're just mentioning scenes like, you know, remember that scene where he has the chainsaw and he cuts people up? And it's just I like, sure do. oh, you mentioned busy. the gory scene in the movie. That the means you really cons. know this movie inside he, he and out. He was too busy like, playing Dash Dingo to write his book review. <laughs> Dash Dingo is pretty fucking good, reference. though. I don't know how many people... Um, yeah, someone Dash said Dingo, he didn't... Nunchucks, pretty great. Someone in chat said casually he didn't write this, though. And I'm just... I don't know if that's said as, like, an insult or whatever, because it says Chris Duckman author. I can't see any other indication that this was written by anybody. But what a weird book mm. to write. Imagine if you did make it so that these were your recommendations, but someone else fills in the reason to see them. But I think I think he wrote it. I don't have. I don't see. I, and then no one can tell the difference. I will say this is absolutely in line with everything I'd expect him to write. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I just you figure that again. You would have way. You you would be like annoyed by the limitations of like Prince as a medium of trying to talk about fifty <laughs> films that you love. You know, and the limitations of how big your book could even be to be distributed that would be confining you rather than, oh, yeah, we'll just, you know, like a, a couple, you know, 100 pages to talk about, like, 50 movies. Where each each movie gets one and a half pages? Like, damn. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Damn. I want to talk, you know, you can talk about any of these movies for, like, you know, an hour easily. More than oh, that. Oh, well, it's us, to be fair. Normal it people can talk <laughs> about these movies for 10 minutes easily. Let's put it that way. Talk about it for 10 minutes, half an hour, you know? Yeah. Well, and part but of the no issue, one. I would say, is that it's not even that he talks about them for a minute. It's, he doesn't talk about them. No, he, he'll no. lay out, like, kind of normal factoids. He, he'll, um... No, I mean, even, even with a minute, you could go into some depth. But he just doesn't. Like, it's, it's what makes it a yeah. kind of sub book report at least in, like every book report i ever had to write usually there would be a question to prompt you like what does x character's decision here represent in terms of like the the broader narrative like you'd, you'd have to say something about someone involved in the film or some aspects of the book something specific that's not just generic adjective this made me feel stuff um and this is who directed it like you have to get a bit more granular than that overview but it's kind of yes. telling as well, like the, the fact that this book is supposed to have been written by celebrated film critic Stuckman, but actually could have been written by pretty much anyone, even people who hadn't really seen the film, um, is yeah, kind of indicative of the overall quality of the review, I think. Yep. Something that I'm noticing as well is that um, most of the time he's not really, most of the time he doesn't like to talk about anything that gets like a little bit more personal in terms of the impact that any given film has on him like with signs he did it but even then like not in a super comprehensive way but like th there's no points in any of these of how this film there's and no human what element about. no human touch exactly like how did this film impact you in terms of what did it make you think about yourself did it change you and the way that you felt about yourself in any particular way like a really great story can where it introduces you to like some new idea or concept or theme that just takes root in your brain and is really hard to dislodge. Because I mean, a lot of the time, that's what you're looking for, right? When you're looking for stories is the ones that really, how, yeah, how to make you feel, you know? How did it make you feel? Yeah, like, convince even me you're a that, human. You feel? You feel? Yeah, because telling us it made you feel nine. is like, well, yeah. Not really enough, though, is it? You True. felt things. You're like, yeah, but what things? Like, you don't why? have to write that your characters were breathing. Like, it's, we, yeah, you assume so. Yeah, and uh. to me, it's just like, it's like a lack of caring about the material. Like, if I, if I was providing um, a review on something like American Psycho, I would want to go into some depth to it. Mm. It's just like, here's what I think is happening here. But there's just like no... Ins incentive incentive on his part to like go into any 
real detail. This makes you wonder what, what a casual conversation with them would be like. It's the just only kind of his, conversation you can have with them. <laughs> talk about like, his favorite movie, and it's like, okay, go on, tell me about your favorite movie. Like, you're buddies with him, you just get into the conversation. Probably the like, probably signs. Signs might be it. the one to actually <laughs> cry out some kind of controversial mm, perspective. Yeah. Because he feels mm -hmm. things passionately about I'm not even. One. I don't even want a controversial thing, I just want him to tell me more. <laughs> Well, like, controversial to him is stuff. normal for us, is kind of what I'm getting at. Giving details of a movie's plot is controversy. Yeah, he's like, whoa, no. I will <laughs> I will tell you what happened to the protagonist in that film. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I, I have a problem with that broadly. Like, I feel like there's this weird conflation between a plot summary and a review in mm -hmm. a, with a lot of, like, YouTubers. And it's just like, come, tell me what you think about it. Like, you know, go... <laughs> dive beneath the surface at least a little bit, you know? Because I can get a plot summary from fucking anywhere. I can get it from the website of the, of the movie, you know? The the Wikipedia, yeah. All these from plots. The yeah. Website, I'm going to wa go watch the movie. The, the people trying to sell you the film will tell you what it's sort of about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Well, that leaves us with one more from Az, whatever he would like to hear. Mm -hmm. I had a look. I was gonna say Casino Royale, mm -hmm. but then I changed my mind. Oh my. And I would like to hear what Stuckwin has to say about Enemy. Ooh, the Villeneuve film. Yes. Well, we could do both, because I'm kind of curious what he'd have to say about the reinvention of uh, James Bond. But why don't we mm. do that last? We'll do Enemy first. Oh, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people here have seen Enemy? I have, I have not seen it. Have. No. All right. Well, as this will be all for you, then you got to tell us how insightful this is. Okay. You so can tell begin. us now if you like, because you don't actually I've need to wait. For <laughs> you could give a good guess right now. Yeah. Enemy was a nice film, and <laughs> nice I thought film. it was nice. That's Calm too much there, information. <laughs> Calm down. I quite liked it, actually. Okay. Here we go. Enemy mystery thriller. Director of Denis Villeneuve, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Mel Melanie, I assume, Laurent, mm -hmm. and Sarah Gadon. Gadon, 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 Gadon. Studio Mechanismo. Mechanismo. Cool. All right. And here's the review. Here we go. That spider. That freaking spider. For a cinephile, there's nothing better than a confusing movie that begs them to hang around underneath the theater marquee grasping at straws to decipher what they just saw. Is that nothing true? nothing better than that? There's <laughs> nothing better than that? I don't know about that. Oh, I don't know. It's, okay. Enemy <laughs> is directed by the immensely gifted Denis Villeneuve, starring Jake Gyllenhaal in a daringly restrained performance. So confounding is Enemy that as of this writing, over 770,000 baffled people have watched my analysis video in which I attempt to explain its hidden meanings. Nice wow, why, why is that in this God. book? Why is that in your book, you fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Over 770,000 people have watched a YouTube video that I made on YouTube. <laughs> Links in the description. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Fucker. After He's initially... Than I imagined. After initially seeing Enemy, I sat mm. in awe at the puzzle pieces the film left scattered across the floor. It was almost as if Villeneuve was taunting me to approach this puzzle, and doing so took two months. Two <laughs> months! This is me reading it, by the way. Even mm. now, as I write this, I'm positive there are still things I've missed. So wait, has he put this in here because he thinks he's the person who cracked the film when no one else did or something? I cracked the code. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, he said a whole load of nothing so far. Yeah, he hasn't so, said anything yeah. yet. We'll get there. Next paragraph. I feel that with a film like this, you'd benefit to know little about the plot, so I won't say much besides the basics. What else do you ever say? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. I mean, you mostly fail about the basics too, so I'm very curious. That's true. Gyllenhaal is convinced he has an identical twin he never knew about and is desperate mm. to meet him. To assume this brief... Wait, that's it? That's no, the sorry, sorry, just the idea of him saying, 
Um, the, he has an identical twin that he never knew about. It's like, duh, of course he never fucking knew about him. Then he wouldn't think he had an identical twin. You just know if he had an identical twin or not. What is the plot yeah. is that he lives with this creepy lookalike, and he grew up with this weirdo in his house that shares his face? <laughs> like, what I, was, I, I, I feel like the I won't say too much is because I, I'm not actually convinced he's seen this film. No. <laughs> what do you mean? He explained it to 770,000 baffled people. He, well, <laughs> oh, that is a quote, by the way. Well, he can add seven to the list. Mm, baffled <laughs> people he's talking to. Okay. That is desperate to, to meet him. To assume this brief synopsis is all enemy has to offer would be tantamount to observing one brick on the Great Wall of China and deciding you've seen enough. What the fuck? <laughs> what, what are you talking like, about, I'm Chris? Just... You know what? I'll I'll reiterate <laughs> what I've said before. Writing is really difficult and most people can't do it worth a damn. <laughs> Okay. Moving on. So, this movie enemy. can actually be researched. Honestly, ask yourself, when's the last time you saw a new film that actually required serious thought? Wait, serious thought? Or do you need to research shit? Make up your mind. Sorry, that's that's like a perplexing The, re thing the reason to I say. stopped there was I was like, surely everyone here takes issue with that that's, statement. That's yeah. stunning yes. that he would say that. That yeah. is stunning. Uh -huh. He's basically just shat on all of the other films in this book. When I say stunning, I mean stunned into silence. Like, I yeah. am stunned yeah. that he would say Same. that. I was like, where do you start with that? So he's basically just made the statement that this is the only film he has seen in recent memory that required serious thought. Yeah, yeah, the other ones didn't require serious thought. They only required unserious Normal. thought. There were little baby thought. movies compared to Enemy. I need to remind you of the films that entered this list that apparently did not require any kind of serious thought. American <laughs> Psycho, Memento, oh. Crouching oh. Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Spirited oh. Away, oh. Signs. Oh. <laughs> he said the <laughs> signs were so important, but apparently not. Fucking hell. Old Boy, no Return of the men. King, No Country for Men, yeah. Incredible, Shaun of the Dead, History of Violence. I don't understand how none of these qualify. Zodiac, why doesn't that qualify? Have you ever taken two months to think about a film or... <laughs> Have I ever taken two months to explain to 770,000 baffled people <laughs> what a film means? That's the yeah, like, it's just, it's... He's a reviewer. This is his job. He's supposed to apply serious thought to no, everything he watches. Only surely. to the films that earn it, which apparently is only Enemy 2013. At least <laughs> one made the Chris Duckman grade. <laughs> one made the cut in the 2000s. Man. Uh... <sighs> I mean, the, the, the spider visual is the lowest hanging fruit that you can grab from that movie. I mean, so yeah, so there are more un aspects about say. that movie than the spider so thing. I, I don't even yeah. know this movie. So All I know now is like, there's a spider and some twin. It's like, oh, right. okay. what? Right. <laughs> so, so, so the, 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 I'm sold. The, um, the, the twin thing a little bit better. Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> a little bit better. Rent, rent a little bit better than Cuckman or Suckman or whatever money is. Whoa. Savage. Uh, he watches a film, and when he's watching the film, he sees an actor in the film that looks identical to him. Oh, okay. And he, he's, he's really kind of uh, curious about this. He's been told to watch this film, you know. And then he gets to the point, and there's like a bell. I think it's a bellhop. It's been a little while since seen Enemy. I think it's a bellhop, and it's, it's Jake Gyllenhaal. And he's, and he's sort of wondering how on earth... Mm -hmm. He could have this 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 actor which looks like him, and so he decides to go out and find the actor, and uh, sort of confront the actor if if they if they are related if they if they do know each other, and then when the actor realizes that he has a double, like uh, Jake in the hall then it leads to a much more interesting path as he tries to exploit this. And, uh, um, I mean, the, then you do go off into massive spoiler territory because it involves the women in their lives and... Yeah, but, but are you saying he, he, he was told to watch a movie where he found, find someone that looks exactly like him? That's already more interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a very interesting to watch the film the premise now. for a movie. Yeah. So, so why not just tell us how you feel about it instead? Yeah. I thought it was no. nice. I thought it was, thought nice, it was nice and nice cool film. and neat. <laughs> 
So to, to add to my point about the spider, the fact that Chris starts his review off of like with uh, that spider, that fucking spider, it's just so cringe. It's like you're taking <laughs> the like lowest the... fucking thing that this John, film has to offer. It was what, a paragraph? And this is your preface for the whole thing. Before he quoted the fucking shit about the business card in American business Psycho. Cards, yeah. Like, Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, mean, I mean, even that, that opening true. is, uh, I think he's he's referencing the very end of the film like the very end seconds of the film uh, i didn't want to say and, it but yeah and so, and so to get to that point you have a whole fucking mm -hmm. film chris before you even you even get to that point yes there is there is uh major spider imagery all throughout the uh film from the from the uh reveal of the you know the tarantula with the woman to the group yeah. of people at the beginning through to the the crashed car and the spider's web, the spider web, which was uh, imagery, which was made out of the destroyed glass. So there, there is uh, there is multiple uh, images of of spider, you know, spider references. Of course, you see the the spider, huge spider walking across the city. Obviously, that is metaphorical as opposed to literal. And so the the end has you know that that's that's. You have to get. Oh I know you're, you're you're balancing between spoiler and not spoiler. Yeah, I, got you. I, I, okay. I see what you're doing. Yeah. You, well, it's you, it's you hard to bring up the spider film. thing without you, spoilers. Yeah, I get you. It's, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a massive character. You know, it's a huge character piece, and it's a huge delve into who you are. You know, who we are. Uh, are we? You know, the, as as humans, as 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 people, as spiders, as spiders, as the Force Awakens. Oh, you as, know what? Sorry, as you went here. Uh, as, as solidus. Too late. You've referenced as it. Uh, I'd like to quote a comment from Chris. One sec uh, about because you brought up Force Awakens. Mm, this this no, helps you as no, contextualize the kind of uh, the kind of caliber we're in for. This this is directly from his assessment of why you should see the Force Awakens. Okay. So here we go. Uh, everyone here has heard this except for you, as get ready. I love this film and honestly feel that in years to come and especially with future releases, it will garner great respect. <laughs> <laughs> that might be my favorite quote other than the <laughs> it's so dumb it's like, how far off the mark could you possibly fire that <laughs> no, <arrow? it's... laughs> narrator he was wrong <laughs> there's not much else to say about that one but I mean oh, either that oh. quote or the one where he says he had a serious thought <laughs> Like, I had a serious like, thought, <laughs> but after just some, <laughs> but after some Tylenol, it, <laughs> I was okay. Oh, oh, oh. Just, anyway, we got one, one paragraph one, left. Okay, let's go. Enemy is part of a dying breed of films, and Villeneuve is clearly content with this. He actually had his cast sign an agreement to avoid discussing the meaning of the spiders that are ever present throughout the film. His intense dedication to his projects, especially Enemy, is remarkably refreshing in today's day and age of movies. Is a movie that begs its audience to lean closer, wondering what exactly they just saw. A film that utilizes every space of the frame to populate the screen with clues and information. If that sounds intriguing to you, then seek out this does. underrated gem. Just mm. be prepared to take notes. Then watch it again and take more notes. Then maybe lay in the fetal position, taking more notes. Oh, that would be <laughs> there's not going to be as revolutionary of a spider movie until Madam Web <sighs> releases. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will replace the spider I fear film. In years to come, Madam Web will be the starting point of a wonderful. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Man, that uh, that was disappointing uh, as well. I guess, well, mm -hmm. I don't know what I expect from the stuck man sometimes. Stuck man Realized. of stuck. I guess man I'm of glad stuck. it was enemy that made him go, wait a minute, you can think about films. And it's like, yes, yes, Chris. <laughs> yes. Was like, really? You can't just, you can think about films. You don't have to just pretend to talk about them on the internet. What the fuck? What? Hey, seven hundred and seventy thousand people is um. You guys want to you hear know, what he has I to say about Casino Royale? Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah, what he has to say about Casino Royale? Just, 
So this is what the whole thing's gonna be. It's just Chris Stockman, like. Yes, we're not. We're gonna have to do another episode with the intention of what we were supposed to do today. <laughs> this is gone. Yeah. This is just too Way funny. I, I was gonna say this is a Chris Stuckman episode, Chris episode now. It's it's been fun. I've enjoyed yeah. this. Um, yeah. I I hadn't read the book outside of the Steins review, but this has been filled with gold. <laughs> it arrived today, so yeah. Yeah, it did arrive today. Uh, so very convenient. Uh, sorry, John, were you about to say something as well about the uh, what's about enemy? No, all I wanted to say there was that uh, I was lukewarm on Chris Stuckman before, but now I'm actually starting to dislike him <laughs> based, on, <laughs> based on this discussion. Just because it's so it's so shallow, so you know, his commentary. You're saying you have that's not all. Been that's a, that's literally it. Oh. <laughs> I've been well, stuck. Been. I... That's a problem. <laughs> I don't know if I think that's a bad thing. I would say being stuck my eyes. <laughs> You've been stuck my eyes. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The Casino Royale 2006 action adventure thriller. Director Martin Campbell, starring Daniel Craig, Ava Green, Mads Mikkelsen, Studio Eon Productions. Mm. The reinvention of a popular franchise, a timeless classic, or in this case, a character has spread mm. through Hollywood like a disease. Why would you say that? No, why would you say oh. disease? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm thoroughly convinced that we'll receive at least one Friday the 13th incarnation every five years, but hear me, studio executives, don't you dare touch Jaws. That's sacred ground. What is happening? What? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I on the wrong page? Like, yeah, what? Have you, can you read I've the right review, please? <laughs> Why would you describe yeah. James Bond as a disease? Like, <laughs> you need someone to be like, uh, Chris, people don't like diseases. <laughs> like, that's, that's oh, yeah. so, so leader three times. <laughs> also, like, Chris, if you're going to be reviewing disease. this entire film inside of one page, maybe get on with it. <laughs> you don't need to be talking about Jaws. Fuck me. He's setting the groundwork, okay? The majority of these reboots and remakes aren't made with care, easily recognized as the blatant cash grabs they are. And of course, oh remember, he God, said that... Oh my God, you say this now? Well, and remember, he had nothing but praise for The Force Awakens. I know that's not a uh, strict reboot. Well, no, it is. Uh, it, it, is know. it is a reboot, it yeah. is a reboot essentially. Yeah. But he wouldn't say this anymore, would he? Oh, who knows? this is too harsh. Oh yeah, this is mean. This is mean. This is too he mean. He doesn't do mean anymore. Gratefully, mm -hmm. that wasn't the case with Casino Royale. Daniel Craig... Oh, yes. Hmm? The disease. <laughs> I think he meant that positively. I think he doesn't understand what disease evokes. <laughs> like a robot. <laughs> I don't disease, like disease. Something that disease. spreads, you know? Uh, Daniel Craig's first outing as the iconic spy, James I wish Bond. Said Nutella instead. Spreads like Nutella on toast. Imagine his oh, review delicious. of Nutella. It's um, nice. Mm, I like it. Yeah, it subverts your expectations. But not really. <laughs> Casino Royale perfectly embodies, and more importantly, understands the term reboot. Less experienced filmmakers assume their reboot will be interesting simply because it contains beloved characters from previous films. Oh, like fucking Force Awakens? Hello? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Casino Royale does for Bond what Batman Begins did for the caped crusader. Ooh. Bond becomes a vulnerable human being, not just a gun-toting ladies' man with a license to kill. What do you mean, just? Ooh. He's a vulnerable <laughs> physically and emotionally. Wait, he's vulnerable physically and emotionally. Okay, that's fine. It's not I can the say first... the things that other people say about things. Well, I was going to say, I haven't heard any of this from... Uh... No, I've not, not heard this before, but that's fine. It's not the first attempt at humanizing Bond. He got married in <laughs> he got married in another film. <laughs> so Ooh, what? On his now on his Majesty's human -like Secret marriage. Service. Mola, mola, mola. Did he put in another film? No, I. Uh, he says on His Majesty's Secret okay. Service. I'm oh. just saying that that's a funny oh, statement. Oh. He was made human before because he got married in that other one. <laughs> it's like oh, okay. <laughs> See, okay, humans so get what married. About, what about when Della was murdered in License to Kill? Oh, uh, is it? Was... I've never liked the idea, because I, I, I love Casino Royale as much as the next person, but I don't like the idea that it's the first one that made him human. It's like, fuck off. That's ridiculous. Fuck off. No, well, it is sort of an echo of what On Your Her Majesty's Secret Service did, where Bond got married and ended tragically. 
Well, but there's many ways right. to explore him as a character that goes beyond a love where, interest. Where he's, uh, he's incarcerated, and the British government basically just leave him. Yeah. Um, but it's the first time everything has truly clicked. Sean Connery's original achievement as the titular spy has had few real competitors until Craig. I don't know. Pierce Brosnan's my um, favorite, but well, all right. that, that's a lot of fucking horseshit. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> uh, his bond is foolhardy, naive, and needlessly reckless. Yet he's also fully committed to his job. In the past, Bond would allow his libido to jeopardize his assignments. In Casino Royale, Bond is getting frisky with a gorgeous lady, yet leaves the instant she tells him what he needs to know. This is a cold, calculating assassin, and it's the closest we've gotten to Ian Fleming's original vision. Doesn't a guy who continues, who, who keeps going with it, and has sex with a beautiful woman... Even after he has the information, that's more humanizing than the cold, calculating assassin who, once he has what he wants, he leaves. I also don't buy was that he's it, read wasn't the any same of the happening in a much cheesier way books. in one of the Roger Moore films when he's sleeping with someone up on a ski lodge, and then he gets a call and he gets up to leave, and she says, "But James, like, I need when you." He and he says, "She wanted to ride the slope." And he says, "So does England." And then <laughs> <laughs> he's on a yeah. slope, and then yeah. has a Union Jack parachute. <laughs> Hell the same yes. Basic thing, right? <laughs> Like to to what Rags was saying, the two thousands Casino Royale does one and the other. Like when he's like yeah. tr tracking down the terrorist that like is trying to <clears throat> blow up a plane. Like he when he's uh, interrogating his Isn't girlfriend, that... all he wants is like the information, and then he sort of leaves her. But then well, it, when it comes to Vesper, he's actually interested in establishing a long term relationship. Isn't that what the movie's about? It's the the big split between how you know, a lot of where your feelings would take you, but a lot of where the job takes you, sort of thing. And yeah. good right. foundation for a James Bond-like character. That's why, yeah, again... He had to, sorry, he had to set up uh, that, that, you know, Bond was company Bond. He was doing the things that she need, he needed to do, get the information, kill the people, get his status yes. and all that. Then he meets Vesper. He tries to play the same game with Vesper, you know, says all the things that he believes he needs to say to her, you know, says that, oh, I'm not interested in you. Why? Because I'm smart, this, that, and the other. No, because you're single. You know, he's, he's trying right. to paint yeah, himself yeah. to her as, 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 the, uh, as the sort of, you know, I'm, I'm the spy guy that uh, comes in, does this, and fucks off, lady. But no, he falls in love with her. And that, and that changes the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole kind of mission in, in places. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, that's, you needed to have the setup to get the payoff of falling in love. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm so, yeah. You need that contrast. Like, yeah. have a woman where he's just trying to extract information out of her, but then a particular woman comes along, and it's like, oh, I've fallen for this one. Yes. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's called storytelling. Um, <laughs> to continue, simply from an action standpoint, this is the best 007 by far. Director Martin Campbell's mastery of set pieces is evident with the visceral, jaw-dropping parkour sequence. Legitimately one of the greatest action scenes ever created. Oh, Jesus. Wow. The film also contains brilliant work from Ava Green, the best female character a Bond film has had in decades, with Mads Mikkelsen, the best Bond villain ever. 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 Oh, no. We're making some heavy statements here. Yeah, he's, um, I mean, this is the most bold he's been <laughs> in, 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 in a while. And it's like the most basic yeah. nerd statements where it's just like, this was the best one. Mickelson's Le Chief is no cat stroking a caricature of evil. He's just a person crippled by debt, scared of his enemies. I think that's why the film succeeds so well. It understands the characters inhabiting the screen, allowing their journey to propel the story instead of explosions and skimpy outfits. Remember, though, no serious thought would come from this film. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's nope. not allowed. That's only it's no enemy. enemy. It's no, no enemy. No. Nothing <laughs> is enemy, Rags. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> it's just enemies. It's on an island. Um, well, there you go. That's a strong grasp of what it feels like to have Chris Duckman be your influential figure into the world of film. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. I was going to say pain, but it's like, well, it's it's almost a lack of anything, isn't it? It's um, uh, so so empty. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, nothing. Fucking Happy Meal. It's a full. It's a whole book of this. <laughs> no, a Happy Meal shuts up your kids. <laughs> 
This, this. I mean, in all fairness, uh, some of the stuff that he said shut us up. Well, yeah, yeah. might put us to sleep. <laughs> well, the one about the serious thought thing—that that had me. I was like, "Wow, he said that." That's that, I guess. Mm. Done. Still kind of shocked that he said that. It's um, it's a weird book because again, it's written as though you've seen mm. the films most of the time, and. It's all films that most people have heard of if you even have a vague interest in films and probably seen as well. This is a, a list of films that you should bucket list films, right? Yeah, see before you die. Make sure you see them. Yeah, so it's got to be uh, presented from the point of view that you haven't seen these films. Yep. Yeah. And he, he's meant to be convincing you why you should see these films, but he's not. He's, he's doing the most bog standard nothing of nothings. Well, I mean, you know, who's really seen Lord of the Rings? I, I thought I said it wrong there, because I'm just so unfamiliar with saying it. Laura of no, the Ring? It's, no, it's Lord the Lord of, the of, Rang. Lord of Rang. Lord, Lord of, of the Ring. <laughs> yeah, most people haven't even heard would of think, it, I don't think. Like, a, a bucket list list of films would be, like, films that you wouldn't normally see. Yeah, like all it, films like that... Cine Royale is something where it's like, yeah, I'll, of course, that's going to get mainstream marketing and whatever. Like, Of course, I'm going to see that on TV and want to go to see it. Like, Sorry, go ahead. I agree with you. I, uh, I think I feel this is the opportunity to highlight things that either have been heard of but mostly ignored, which does, you know, sometimes does happen, and then uh, films that you've never heard of. That's the, those are the two things yeah. that probably should enter here. Films that even we would see them and be like, oh yeah, because that did that had like a 200 million budget, but it only made like 50 and it was really good. Like that kind of movie might end up on here, but there should be so... Yeah, like it's a bucket list of best movies of all time and you've, put, you've thrown... Like I said, I feel it feels weird to me that I recognized everyone here except one. Mm -hmm. That's like odd. Th that, that list we were going over where Force Awakens was at the top of it, was that the bucket list list? Of his? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, we don't need to know. <laughs> we don't need to be reminded. <laughs> oh, come that the on. Force Awakens How many people. Fucking, like... If you're interested yeah. in film, have you even heard of Star Wars? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you Who? heard this little film called Star Wars The Force Awakens. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Well, and that's kind of what I mean when we go to the um, the genres of, like, you know, animated. Like, what, what, what films are present here? And it's like, The Incredibles. Have you seen that? It's like, come on. <laughs> It's Who like, yeah, but it's really that. good. And it's yeah. like, okay, that's not the problem. <laughs> it's not really the issue. You got, you can only put 50 on here, and they're films people should see before they die. And you've included something like Pirates of the Caribbean or The Avengers. It's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, if there was a few <laughs> films on that list where it's just like, I think that's more popular than you think it is, but like, whatever, it's fine. But like, The Force Awakens? Like, <laughs> Like not that's not the only one. There's a number of like Return of the King was is on there as well. Yeah, like, yeah but only Return of the fuck King. Off. That's a weird thing. That is only <laughs> Return of the King. Yeah. Uh, that is really bizarre. Why what was his thought process behind that? Why have just Return of the King on the list, even though each movie is distinctly different? And not yeah. have those included. Just put Especially the if you say that you should watch point. the third in this trilogy of movies before you die. Yeah. <laughs> Don't watch the other two. No. Only Return of the King. Is like, yeah. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I, don't know. I think it was I... something that, um, that Mola pointed out earlier. It's a film that's presented as these are films that you need to see that's written assuming that you've probably seen most of them anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, what's the point? Yeah. Don't, uh, yeah, right. with terrible descriptions. <sighs> so weird, dude. It is weird. In but my hey, mind, we I've been it. going around to hospitals sure to find did. people on the, the last legs of life. <laughs> he goes up to them and says, Hey, have you seen The Force Awakens? <laughs> say, no. You know? what, what, like, do I need to say it? Like, yes, let me tell you nothing about this film. You know, yeah, this movie's going to be big once the sequels movie. come out. Imagine the last movie you see before you die is, still, is, is that one. Also, I haven't <laughs> illustrated this well time. enough. I showed Metal this, but there, with every page you get an illustration to associate with the film. Some of these are <laughs> fucking dreadful. It's I wouldn't weird. mind you guessing some of them. You're going to guess this one. I'll start with this one, all right? So here's number one. This is for a film. Can you guess which one? I mean, yes, it's Casino Royale. <laughs> uh, nailed it. Nailed it. But I was just like, 
What the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> look how look how awkward BB-8 looks. Like the, <laughs> the just, why is it? It's just it's just the sh it's like you recognize all this, right? You're like, y yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, but why why is why is the Millennium Falcon yeah, that's bigger the than the? No, no, no. Why is the Death Star yeah, in the, the Death Force? Star? <laughs> why is why are they why are all these icons positioned the way they are? I don't know. It's, it's so crappy and, it's and like scrunched up. up. For it's just a weird positioning. Yeah. I don't know. Like you could have given a shit. I suppose. No. Well, speaking of giving a shit, uh, <laughs> some of these. Oh, of oh, so what do you? What movie is this? Hold on. Uh, uh, um. Um, I think Fringy and Metal might have a chance on this one. Oh, gee, thanks for picking one that all of us might have had a chance at, but <laughs> that's uh... not the point. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that's Coraline. That's Correct. Coraline. That is Coraline. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Actually, yeah. What a Sorry, shit image I mean, for Coraline. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no good. Wouldn't you do the image from the poster of her uh, in the uh, in the tunnel? No. You know, like with the door, and that's the light cast into the. Okay, that's just what yeah, they'd expect, Fringy. Exactly. Oh. Here, here's one all of you should get. It's so great. <laughs> it's in America, yeah, the I Winter mean, Soldier. Yeah, uh, yeah the everyone. Winter Winter Soldier. Soldier. <laughs> you see that? You're like, of course, that's Winter Soldier. That's what Winter Soldier is. Wait a minute. How big is Captain America's? How big is the star on the shield? Is it that big? <laughs> It's not to scale. I, These images aren't to scale because Kylo Ren's oh, helmet isn't oh, actually no, as big no, no, as okay. the, the Death Star. It's not the bigger star, than the Death Star. <laughs> okay. No, it's, the star does fill the, uh, it's just that it shouldn't be that big. The, uh, the lines are meant to be bigger on the outside and the, uh, uh the inner okay. circle of the star yeah, but is copyright. smaller. And also, look at the, the Force Awakens okay, yeah. is just a bunch of Star Wars stuff, stuff crammed together yeah. and the rest is a single thing. Mm -hmm. So I think I missed the context of these. Is this just, is this like minimalist posters? They are the accompanying list. minimalist images oh, to so help you. What is, what, what is this? Off now is that there is no uh, Creed. Um, Captain Underpants. Creed. Yeah. Yeah. Rocky. <laughs> Creed is correct. Which still uh, I'm just like that's so is, lame. Okay, now what is shorts? <laughs> shorts. Here's, his underwear. Here's, here's his underwear. Here's his underwear. <laughs> hey, if those were the, movies, uh, they'd be three hundred dollars. Yes. I'm confused. Why is the style inconsistent? Why does the Star Wars one have a distinctly different style than all of the other ones? Well, yeah, they because... are inconsistent because you know what this is. Uh... Toy Story? Yes. Yeah, that would be Toy Story, but uh... I, man, I would have probably gone with like Buzz uh, yeah. or Woody. Like, it's a silhouette of Buzz or Woody. Well, uh, but yeah, again, that's not the same style as the one that's been... I don't know. It Like, it needs to... You gotta pick one and stick with it. Because having one that's just the no. outlines and then the other one that's hmm. throwing me you off. You could just do whatever. Well, no, I'm okay with the images. It's just that, I mean, I'm no, not. I'm okay not okay with, with some, with some of these. these. Like, no, 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 I mean, I'm okay <laughs> with the premise of having images before you talk about whatever it is you're talking about. Oh, the accompaniment totally of images. Cool. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, but not the images themselves. Because the uh, the Star Wars right. one in particular is so fucking half-assed. Like, really? <laughs> that one's crap. That one's just like no good. Here's a bunch of Star Wars shaped things. Yay! It's like my child's playset. I don't. I hate it. <laughs> how, how much did the book cost? Uh, that's a great question. I will discover the answer to that while you continue talking about things. Oh, um, yeah. Now I'm curious because it's a, by the sounds of it is a relatively short book. Hey, this it's paid for itself. Okay. <laughs> like, let's be honest. <laughs> Well, sure, but like not everybody's gonna monetize it, so <laughs> that's what I'm curious about. How much did it cost you? Okay, where did anyone we? buy it? Well, oh yeah, no, think? dude, it's it was it was selling out when I picked it up, and it and it's got wow. a sticker on it that says "National Bestseller." National. Wow, that's oh. probably All not right. true. Twelve pounds sixty-five has cost me. Jesus, well, I want a refund. Are you serious? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> sorry. That's the price refunds. of the hardcover. The paperback is four pound <laughs> fourteen. Damn, it, it's it's oh, three right. times the price for the hardcover versus the paperback. Okay, is that normal for books? Uh, um, normally, the yeah, yeah, normally the hardbacks are more expensive because I know they're yeah, more expensive, but three yeah, times. Quite often, Ooh, no, that's expensive. not typical. Mm. Oh. Usually about twice, probably twice. Yeah, I would have about twice, way maybe. preferred he did a top 50 to see of all time. That's when it would get really funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Okay, we need to. I need to take more photos of some of these images. They are fucking funny. So you're gonna have to talk about something. Okay. <laughs> um, you okay. go take them photos. This. Oh, oh this one. I can't wait to show you. Well, go on then. I yeah. can't. I gotta take more. I gotta do a ball. Okay. I gotta find all the funny wow, ones. So there's greedy. a lot of wow. funny so many ones. Photos. <laughs> so it's gotta catch them all. Dumb as shit. Okay. Well, yeah, you know what? I'll just can. prompt you. As what do you think of Chris Stuckman as a film reviewer? Oh, I think it's an absolute fucking bell end. <laughs> That's kind. I think. I think no. I've I've never liked the Absolutely guy. Absolutely virile of you. I've always I always found him uh, to be boring more more than anything. Uh, boring. Uh, fucking white bread. Uh, milk toast. Uh, I've never thought that the guy has has actually had anything really to say. I've never thought that he's actually had any talent. I can only imagine that his success has come from the fact that he is so nothing uh and and sometimes people gravitate towards that uh but uh yeah i i, I got nothing positive to say about the guy sorry yeah um, he's, not, he's he's um uh he's got no personality know. he's got no charisma yeah. he's got nothing there is nothing about the guy uh, I, yeah he's, you're right he's just uh i mean like he's I'm thank goodness he's not like really talented at anything, or else boy he'd be boring. <laughs> okay, I'll, I've grabbed three. I consider this easy, medium, and hard in terms of guessing the film. Oh. Uh, that, that's the fun game we can make. We'll go with easy first. So, what film is this wonderful artwork for? Art of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> I like how it's clearly. <laughs> Two different things that have been just attached to it's each so other. so awful. Why would you do that? <laughs> the bone and the ship are just clearly from two completely different things. So what's really throwing it off is that the ship is like incredibly detailed. Yeah. So wet, and then you just mm -hmm. this, this goofy man. ass clip art skeleton man. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to get chicken. I'm going to get chicken. I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm a skeleton. <laughs> Looks like a skeleton head you can put on your Call of Duty emblem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. This might guys... have been made with Here's the Call the of Duty squad. image editor. Yeah. You guys ready to crank up the difficulty here? Are you Ooh, ready? What no. is this for? I already know. I'm. Oh, you're I'm disqualified then. Yeah. Uh, Shaun of the Dead. Correct. Damn. Which I still think is a really shit image for that. <laughs> it's... Yeah. I wouldn't have yeah, guessed that. That's Shaun of the years. Dead. No, I guess because you got and the tie. tie. The yeah. tie yeah. You got the zombie, the tie. I don't know why the heart. Is the heart supposed to be blood story. and then red or? I a am, love story. The, uh, the, yeah. But yeah, this sucks. Why wouldn't you have it be like Sean with the cricket bat? <laughs> Bring you, you, yeah. you wait, sir. This is the last one of the night. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Everybody, oh, no. right, oh, which no. which film is this? I would um, say Casino Royale. Incorrect. Uh, Fuck, I haven't seen that one. I actually don't know. The King's Speech? Incorrect. I'm looking forward uh, to saying correct for this one. Uh, the, okay. is it, uh, uh, the recent Macbeth with Den Denzel? <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> no. Oh, fuck. I'm, I'm looking at the Here list. Away. Incorrect. Inception. Alice in Wonderland? Nope, nope. These the are films that weren't on the list. These are, yeah, well, they, they, for you, it's more fun if they don't remember whether or not they're on the list. <laughs> I can't um, remember. Okay, well, I'm trying First to I'm think not going to remember. Um, okay. Return of the King. Uh, Correct! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> 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 of course! <laughs> but, it's not, but, but it's not the crown. Oh. It's not It's not the crown. For you, this, yes, is, this is easily, crown, easily my pick the for the most embarrassing it. fucking image for Return of the King. Are you kidding? These are crown oh, means they're king color. What are you talking about? Return you nailed of the King. It. My I little mean, shitty fucking... This, in it. this is the oh. crown you get in Christmas crackers. What are you doing? If you were getting me to do Lord of the Rings, I'd probably pick the ring. Regardless exactly! Of Why yeah. the fuck is this shitty crown on? <laughs> the stock <laughs> crown. No, see, the thing it's is, just, these, these images even... are actually really clever because they're so vague and they can apply really to pretty much anything. They're exactly like his reviews. So, actually, <laughs> the minimalism stuff works. 
<laughs> Chris Stuckman to reviewing films is this image to Return of the King. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate it. Wow. That's embarrassing. So a fucking... I don't, think I don't you... like this minimalist aesthetic overall. Most of it's fucking cringe. Honestly, I... I think you'd say you'd love it if it were done well. Yeah, I know. I've seen it sometime, very, very occasionally done well, but like, I can't even think of a good example <laughs> off this... the top of my head. I think minimalist artists would see this and be like, that's not minimalist, that's just shit. That's <laughs> that's just... <laughs> <laughs> Oof. No offense oh, to damn. the artist who <laughs> made Oh no, offense should offense. be offense should be given on actually. Uh you I think well the, yeah, the so... worst one I've seen was like Blade Runner where a guy's running along the blade of a knife. I'm just like that's so <laughs> fucking on the nose. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, but it matches Blade Runner and a man running on a blade. Come no, on. He's running along the blade. <laughs> you just you just not clued in, man. Go on. <laughs> Yeah, with Blade Runner, you could always do something like like a dove, because they're like, oh, d yeah, a dove and Blade do Runner, dove. they don't make. Oh yeah. yeah, but then you think like, oh yeah, that, that's why you'd use it, um, or maybe um, electric like, or like the. I mean, oh. you could just have like the silhouette of Deckard, you know, firing, yeah, his, the... firing his gun off. Oh, his gun. He's gun. Yeah, you could have like the little outlines of the flying cars, you know, or the or oh origami, oh, the, the origami unicorn, the origami yeah, unicorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got a lot of them, but like that, not that running would be, on a whole blade. What but that requires a, well, a modest amount of thought about the movie. Yeah, but doesn't <laughs> it come across doing something options. like that? Comes across as someone who hasn't seen the movie but knows the title. Because <laughs> that's, yeah, what, that's yeah, what he does. Like, he reads across the plate. Because none of the things that we mentioned were like you wouldn't know about that unless you had watched the film. You'd have because that's not like the poster of it. Or yeah. Um, I just want to highlight a, a recent super chat that said, "Oh wow, I actually own a copy of this book that Stuckman himself autographed. Met the man in uh, Akron back in 2017. Can't say I'm proud of it anymore. Now I feel mm. bad because <laughs> like, that was probably quite a precious memory. <laughs> Keep it. You need to yeah, make. But, you need to get that put in a box and framed on the wall. That's a that's an heirloom to pass well, into your children. I wanted to just be genuine for a second. Like that is probably a precious memory. You should cherish it. Meeting someone like that when you they mean so much to you. I wouldn't want to take all of that away. I just He's perpetually fucking fascinated me as a film reviewer. Um, he, like we, we've already talked about how he was there when it started, and so that's why he's <laughs> where he is. But like, I've had yeah. plenty of people in my life that I've talked to about film that, even at their like most limited, say more than this. So it it you would think that if you really had a passion, as we say all the time with Chris Tuckman, if you really had a passion for any of this, how have you done such an incredible job at making sure that none of it ever shows? We've talked about it before, but uh, we don't often feel compelled to say that we love movies like here on this show because no. it's pretty obvious. We don't feel compelled to say we love video games or television shows or just like media in general because there's really no reason to. It should be apparent. But, like, constantly being like, oh, yeah, I love movies. Oh, I love movies so much. Like, movies are so great. I love them so much. It's like, cool. But, like, that should just be self-evident just by the way that you talk sure. about them. In the same vein, we've, I don't think we've ever said, oh, man, guys, EFAP chat, you should see this film because it made us think about it. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> every movie. Yeah, that, that, every movie so down to fucking that. TLJ or The Flash, whatever, you pick your poison. They make us think. Yeah, no, Ant-Man yeah. is a thought-provoking film, not in the ways it intended, but no. definitely in many, 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 many different ways that film was thought-provoking. Last film I saw was uh, at the cinema, Godzilla Minus One. Hella thought-provoking, that film. I'm oh, sure. The, well, to true. give an example, Remember right, with the, with the Flash, when they had him, like, fucking trying to put everything back to normal, but then he didn't go and see who killed his mum... We were like, that was hugely thought provoking. It's like, what is wrong with you? What kind of person wouldn't do that when you've had the rules explained that going to see who did it won't destroy the future? Why don't you go check, man? Go do it. Because it's the one it, thing a human would do. That, because if they'd, well, I mean, the reason is because if they'd done that in that film, it would have been Eobard Thorne, and therefore it would have, it would have created a whole new, why wasn't this the fucking villain in the film? <laughs> oh, uh, barring meta reasons, I'm I'm simply because this is, I'm trying to argue it's not a good thing that a film makes you think necessarily. 
because it could be a bunch of bad thoughts. Like, why the fuck? Uh, <laughs> are you Boy, we need some thinking. Some thinking. If it makes you think, at the very least, it's better than if it does nothing at all, because then it's just kind of, you can't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that's probably fair, I don't, but I, that, so this is the problem I'm encountering. I don't know if I've ever discovered a film that's never made me think anything. Transformers uh... Rise of the Beasts came close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Transformers Rise of the Beasts. All right, barring Transformers Rise of the Beasts. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I admittedly, I, when I saw that, I did think, why the fuck did they make this movie? Yes, but... <laughs> Money! No, fuck it, Money. I, it still made me think. I, I started scripting a review, and I got to the point where, like, why are robots on different planets evolving to take the shape of Earth animals? And I ended up going on this long tangent about crabs and carcinization. <laughs> and at the end of it, it's like, why am I even doing this? Oh, well, it's more interesting than the film, but at least I'm thinking about something <laughs> that it did otherwise come very close to making me think nothing at all. Mmm. Mmm. This movie really mm. made me think, you know. It made me think, wow, what a piece of shit. Well, so in, I can't believe I wasted my time. <laughs> with all that in mind, it does actually make me th make me think that Chris yeah. doesn't really think about the films he watches. He watches them and goes, yeah, that was awesome. Or, yeah, that wasn't so awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. That was and then this film, film, he was like, wait a minute. I don't know what happened in that. And now that I'm thinking about it, some things make more sense, but other things don't. Whoa, I'm going to think about it some more. Whoa! A film has never Whoa. done this before, and I'm sort of sitting there like, really? No film? And then, you know, like I said, the more extreme answer to this question, as far as I'm concerned, is that all films do this, even the shitty ones do it. A lot of the time, we talk about how a shitty film presents a premise that we would be like, oh, this could have been good, though. If you know, if you put this there and this there and this um, there, like Tom Cruise's yeah. Ethan Hunt versus an AI, which is representative of the the course of the whole series, he has to learn to use all kinds of technology to win. When that tech is turned on him, in the you know the conclusion of the series of Mission Impossible, that sounds amazing in terms of an enemy. It's an impossible mission because now everything you're used to using to defeat the problem is the enemy. It's, it's like the problem. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So like, so what do you think? Uh, if if there's so little that's going on in terms of watching the films, what does sustain him? Uh, in terms of continuing to do it rather than other things. It's the idea of it all. That's what sustains it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But why Why do you think that the idea could even exist? You know how, like, in the menu, the uh, the guy that um, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Holt, Holt plays? Yeah. That is yeah, Stuckman, yeah. Like, well, we, um, did we you, say that was High Top? Think... Maybe. No, that, is that High Top? Or is it, I no, remember... no, no. Well, well the, but the thing is, is that... Because what, cause what his deal was is that he could demonstrate, like, an immense amount of knowledge, but couldn't channel it into anything meaningful at all. Um, like, in terms of creating things, like, you couldn't channel it into the craft. Well, is that either of those guys? Well, because part of the problem there is that different? we would say Chris Stuckman, I'm not even commenting on his ability to create film, his ability to create criticism or, or review or analysis is completely shot. Well, like that, that's what I'm saying, is that, like, at least Nicholas Holt's character could, like, yeah, make yeah, you're observations right there, yeah. about the food. Yeah, he um, knew... Well, but someone could say, isn't that the equivalent of knowing the director, the writer, and maybe what camera uh, was used and stuff like that? Oh, right, because he might just be regurgitating things yeah. that he's heard other people say. Not understood it on a craft it. level, just yeah, on the, a the literal that, level. The fact that he couldn't even synthesize it into a dish that yeah. was, like, even okay. Whereas you imagine that if somebody was watching a bunch of people, like, watching a bunch of chefs and understood a lot of it, that they could actually sit down and make something and it would turn out okay, because there'd just be so much information that made its way in. Um, obviously with challenges. Hmm. So if he was in the menu, then who would he be? Or is he not even represented in that film? I'd have to think about again who we're dealing with in total, because there's the guys who are there for the money, which isn't him. There's the washed-up no. star, which isn't him. There's, mm. uh, obviously the main character isn't him. Uh, Nicholas Holt is, like, a vague fic, but not quite there's the people who come sure. there for the prestige, but don't actually care about any of it. I don't think that's him. Uh, which doesn't quite fit, no. Uh, by the way, we we, mm -hmm. we talked about the menu on EFAP. Uh, I think it's worth seeing. I think that was uh, the beginning of the year, actually. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that, that was one. a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. We'll talk about. You know what? We'll do what this EFAP was supposed to be next week, because <laughs> yeah, the year will be actually over. Really that. Wrapping up. Yes, Compiled our hopes the for the new list. year and uh, looking back on the year we just completed. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's a nice thematic uh, sort of through line there. Nuddy. But um, yeah, you maybe you'd need another character, one that is um, it desperately wants the prestige, but has no idea what's even happening or how to get there. 
Mm. Well, I mean, I guess he uh, he's making a film, right? So <laughs> there is that in terms of also, like, and that's, uh, it sounds mean, but like manifest. that's why we have so little confidence in his ability to make film because which is an ironic twist on the usual format a lot of people say like critics won't be able to make film because it's a different creative sort of prowess skill set meanwhile yeah, we're and, saying and his criticism is so pathetic and thin that i don't see how he has any hope of making a film i guess i'm not sure what the thought process would be to making you know how we've talked about it right like what is the What's like the Snyder way of making films? It's like, well, it's kind of what Rebel Moon was, grabbing a bunch of things that he yeah. liked, having a general under, like a, an awareness of, of beats that stories are supposed to have, but not really understanding why, and then throwing them all together haphazardly while doing things that he thinks are cool to an excessive degree to the detriment of the broader film. And then obviously Dave Filoni is like, yeah, oh, it's my toys. I just get them here in my little play box and I bash them together and I imagine them having cool battles. Like that's his methodology. What's the what's the Stuckman one? What what is that going to look like? Don't know. And I guess we'll find out because we will well, be we watching saw, uh... Shelby Oaks, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah we saw so. notes from Melanie, um, which he begrudgingly admitted he released because he couldn't find another way to release it, which was annoying. That was really weird. Like the uh, I don't want to release it for free here on YouTube for all of you to watch, but I couldn't. For the record, couldn't drink a, didn't didn't pay for that. that. Drinker wants to release his <laughs> short film on YouTube because he wants people to see Super it. Super cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. There's no like Drinker didn't like he's like, oh I can't get anyone to fund the release in a more official manner, like in theaters. Like so I guess I'll just throw it out on a YouTube. It's like, nope, he just wants you guys to see it. It's a celebration of how far his channel has come and I look forward to seeing that's it. Awesome. But that's awesome. um Yeah, the note that's recognizable here is like a sort of full circle is that uh Chris Tuckman's journey to me, he comes across as he watches films, loves them, watches like directors talking about them. And he's like, man, that's what I want to be. But kind of just. I wish I was that. Yeah. I wish I was uh, like Steven He's doing Spielberg. the. Um, he's got the Spider Man Homecoming arc. I want to be Iron Man just to be I really a famous sit, hero. I want to be on the set and I want the chair that's got director on the back of it. And mm. I want to say action and I want to see the thing, <laughs> the, uh, the, the thing come down. <laughs> And I want to have a table over there that's got food on it because movies are supposed to have catering. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I want to, yeah. yeah, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, without understanding that all of it ultimately like stems from a fundamental drive to create above like all else through the tools that are available in that movie. And th this is just illustrated in so many ways. Like for example, the um, we shouldn't really value what critics do in any way close to what creatives do, which is such a distinctively because obvious sort of mindset. Creating criticism isn't creative. No, and and he said like what we do takes I a can half see hour. Why he believes that though? No, uh, that, that, well, yeah, that, that was what we. Uh, it's something. Yeah, That's what we quite. discovered, however many years or year ago, I can't remember how long it was, but he he was very specific in that creators can take, like, filmmakers can take as much as a whole year of doing this stuff, while we take a half hour to record and upload our thoughts. And it's like, excuse you. It's like, <laughs> you take a half hour to record your thoughts and upload it. Some people spend months or even years working on That's one thing. big analysis and filled with creative editing, visuals, animations, obviously presentation, funny jokes. I wouldn't be surprised Inside. if it blew his fucking mind to know, just to take an example, not for any other reason, that, but like if me and Fring explained to him all the stuff that had to happen to make uh, Quantumania happen, and Gogo, -Go, to be fair. It's, yeah, uh, that was, uh, that was an I think exhaustive days and days and days and weeks of work. Instead of him presenting any kind of disagreement or pushback to the notion of like, pfft, six hours to say you didn't like a movie like that's much more likely where he would settle i don't i think it would take a lot from him to be like oh wow that's really impressive instead he'd be more inclined to be like guys why don't you put that into something creative yeah why do you why don't you put that into something that isn't a waste of your life <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and i think he'd be fucking shallow enough to be like i'm not being mean i'm just giving you advice i'm just saying you're wasting your life not like me, making this Why don't movie. you put that into making a movie, yeah. something creative? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Something that inspires and makes people happy, because it's not possible. It's not possible that anything that you could create on YouTube could do that. Yeah, just make shallow, vapid reviews and then make a movie with the creative stuff, you idiots. Also, yeah, there's no and possible loser. way to be creative. This yeah. is the thing, right? In my line of work. I think that this has kind of been highlighted by all the things that have been said today, but if all seven of us were 
uh, I don't know why I'm saying this. Gun to our head, we have to write a book called The 50 Movies of the 2000s to See Before You Die. And it has to be genuine. It can't be like faked or rushed. You have to really put effort in all the ways. Your whole family's going to get killed. I'd be like, oh my okay, but, you know, play, as much time as you need, there's no, I'd be like, okay, and we'd, we'd probably have to fucking plan this all out, look at all the movies that yeah. came out, and then really think, and they tell us, <laughs> you get four paragraphs per film. I'd be like, fuck. Oh, man, just fucking those kill me. Some... Well, just no, kill me. Some... <laughs> yeah, we can do that. <laughs> no, we can those do it. tight paragraphs. Yeah, it's going to be, be tough. No fat. And I'd be curious to, I might even tier them in terms of obscurity. Because mm -hmm. it would be interesting to mm -hmm. do that, right? Like like five tiers, first ten, like these are the ones you probably have seen. But even then, and, yeah. and you know, I say this, I might have like a, a forward by someone that explains, you know, the point of the book a bit better than, like basically, I'm not going to include fucking Pirates of the Caribbean or, I was about to say The Force Awakens, like, well, I'm not going to include that anyway. But like, it's <laughs> Return of the King, <laughs> Spider-Man 2, The Incredibles, none of them are going to be on the list. Uh, and I think it would be essential to have like requirements for making sure that you see a bunch of foreign films as well. Yeah. Make sure that you find films from Japan, Korea. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm basically saying non-English language films, basically, yeah. so like even you know yeah. German, French films. Well, you know, because like, um, not every interesting film that came out in the decade is going to come from the, America or the where UK. Where was Goodbye Lenin? You know, where was Goodbye Lenin on that list? Where was uh, Perfect Blue? Was funny. Stuff like that. Prestige didn't make it to the list, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, you're right, it didn't. Uh, he but, didn't well, and that's the thing, though. Well. I would put Prestige on tier one and be like, well, the reason it's here isn't just that I, you know, I'm talking about it as a more known movie, but that I had to include that one, because it's like my number one. Yeah, the one, essentials. So. Yeah, and that would be included in the paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, uh, yeah, no hot fuzz. Well, it's Shaun of the Dead. I, he like, does I mention, because I, I think I read the Shaun of the Dead one, he says, like, the, the Cornetto trilogy are great, but Shaun of the Dead is the best one, he says. Um, mm. that's okay. That's yeah, okay. I think that's a fair choice. A really good movie. that, I think. <laughs> oh, I can, I can easily accept that. If someone said World's End, I'd be surprised. Um, that would be surprising. And that's the key mm. word, because I would be surprised, but at the same time, I love that movie. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, it's underrated. Uh, Hot Fuzz is the best, though, I think. Hot Fuzz is the best. And that was one. the Top last dog. film Edgar Wright made. Uh, <laughs> Baby <laughs> Driver was entertaining, all right? It had some cool action scenes. Mm. <laughs> so, well, the really less great. we talk about last night on, so on, on Soho, uh, the better. Uh, oh, fuck. Um, we don't need to talk about that movie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Office is indeed Oof. the best, correct. That's okay, though. It's fine, mm -hmm. it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I, see, I, mean, I guess the On my list, being... I, oh, sorry. I would be Go tempted to put a bunch of mainstream shit on my list, but I would probably designate, designate that to, like, an honorable mentions thing, where it's just like, here's a bunch of mainstream shit that I, that I really liked, but I don't want to put it in the main list because we've all seen this shit. Oh, you could say, like, you know, like, what the fuck time, is wrong you with you I mean? if you like... haven't seen these? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, whole, but if I don't mention them at all, thing. you might think like, "Have you not seen that?" It's like, yeah, of course I have, but like, I'm just setting that aside and saying, yes, I have seen this. We've all seen this, but here's in my list. Here's a, sh a bunch of shit that you you might have not seen. Like the chances are, like, you know, maybe you overlooked this. So, well, the Marvels. <laughs> See, and then a wouldn't lot it be of people fun haven't seen that as to true. make a top 50 <laughs> movies avoid like the plague list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just a list. If you want to remind yourself how bad movies can be, you gotta put I like even bother. I after Quantumania, I fucking checked out. Well, I'm yeah, like, I was gonna I'm say done, you'd, you'd think to put like we put the Marvels on there, we put in Quantumania on there, we put in Love and Thunder mm. on there, we put in MO. It's like just put the MCU. It's I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you think, uh, <laughs> do you think any of those late. directors are coming back? Do you think any of them are coming back? Peyton, Reed. Well, remember, and, uh... Tiger was only there for the paycheck anyway, so they yeah. might. Yeah, yeah. Well, because uh, Sam Raimi is maybe right. Mm, He's a I, maybe. I think back. we can guarantee we'll see another Raimi MCU movie. I just don't know which one it'll be. Mm, right. he, apparently, if it's, if it's he has to choose to between do... an MOM sequel and the Avengers, which, I mean, at that point, you may as well just choose Avengers, right? It's more high profile. Uh, it's more high profile, but you've saddled with a script by Michael Waldron. Well, he was uh, the first time around, and apparently that was just wonderful, so. Um, yeah, I suppose so. That's crazy. I, me I was mentioning it the other day, but, like, isn't it wild that 
like I'm pretty sure the showrunner for Fallout, the like the Amazon Fallout, wrote Captain Marvel and like the Tomb Raider movie, and that's it. I was like, mm. oh, here you go, showrun a Fallout show. And then, of course, with Michael Waldron, it's like, oh, what you wrote like one episode of Rick and Morty, and you were like, you you were like a script editor on 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 Community. Here you go, a whole television show, and then a whole movie. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't Nobody understand how it. you can have such limited experience and then get handed such massive projects. Here, not that it's in the, uh, the new Avengers film as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's not that it's impossible that somebody could be handed a massive project like that and make something really good, but I don't understand how you can be handed a massive project, not do a very good job, and then, like, get more shit. I don't understand how that works. Oh, dude, I still can't believe that, like, watching those interviews of the guy who wrote multiverse of madness and i think he wrote quantumania and i think he's the same guy who's lined up to write kang dynasty and Secret oh no Wars. he's out now he's uh he's Is out he? he's not doing kang yeah, yeah just, now michael waldron's to, writing both well to set the foundation oh, okay. there is <laughs> michael waldron wrote mom jeff loveness wrote quantumania mom made a good amount of money quantumania did not loveness is out uh waldron is in for avengers but mom okay. only made the money because of spider-man yeah, not only uh, well, that, but I like mean, that was that thing, yeah. you can genuinely in the timeline pinpoint that MOM is basically the tail end of superhero movies being cool. Uh, what, what if, yeah. Okay, what if um what if MOM came out today? I think well, it would crash and burn. Make, like 300, yeah. 400 million tops. Mm. Tops, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, they've all failed this year except for like two of them. Yeah, and Guardians is a very special, like out of the fucking mm -hmm. it's an anomaly that's easily explainable. not only has it been so mm -hmm. bad it's well not it's been so bad that i wonder if dc's having conversations right now of, is this even like a good idea to try and like do this reboot again like is it even worth it to take like these massive chances on a lot of these ones they're not guaranteed well, to well, succeed. at least get a writer who gives a fuck i mean i'm, I'm, like, I'm listening yeah. to that one. guy yeah. who is doing the interviews and it's just like you it sounds like you don't even care like you, you just well, sound it's like, like a job, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's just so. Like, oh, I was trying to write this, and I didn't know how to do this scene, but I don't know. I figured I threw something, something together, and it's just like, how the fuck did you get this job? Like, is this mm. the best that Marvel could do? Really, they couldn't find anybody else who had like a smidgen <laughs> of more so enthusiasm well, when... to do this thing. Like, you're the best. <laughs> you're the decision that they made. Like, we right. want you to handle the fucking Avengers movies. I mean, I know they have a new guy now, but it's just like... Like, the fact that they even got that guy to do multi Multiverse of Madness in the first place, it's just like, come on, dude. Get somebody who cares. It sounds well, like you really, don't even care. That This problem seems to exist, and then, like, whenever something comes along that ends up being great, and you look, it's like, oh, wow, like, somehow you managed to get writers... Like, Andor's yeah. got writers. It's got writers who have a back catalog of, of mm. work, of good work, <laughs> that actually yeah. get brought together into a team to make something good. Meanwhile, it's like, oh yeah, go on Dave Filoni and John Favreau here, like the tag team coming in <laughs> yeah. with the amazing oh, you, you had a, for, you, you, you had a sniff of the Rick and Morty script? Yeah, I have the $250 million. Go yeah, ahead. $250 well, million we're dollar movie. Yeah. Fully yeah. convinced at this point that if ever they're credited as part of a Rick and Morty film that is strong, a Rick and Morty episode that's strong, that it was Dan, Dan Harmon. Harmon. It, it wasn't them. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I yeah. can't. I yeah, cannot fathom right. that the man who wrote the Vat of Acid episode could write Quantumania. No, that is unfathomable to me. Doesn't yeah doesn't does not which is funny in any way shape because like or, alternatively you... the person who wrote Pickle Rick was in charge of She Hulk. I mean, I'm sure some people say like, <laughs> didn't you say that you know isn't it hard to contextualize Prometheus and Alien are written by the or rather directed by the same guy and it's like somehow Vat of Acid and M O M seem more contradictory to me. It just yes they do. Oh well, but, Vat of Acid and uh, remember Michael Waldron wrote the toilet one. Which uh, mm. even when it came out, that was one where we were yeah we a weren't bit sure about like, that. Mm. But uh, Vat of Acid, I feel like I could show anyone here and in the spheres of influence that I have, and I think they'd be uh, either uh, the 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 floor of it would be like yeah that was funny, but it could be all the way up to like holy shit that was really good. Vat of Acid is so good. Um, Sorry, was Vat of Acid a movie or written. an episode? Pickle of something? Rick is better than uh, it was an episode of Rick and Morty. It was the only oh, one that okay. got an Emmy. So uh, that means Jeff Loveness is an Emmy Award-winning writer. Ugh. Oh wow! Okay, what season was that? Seven? 
Four. Four. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. We, we don't know anything about after season five, basically. <laughs> Not <laughs> really. Um, we fell off. I thought they were on season seven. Maybe I'm yeah, wrong. They are. They and are. For the record, I don't know if you were about okay. to say this for me, but like, uh, the memes and the culture around Pickle Rick has damaged its ability to be praised as an episode for its writing. It's mm -hmm. much better than just him saying, I'm a pickle. There's a lot more going on in that and, episode. And Big Rick, Pickle yeah. Rick. Pickle Rick is better than She-Hulk. You can't. They're not. They're not the same. <laughs> Why would anyone yeah. say it's the like level? that? Um, well, it's just because that was the writer of that one. Oh, oh wait, yeah, no okay. that that also that also won the Emmy, didn't it? I'd assume it did. I don't didn't, know. I think Pickle. Oh, so yeah, Emmy award winning. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't. I don't like the Pickle Rick gag being used as evidence of like shallow writing or whatever. I mean, I think it's a funny gag. It's just like that. The grandpa is just so. Like he just needs to occupy his life with something that he needs to like do a he turn himself into a pickle, like that. so they don't. Yeah, have to I, go to I like that joke. You know, it's a well, good so, joke. It's um, funny. It's just that Blade Runner and Alien were masterpieces, while Prometheus and Covenant are disasters. Pickle Rick and Vast Acid are not masterpieces. Yes, but the key information you've missed there is M O M is the worst fucking script to exist in film. <laughs> exactly. As far as we're concerned, yeah. it has. It is staggering. As much as I dislike Prometheus and Covenant, neither of them, even put together, can scratch the depths of depravity that MOM reaches. What That's a what fucked up film. Four. That's what Phase 4 is. It, it taught us new new ways of, of, of being the worst thing ever made. <laughs> like, that's what happened. It was all of these different ways of testing the boundaries for how how incompetently written a story could be before it didn't even constitute one like definitionally it <laughs> yeah that's the I mean, film that uh, said hey you guys want to see reed richards and you guys have expressed again and again that you'd like to see uh krasinski as reed richards here he is now he's fucking dead he's spaghetti <laughs> it's like okay thanks i guess it's like, hey, you remember that show that some of you liked? Either you don't even know what it's referencing, or you liked it. So the people who liked it and recognized Black Bolt, hear it dead from being a retard. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Shortly after introducing incursions to the world, a mechanic that broke the multiverse before it even began. Hey, just broke it. You broke guys recovering it. from seeing Professor X get fucking murked by evil Logan in Logan? He's back. He's making his first appearance ever again as de oh, dead. Yeah, awesome. Wanda killed him oh, in the man. fucking mind combat. The one place where she should not be killing him. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that movie mm -hmm. so much. It's so cool. Yeah. Very bad. It's I was uh, during Christmas. I had so we had family over, and I was talking with my cousin about movies briefly. And uh, Multiverse of Madness brought up, uh, was brought up, and I would said how much I hate it and how shit it is. And he said, oh, I remember going to see, uh, to see that at the theater. <laughs> I don't really remember what happened, though. <laughs> it was, it's all just kind of a blur to me. Uh, so it just yeah. reminded me as well, fucking Captain Carter, I could do this all day, dies. Cutting <laughs> half immediately. Yeah, well done. Uh, what a mess. At least Captain movie. America says I could do this all day in time travel. <laughs> so <laughs> Marvel <laughs> lets, a, lets a statue fall on her and does nothing to prevent itself from dying. She put her arms. Yeah, yeah but the statue because, kills her. You know, Captain Marvel has a statue falling on her. She dies. Wanda absorbed all the because that's something she can do. Fuck do we man. know what she actually can do? Because I don't know. I don't no, care no, the anymore. answer is I don't no. Care. I never want to see that character again. I'm, I'm and just, yet we probably will. Oh, of uh, course we will. Yeah. Uh, well, then again, who knows how long is the MCU even going to last in its current state? They can't keep losing money forever. <laughs> like that's not that's not tenable. I can't just wait. Otherwise, you turn it to DC, where you just abruptly end. Defrosted Robot Chat said, "In what if they have Peggy say no? I don't think I will." Are you fucking kidding me? Sorry, <laughs> <Right. laughs> I. Uh, man, I look forward to never watching. Not only will I never watch it, but I just find show. it so funny how they keep forcing her to be second fiddle. They don't let her be her own thing at all. They Not that any of us are be, like yeah, itching for the fucking Peggy Carter, Captain Carter spinoff, but at least you oh, could try got, like, and make two, her own fucking two seasons of television. Right? I know it's it's just <laughs> trying to make her a thing, and then being like, "Well, she says the things that the other guy you like says. She says the things <laughs> that the person you like says. So therefore, you like her, right?" Fucking hell. So, so I think, uh, are, are we yeah. talking about the what if scenario where Peggy becomes Captain, like, America. Captain America? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Captain yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't. I didn't see that what if episode. I wasn't sure if we were talking about that or Captain Marvel. Not a lot of people did, in all fairness. <laughs> am, I, am I already like guaranteed for a third season? Uh, oh Jesus! It's the oh. it's the lowest. Uh, <laughs> It's the lowest rated it the lowest? Marvel product on Disney Plus, and yet it gets. Oh, uh, mm. I thought you were going to say it's the lowest like place they can grab creativity from. No, I was going to counter with um, once they cross franchises, once we get Darth Vader in Marvel, that's when they're the lowest. <laughs> hey, hey, I think uh, I think if uh, if uh, if Black Panther was Star Lord, oh yeah, was so amazing that he taught Thanos out of being a bad guy because black. <laughs> well, yeah, because Tony can't do it, Doctor Strange can't do it. Uh, but obviously, if Black Panther was Star Lord, he'd easily convince yeah. Thanos to to calm yeah. down. Don't do that, Thanos. Oh, that's a no, compelling, that's a compelling this... Chris Stockman argument. Yes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. In the field of Don't pointless what-if stories, what, I think one of the most recent series of what-if stories is what if Happy Hogan saved Christmas? Yeah, that mm. is. Mm. Actually, yep. that they, was yeah. it in danger? I, apparently yeah, it is. Uh, Christmas yeah, was yeah, in sorry. danger, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank yeah, God for Happy Christmas Hogan. Christmas is in danger of his fucking Disney Marvel products coming out. I have that's... a, um, I have a, an idea for a what-if. What if we address the massive fucking giant sticking out of the planet Earth. <laughs> I mean, people, people keep oh, referencing that, but that's that's far down the list of things we need to address. How about we address, are there an Avengers team? Hello? What if the we Avengers, uh, address what if the Avengers had free appeared in the sky and uh, judged mankind? What Does, about that? Is there Avenger? Hello? Is there a team? Is there even a singular? Is anyone in control? Does Sword have any oh, control man. over any of this? What's going it's on? Really painful. I just pulled up the good old Wikipedia, and this is just a sentence that's in here for season two. The first episode of the season, what if Nebula joined the Nova Corps? Ah, yeah, the question we were all asking. It's uh -huh. a detective Keeps me up at night, Fringy. Film noir genre such as Blade Runner, exploring a <laughs> nebula <laughs> going to Nova Corps to prove her detective skills while trying to escape Thanos' shadow after Ronan the Accuser deposed him before the events of Infinity War. Oh, like, God, what? Eh? I love the comparison to it's like, ah, yes, it's like, dude, the, Michelle Pfeiffer's Unforgiven. That yes, was that's, so that's painful. What, everyone that who was, saw Quantumania was immediately thinking, this is Unforgiven. This yeah, is what so it is. like this is the height of Michelle Pfeiffer's career. Everything was leading to this moment. If, that, if you told me offensive? that I had to connect those movies in some way, and then gave me a week to do it and all the resources, <laughs> I, I'd struggle. I'd assume that you misspoke. Oh, you mean forgiven? <laughs> you mean, yeah, that's right. Forgiven, the movie Forgiven. What was the other one? What was the one in our? Oh, they, wasn't it the Loki season two? They compared it to uh, Breaking Bad. Oh, enough. Yeah, I know, Breaking right? Bad makes made sense though. Wait, how, did they acknowledge Breaking Bad as a show in Loki season two? No, just the no, 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 the, the creators like were like saying that yeah. that's which they did before. They've done that with Joker a million times. Like this is this is kind of like Joker. You guys like Joker. This is going to be like Joker in terms of. I can't remember which film it was, but it was referenced like Logan and Joker with a... I don't even think it was R-rated, but it's just this tired shit where... I don't even like it when people say like, oh, this is kind of like if Jurassic Park met The Matrix or something. You're just like, can you just yeah. shut up? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit tacky, isn't it? It always comes uh, across like that way, yeah. Strategy where you're like, well, you like this movie. It's like that meets that, but it just seems really reductive and, and kind of silly. It but especially be, comparing yeah. your story to Unforgiven, it's like, all right, chill the fuck out. <laughs> like, calm down. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yes. <laughs> um, oh. I was going to say, on that note, I am I am running out of the steam. So uh, I feel like mm. we've nailed what this EFAP became, which is a <laughs> analysis of Chris Stuckman. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I expected it to become, but as uh, no, but we, of Chris Stuckman like is my only joy in life. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this couldn't have been done with almost anyone uh, else. But we've been through his opinions on about what, like thirty films or something ridiculous. Yeah, Chris is he's kind of he's like a a different, milder flavor of Movie Bob, where he's just sort of fascinating. I don't think I connect there. Movie Bob is uh, a mile a minute saying radical, insane things and has takes you've never heard of. He's like the opposite of Chris Tucker. Yeah, in sense. I, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, maybe I was thinking, hmm, what's the link I'm creating where Chris Tuckman is at the terrible. same time? 
Yeah, they're, they're both terrible, but I'm thinking, what does Chris Duckman remind me of? It's just this bland... It, he's simultaneously somehow very bland and very interesting. Um, almost like the blandness is the interesting element of it, considering his background, his history on YouTube, the way that he sees himself in his craft. It's really something else. It is. Well, that's... I what mean, what do you find like... uh, interesting? I don't mean to sound like an asshole. I'm just... I'm asking, like, like what... Uh, did fair he question. say something that was like, oh, that's actually a good point. Like, like well, he, what, what is I, it about stuff? I don't think he's capable he like... of being insightful, which some people just stumble upon through sheer, you know, just the mathematics of language. You say enough words and you have enough Especially thoughts. Especially if you One cover of them... every movie in existence well, yeah, every as, year. As I yeah, mentioned yeah. earlier, like I said, I've spoken to many people in my entire life about movies, and I don't know that I've ever encountered the average person say so little as he does consistently. And of course, the highlight of is that this is his job. This is what he has insight into. Yeah, this, this is, is his profession. His soul. And so one could yeah. argue, and I assume that's where Rags is going with this, is soul. that's interesting. How little insight he has is fascinating. Mm. To the point where we, yeah. if we had a conversation with him about one of his favorite films, I wonder how much of it he would actually be aware of. Like if... Take, for example, if his favorite film was uh, Fellowship of the Ring. I wonder I if he'd mean. be aware of, like, Boromir's journey at all. I don't know. Mm. There Not is sure. a... When Linguini goes to work at the restaurant, he knows nothing about food and cooking, right? But he learns, right? He, mm -hmm. he picks up things over time. He has someone teach him things. He has a willingness to, um, to, to grow and to add things to his list of skills. But, or like, if you had to, if you had to fake something, right? If you had to fake being a, uh, being anything in any industry, like you were infiltrating, right? You're a hitman or an assassin, or or you're faking it. Like, surely you just pick up things. You'd absorb information from the field you're in, from the people around you. But he's somehow immune to that. Is the question then? How. Is Chris Stuckman capable of acquiring knowledge? That's what I'm kind of getting at. Asking? Like, okay. how are you so incapable of? Like, just soaking up information and becoming naturally better at things that you devote a lot of time to. That is almost like its own skill. Like, you're yeah. that cut off from just the acquisition of knowledge, from soaking up the things around you. It's legitimately weird. Yeah. Right. I agree. Like, if I was in his, his position, I would want to go more in-depth with, like, reviews and commentary or whatever. But he just... He doesn't seem to even have the desire to. That that pisses me off more than anything, I think. Maybe it's a... Maybe he's never got any or felt any pressure to learn. Or maybe it's just the simple element of he thinks what he's doing really... <laughs> really is insightful. <laughs> and what he's doing yeah. really is, like, good. Like, he thinks, he legitimately believes that he's good. You know, yeah, he's doing like a good the, job. Th this is enough, what I'm saying. Like, and it's like, no, no, it isn't, dude. <laughs> it's the best image in the world. <laughs> this is the bare minimum. That's the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail. This, this is what it's Fine. Going to I will make that the thumbnail. Well, you need honest. a new one. Because... <laughs> yeah, the, the current thumbnail does not capture the, the stream at all now. <laughs> 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 that's a great inside joke but i feel like a lot of people are gonna be like what the fuck is that on his head <laughs> yeah that's the mystery that's the mystery box of this episode yeah. you yeah. can discover yeah. the answer by watching if you go into the fetal <laughs> position and start to write notes maybe you'll figure it out <laughs> yeah. okay let Christopher us stockman the man the myth the legend let yeah, us have uh, our guests talk about what they've got coming up. We'll start with the wonderful The Little Platoon. That sounded not clunky at all. You go ahead. No, it sounded like Chris Tuckman wrote it. That's a Chris Tuckman sentence. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing, I think, is the answer. Finally, nothing. For the first time in about two years, I have nothing that I'm working on. So that's, that's nice. When that's There'll be a Revolution really video at some point, but otherwise the five and a half hour Marvels video will be the last Ooh. thing I do this year. My god. And that's available right now? It is available right Amazing. now. Everyone oh go, 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 go. Get on that go Marvel watch video. It. Hey, good to good to hear you. You're taking a bit of a well, break, is it? Yeah, for about two weeks at most. 
I'm supposed to be doing that right now with metal, um, but I've been oh. sneaking in working. <laughs> When yeah, he's asleep, I go and edit. <laughs> it's the wackiest shit. Longer. And awake, I was like, I'm editing into mine. Yeah, I sent him a message being like, you're not awake yet, right? With a little smiley face. And he's like, I'm downstairs. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, I'll come back out. <laughs> um, very Stop well. Stop working, Mahler. How dare you? Exciting. <laughs> and uh, uh, the little platoon on YouTube. Go check it out. Because the links were a bit confusing with, I didn't know who exactly would be coming in and mm. who wouldn't be today. But that's all right. Mm. John. CJG, what are you doing? What's, what are you up to? What's happening? Christmas? Oh, yeah. I mean, I spent Christmas with, with my mom just watching movies and TV shows. It was funny. I made a little Christmas short for my YouTube channel. Right now, I'm working on... Uh, I did an old Machinima series called Hard Justice, which is really cringe, but I'm rebooting it, and hopefully, <laughs> which will be something that's Hard uh, Justice a lot more is funny. respectable. Thank you. Justice. Thank you very much. <laughs> I really you. appreciate That's that. Funny. I do. I just I can't look at that back on that personally no, and I, like I enjoy you. it. But like I'm trying to like take those characters and that premise and make something actually really cool and compelling. So like I'm I'm writing a thing, I'm cooking something, and I'm gonna make like a whole like season of, of content. That's what I'm working on right now. It's not out yet, but I'm working on I'm hoping I can get maybe the first out first episode out by February. But, oh, cool! Yeah, that's what I'm working out. That's what I'm working on right now. John Graham on YouTube. If you want to subscribe to me, I do RB the Chief. I don't know how many times I have to say that, but like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my thing. That's what people know me for. So yeah, it's really good. Hell yeah! Thank you. Uh, as what are you up to? What things have you said are good or bad in the world of media? Um, somehow, months later, I've managed to trigger Twitter again about uh, Starfield. Uh, that for the... you is our <laughs> Jenny Nicholson <laughs> thing. That your, shitty your, game. It's the it's yeah. the it's the that fucking. I was about to say sort of damn with these. No, it's more of a. What do you say? A Sisyphean. But you don't have to Sisyphean. do anything, so I don't know if it counts. But the point yeah. being is that it'll now forever be this reoccurring thing. Because Metal was showing me. Um, we still have viral tweets about fucking Jenny Nicholson. Still to this day, yeah. people. St <laughs> but um, <laughs> on the highlights channel, uh, Wolf uploaded the you know the stream without Jenny, which 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 uh, someone had done before. Yeah. But with the Wolf one, it's very easily screenshotable and linkable, which is kind of funny because it's like seven hours when it's not here, which compared to the, you know that's funny. But yeah. um, yeah, it, it sounds like that one's yours, where it's just gonna pop up again and again and again, and it obviously you could just keep pulling that card of like man. I thought you said it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's all I have to do. It's all I have to do, and every time I post that, it gets them even more mad. It's great. It's just that's all I have to say now. Um, I got the uh, afternoon. This is probably boring. glad that Starfield made someone <laughs> it's the feel most... something. It's the um, most as no. you're generating the engagement. Okay. I <laughs> look. I'm I, I'm the most interesting thing about Starfield, and that's. <laughs> Really upsetting, isn't I'm it? Assuming, uh, <laughs> as you've seen those posts, right? Where people are like, "What happened to Starfield?" It's like, "Oh no, all the reviews are negative." And it's just like, "This is a <laughs> shitty game. It's shit. It's boring." Um, I've got afternoon tea with Az tomorrow, doing a super chat square up of uh, the real BBC. But you're Az, um, and of course, because uh, yeah, 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 and it's because it's uh, it's um New Year's Eve tomorrow. Then mm. we should have Sunday Fun Day in the yeah. evening. And then I will actually be doing a stream taking the uh, New Zealand, I guess, through to uh, 2024. So it's oh, going to be a very, very busy day tomorrow. Yes. Serious, serious question. I keep uh, getting asked by mm. people to ask you, okay? Will mm. you fight Slave Knight Gale in DS3? Is that going to happen? Yes. Okay. okay oh. He's a fucking good fight. I'm just saying. Out yeah, very good, very good. But wouldn't it's want you to, to leave DS3 without doing that. No, yeah. I, I, uh, I, uh, I will return. Nice. Oh, Return of the King. Oh, oh. get that little paper oh, crown. Oh, <laughs> get that That's Happy right. Meal crown. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> metal. Is. What are you up to, you lad? I'm currently right below you oh. in the other floor. <laughs> hey. no, she, that's I'm, what she said. Oh my hey. god, why'd you tell him? Don't tell him. Well, I'm actually, I'm on my vacation right now. Oh, I don't yeah. do sneaky editing here. I'm just sleeping and drinking a lot, which I I'm suppose... quite enjoying. What we can let people know is that we will be doing gaming and drinking streams will happen yes, soon. Yes. Um, we didn't talk about it today, 
but maybe we will on another stream. But we've we've been up to some fun antics. We've been throwing axes, watching films, playing games, yeah. drinking. It's been a whale of a time. But we shall. Hell yeah. Uh, one of the plans is to play Simpsons Sit and Run and take shots whenever Ooh. we die or whatever. So yeah. Are they doing another one of those? Aren't they make oh Crazy Taxi? Is Crazy Taxi coming back? Or they should make another uh, Simpsons. I think yeah. Tegas, uh, I'm pretty sure game. that Tegas doing a bunch of new oh. stuff. Oh. Yeah, at the Game Taxi. Awards, they announced a slew of 3D games based on their uh, Sega's old like franchises, mm. Shinobi, Crazy Taxi. There's going to be some uh, good in there. Games. That would be nice. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really doing anything right now, but... When I'm back home and my vacation is over, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be going back to the mines myself. Mm. Forges are coming back. More gaming streams. I think the next game I'm going to stream is probably going to be RoboCop. Finally, because yeah. that was been uh, um. gifted to me by James. That was very nice. He gave that to me for Crimbo. So that's going to be the next game I'm going to stream. And uh, yeah, Forges are going to be coming back. I already started making the list. What's coming up uh, over the year? So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm cooking. Soon, not right now. I'm just drunk. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Springy, right on, man. Rungo, what up? What happened in the world of you guys? Oh, I don't want to make any promises or anything yet, but who knows what'll happen? Uh, oh. I'm just working. <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> just, just working, just working away. All right. Well, and as for me. What I was editing is that uh, I, got, I was about to say this is bad news. It's news. It is bad news somewhat. The uh, the Lord of the Rings EFAP movies did indeed get hit, and it's completely demonetized, which was the thing I was desperately trying to avoid so that the extensive work that was done could at least be given that level of compensation. But at the same time, you know, uh, Drinker had suggested uh, to me, and it's something I've been trying to set up, splitting the whole thing up into topics... Right, I think I've talked about this on my one of my God of War streams, but the idea will be that you go through and collect all the clips where we talk about Ian McKellen as Gandalf and Gandalf as a character, or Sean Bean's performance and Boromir as a character. You collect them up and put them into their own videos. They could be anywhere from 10 minutes to 40 minutes, and they're all split into topics, so like the production or the world building or something like that. And, you know, release them all as individual videos so that they could be monetized. Only just with, with simple ads, right? That's just It just helps churn the channel so that we can have reason to build things that don't cost the channel from being up in the first place. So that's something to uh, that I'm working on, just trying to... It takes a lot longer than I thought it would have. I should have anticipated it, but it's okay. Uh, that's what I've been tooling away at. It's basically just sorting it all out and crushing it all together. But something I was considering, and I'm 50-50 on it, was uh, recording the premiere chat and then incorporating that whenever the uh, template for EFAP is available in the EFAP movies so the chat is in there, if you know what I mean, from the previous one, and re-uploading with, again, a slightly harsher copyright, or we just leave it as it is demonetized. That, those would be the two options I have. And uh, I was going to ask for uh, people's input, even chat's input. What do you think? Um, Speak up, chat. Oh, I thought we were waiting for chat. Um, but it's chat and you guys. I am. I think that's a really good idea. I think that uh, I I like it. You know, when we discussed it. It seemed like a neat idea, and I approve of it. Uh, There's editing in live chat. Sounds like it might actually be like a decent amount of work. Um, it will be. So that'll, that'll take me at least three days. Bear in mind. Well, yeah. It it makes me wonder how the fuck YouTube's copyright detection system a works. Great thought to have because very I've, been, I've been doing this for six I years and I still us. don't fucking know what the hell's going on. <laughs> if Drinker is recommending that you split the video up as if that alone would fix the issue, I wonder if the, like He's... YouTube is operating in such a way that it's sort of accumulating um, all this sort of copyrighted, copyright detected material like over a span of time where it's just like if it exceeds x amount of seconds over the total duration of the video then it's like here's a claim fuck you what if you were to like someone i've discovered up, and it's, it is actually wacky but like one of the best representations of it is fringy did the editing correct me if i'm wrong for all of mando season three yeah mm. yeah so all of season three the way it works is fringy will do his uh copyright coverage then i'll proof them and i'll cover anything that i think is like oh that's risky i might put something in that all of them were cleared by me, and they all go up. They're all still monetized or, you know, demonetized for swearing, which the yellow one, a lot of people say that's the same as not monetization at all, but it's 
you know, a tier above that, I, I guess, at least in fucking claims. But uh, right. I put them all together because what we usually do is have the big supercut so that people can watch it all in one big video if they want to. I couldn't do it with uh, Mando. I put it up and it's, it had a copyright claim for every episode. So a rare fucking like eight or seven, however many episodes there were claims. I was like, what the fuck? Like there was no claims on the uh, individuals. And so I cover them all up. I'm like, okay, re-upload, and another seven to eight claims come up, and it's like, what the fuck is going on? And so the only conclusion I have, and this applies to the Lord of the Rings video, because I uploaded individual hours, as did the editors uh, somewhat that were working on them, and then I ended up uploaded individual films, being Fellowship, Two Towers, Return of the King, and um, I was at the point where Fellowship and Two Towers were clear, Return of the King was still being worked on, but we were rushing, I explained this in the other refab we had. Put up together, Fellowship and Two Towers were getting claims. It's like, but they weren't on their own, which were two hour and 40 minute videos. I had that same problem because I was doing Mando 3 as well. And the second part of that was, that video was four and a half hours long, I think it was. In parts, it didn't get anything. In total, it got a claim every time I tried it. But I just thought, fuck it, I'm just going to appeal it and go straight to like the top appeal. And no one ever really checks those things. So it all, always goes through. So I just went straight for, yeah, fuck you. Well, it, it's fair use. Yeah, it's the wackiest fucking shit to get used to because there is no guidebook on this nobody ever says like by the way if you're making a 10 minute video you can have clips as long as seven seconds or whatever however it's dependent on the people who published it or, or, or whatever bots are running but nobody ever told me that if you're making a video over an hour it's the mid-level bots and if you make over a video over three hours then you get the harsh bots to the point now where uh, it's so fucking ptsd inducing that, like, the recommendation I have for my editors now on any of these videos is never go above four seconds, ever. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that some people could be like, oh, come on. It's like, no, I know, I know, but don't. <laughs> the, no, uh, for anyone that. who's curious, yeah. Yeah. I did a rough fucking run-through of the trilogy after the Gollum incident, which I can still, we'll show you that eventually if you really want to see it. It's nothing special, it's just Gollum footage for three minutes. But after that Let's happened, go. as uh, Fringy Rags and Mel know very well, I... I painstakingly went through with a measurement chart thing in Vegas to make sure no clip went over 4.2 seconds. I, I considered that the absolute maximum. What got hit, and you can still see this because the video is still there, in, uh, in Helm's Deep, when Rag says it's really neat that when the uh, volleys are firing that there is a spritz of water, that it really feels like all the rain is actually affecting everything. You see the clip that lasts about two seconds of Legolas and, and others doing it and all the orcs getting hit. And then I repeat the visual for about two seconds in slower motion while he's saying that. That selection, what I just described, got hit with copyright. That's so mm. fucked up. I don't... It's so yeah. fucked up. It's so it's dumb. The, the you need to, once you get to a certain a size on YouTube, YouTube needs... You need to be able to send something to YouTube that says, look, I'm an established movie reviewer and I use movie footage in my movie reviews. I need to have some level of protection against this ridiculous system. Dude, it should be fucking transparent. Like, what do they yeah, have to lose? That would be great. You know? This is why it was tagged. Know. This is the reason why. Or you just need to say there are, there are these flat rules or something. But it's ridiculous how it's been going on for this long. And I, you can take all of these steps and it still gets hit. And it and varies it, it, from studio to studio as well, which is like, it's impossible to know which studio is going to have the top level of the algorithmic check applied to it. The ones that so I will were use insane. On, yeah, like, longer videos for other properties will be fine using longer clips. Peter Pan was the worst one I think I've ever had a problem with. And that was all the, the original cartoon version. And it got to the point, because I was trimming it down, it's like, seven second clip, okay, fine. Five second clip, oh, fuck's sake, okay, fine. I'll get rid of all of those. Two second clips. And at that point, it was like, I think the way they're doing it is percentage of total content used over the entire video. And any clip beyond that certain percentage will then be flagged, even if it's one second long. Because that was certainly the experience I had with that video. But again, like, at that point, I, I just went, fuck it, this is impossible to make this video. So again, appeal and go right to the top straight away and you know, risk the strike. But the strike never comes because I don't think anyone actually checks within the seven days. They just look like, has someone actually filled out the form? Yeah, okay, it's probably right then. We'll just pass that over. And regardless yeah. of clips used in in, um, in videos, when it actually comes down to the film itself, I, I am a big believer that any company that puts out promotional marketing material in the form of video, that should be not subject in any way to copyright, because that is no. marketing. Right. I agree.
that's and that's, why, that's that, why a lot of people just that's what it should that's what should be brought in if you're putting that out as your promotion as your marketing anybody should feel free to use that in whatever context they want because it's about advertising the uh product yeah <laughs> so that's the pain uh but you guys could expect a set of fun sort of uh snippeted videos of different discussions we had on that recording and all of them should be pretty straightforward to monetize because i assume being shorter means that the fucking bots will be more chill with them and once all of them come out i will then try according it seems like most people unanimously agreed it'd be cool to re-upload it with the chat integrated so you know give me two weeks probably to get all of that done uh, and it'll go back up again. Funnily enough, people don't even remember this uh, that well, but the, the the Return of the King first one that me, Rags, and Wolf did, that is, is a re-upload, uh, because the first one got struck down. That was before, well before, I was more acquainted with how fucking awful the copyright is. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, in future, all the editors are basically just going to be told, four seconds, never more. Even the ones that think like, no, 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 I've got always just, no, never more than four. Never more. <laughs> I did cheat with the Marvels video because there were just cats dancing around the screen for most of the long clips in that video, and it confuses it. But they're flurkins in the, the MCU these days, so that's still like thematically on point. Uh, I know, I've got, if, if if theoretically I had a long video in the works that was covering a piece of media, theoretically, of course, is all purely yeah, it's not actually happening. No. In this is all this is all alleged, but I would just be like, you know what? Eight, nine, ten second clips. Fucking sue me. Do it. Um, but you know, who, who knows? Who knows what will? Uh, well, so part of the problem, because a couple of people suggested that, is that we don't actually know what the definitive ruling on a lot of what we do on EFAP would actually be. Uh, I believe, ethically speaking, we are a billion percent in the clear. But like in an actual, if we actually went to court, which by the way would be a fucking nightmare, because you wouldn't get <laughs> like EFAP content at all for a whole two years or however ridiculous it would be. Um, you know, it, it, you don't actually know exactly where it will lie when push comes to shove, which is part of our criticism of people like XQC or whoever who are really fucking pissing off the uh, the people who we don't want anywhere near all of this because they might make it so much, so much worse. Yeah. Um, we could be in the golden age of copyright for all we know. That's kind of the way we're putting it. Yeah. Especially for gaming. The fact that I can use mm. a whole game, everything about it, like I can upload. That's a that's a that's an industry that I find amazing. Like you can upload, as I did, a supercut of the story in a game that's mainly story and monetize it. Isn't that isn't that nuts? Yeah. Like that's just something you can do. And I feel yeah. like uh, the yeah, more well, time I goes think... on, gaming OSTs. Yeah, you can upload the fucking album for a game and make money from yep. it. Yep. Because it's a game, so it's a game OST. So all those insane bangers in the games and stuff. Put yeah. it out there. It's whatever. It's a game soundtrack, so it's it's so, it's clear. Yeah, You're what good. I'm saying is, um, dear, but woe let's... to ye who plays Fallout on a stream and wanders near a radio where copyrighted <laughs> real music plays. Uh, yeah, yeah, woe yeah. to ye who does that. Yeah. That stream belongs to me now. The ghost of Kai I realize, Kaiser. I can't believe I didn't mention this already, but uh, Das Bullshit was the one exclusively who edited the Home Alone two Eva movies. He uh. Sweat and blood went into a lot of that. He got it done right on the dot. That's that's it. It, it was you know it had to be moved to the next day because it wasn't quite fast enough. But um, the man was dying making that, and I appreciate every last piece of work mm -hmm. he did for it. And he said to me like, "Is it past copyright?" And I was like, "Yep, yep, yep." Wait a minute, and it didn't. No. And I was like, "Oh well, that's okay." I mean, he really tried hard. He did it fast. He must have missed something. And uh, I hadn't really fully looked at it. I took a screenshot out of it because he had asked for it, and I, I posted it to him, which I'm posting in our group now. And then I was like, wait a minute. Like, I, I, I deliberately play everything pretty quietly when we're recording them, and it's like a song? Das knows really well to avoid songs getting uh, clipped. So this is Won't Tell Your Boyfriend, song by Ruben Stunner. And I checked it. It's not present in Home Alone 2, nor any memes. It is a song that has nothing to do with anything to do with Home Alone 2. I also had the same problem with the Marvel's video. There's a bit in it, because it's in a copyright claim at the moment. I thought, just fuck it, I'm just going to put it up anyway, because it's music related. The bit where, where Tony Stark flicks his glove, when he has the glove on, flicks his fingers, there's rumbling sound in the background. And some random band I've never heard of apparently claimed that as part of a song that they made. <laughs> 
Like, but it's not. And I, yeah, I don't like, even know who you are, and it's not in the video. Off? So I think you might have made a mistake there. This one's bad, but it gets even worse. We've talked about it before, but I was just going to say, so this is currently happening on the Home Alone video, which is now in escrow. I swear to fucking God, if they push back when their song isn't even in here, like, <laughs> yeah. it's absolutely absurd. But uh, the worst version, and this has happened on my... The last time I remember... Uh, well, sorry, the first time I remember dealing with this was the God of War 2018 playthrough, my first one, where it was like, uh, copyright footage has been found. And I was like, that's odd, uh, but maybe it's... You know, like a you know, like blood on the stone. Is that what it's called? Blood in the stone. Blood on the stone. Blood, blood upon the snow. snow. Um, that song I think can get hit with copyright, but none of the other ones because it's much more of an official thing. And I was like, oh, maybe yeah. it's something like that where a, a song, a part of the soundtrack, is actually getting hit. I checked it. It was like, no, it is another Let's Player who is uh -huh. monetizing his own content, and it matches enough of the video game's cutscene. That he is now claimed that is his, that is now claiming money off wow. your playthrough. And I was like, fucking wow. hell. That's like, <laughs> that's like yeah. parasites eating parasites. <laughs> the fucking and game once... companies would be like, excuse me? You're taking money off the person who should be, I should be paid anyway. It's like, what the fuck is this? In an old video, I once used as background, uh, as a background song, a piece of music when I had a. Uh... Talked to the guy who made the song, and he said, no, my stuff's not on content ID, it's all good, use it however you want, it's out there for you. Cool, great. So, uh, the, the video goes up, and then a long time later, I get a notification of an old video where someone took that song against it without any permission or anything. They, they did take that song, and then they decided to like make like sing lyrics over it. And then they put that into the content ID system so that it claimed my, you know, my usage of the original song, which was just an instrumental. And of course, I, I fought it and I won. And then I told the guy that there's this Russian dude out there doing that to your stuff. So it just shows how insanely broken the system yeah. is. You can just take people's shit yeah. and then <laughs> put it in content ID yourself. Fuck it. Who cares? YouTube just lets you do whatever. And then we all lose. Yeah, remember when I put my first video out back in the, the day. John Wick, John one, Wick yeah. one, And just got stricken down completely by some random Turkish company. That was fun. Turkish really doing a lot to help the reputation, it, I see. Hey, <laughs> if, I'm, if I may add to this, I, I made an episode of my eighth season of Arby and the Chief where I made a track myself where it contained three notes looped. It was like, narrow, narrow, narrow. And then YouTube matched that as a Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi <laughs> song. Jesus. And I was just, oh, okay. okay. Like, I made this track, but like, <laughs> are, are you really going to patent like three fucking notes re re like re replayed over and over? Like in like a four bar sort of um, schematic or whatever. I don't know what the right word to use is, but like just like. Arpeggio. It's, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Where it's just like, I feel like I, I'm not trying to copy anybody's song here. This is three notes that I'm just like repeating over and over. But it, it detected no, it. No, you're playing it, a Bon Jovi detected song. detected it as a Bon Jovi song. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I couldn't like. I, I, yeah. I mean, whatever. It's, it's, <laughs> whatever. The system is fucking broken. It is. It, it really it's, it's, it's you're thrown onto a minefield bullshit. blindfolded yeah, arms yeah. tied around your back and the minds change position every second yeah it's indist they they seem to have spent an insane amount of money google has on a content id system that is indistinguishable from randomness yeah so good job google you did it you saved yeah. copyright e. and on that note we're going to get out of here, okay? Uh, uh, you shall find more videos will be pouring onto the Moolah channel as soon as they're all getting past the issues as presented tonight. And, uh, well, this one will be up pretty quickly, I'd imagine. And we're also... I was about to bitch about manual copyright claims, but <laughs> no, fuck it, that can be for a different day. <laughs> oh, it can go on for fucking ever. It's absurd. Um, and that's the thing, man. Especially when you've worked on something for so long... And you've reached the finish line of the video. It's like, oh, the adventure's just begun for copyright. You're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Molly, you, you'll appreciate this you, before we go, just before we go. You know, when you get the notifications, we've matched copyright. We think, you know, these channels have taken your content. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. You know when you get those notifications? Yeah. I get them I get them all the time for nerd rotting. <laughs> <laughs> just like one day one day i should just grab one of gary's videos <laughs> gary stealing your content it's like <laughs> a bastard but all right thank you so much for watching this is technically the new year's eve 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 yeah, um, so you guys oh, have a yeah. wonderful <laughs> new year. See you next year. <laughs> we'll see you then. Yes, and uh, I was about year. to say you could expect coverage of movie X and Y, but you know what? I don't actually know exactly what we're doing yet. So Ooh. get excited for the mystery box <laughs> that will be oh, opened. No, no, Who knows? No, no. What will be in but we'll I probably do. What was supposed to be this episode next time? <laughs> we literally introed this episode as being what it was going to be, and that didn't happen. So nope. we're going to do it next week. That'll be great. Not at all. <laughs> but thanks for being here, folks. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.